Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. When you buy margarine, here's something to remember. The margarine that millions prefer because it tastes so good is parquet margarine made by Kraft. And the reason parquet always tastes so good is because it's always fresh. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet margarine already colored and ready to serve in the new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in parchment-lined aluminum foil. It seals in all that wonderful parquet goodness and flavor, keeps staleness and odors out. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy Color Quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Pick up a pound tomorrow. There's a lot of interest in the newspaper at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. The front page is pretty well taken up with the coming elections, but that isn't what interests our water commissioner. Hey, Marjorie, may I see the society page? The society page, Junkie? Yes, my dear. Get him the society page. Mr. Gildersleeve, wouldn't you rather have this page? There's an editorial about Mr. Bullard for mayor. No, thanks, Bronco. Just the society page. What's he want with a society page? Here you are, Unky. Thank you, my dear. What does a grown man want with a society page? All right, Leroy. Hey, Bertie, any more pancakes? <laughs> Leroy, you already had two big sacks. There ain't no more. Now, Leroy, breakfast is over. Oh, gosh, I'm still hungry. Oh, can I have a society page when you're through with it? Leroy, what do you want with a society page? There's syrup on it. I'll eat it. You. <laughs> Boy, he'd do it, too. <laughs> well, here's what I'm looking for. There's a picture of Judge Hooker. Say, there is some syrup here, right on his goatee. The old goat should wear a bib. <laughs> uh, let me see the judge's picture, Unky. I want to see that, too. What's the judge doing on the society page, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, the sons of Summerfield had their annual membership meeting last night. The judge is one of the founding fathers. You mean the judge is a pilgrim? I know he's pretty old, but... No, zero. <laughs> Judge Hooker is one of the club's founders. <laughs> Where'd he find that cap? There's nothing funny about that, Leroy. All the sons of Summerfield wear coonskin caps. What's that hanging down over his ear, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's a raccoon's tail. Doesn't he look wonderful? Just like Daniel Boone. Well, that tail flying, he looks more like a hot rod. <laughs> Now, I know why you wanted the society page, Junkie. Are the Sons of Summerfield taking you in this year? Well, I haven't read the article yet, but I'm positive they'll ask me in this year. They only take in the most important men in town, Bronco. Well, that certainly should include Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Why are you more important this year than you were last year, Unc? Uh, well, yeah. I thought Mr. Bullard always blackballed you. No, well, he doesn't dare this year. Buller's running for mayor, and he's after votes. Yeah, let's see. Say, my name isn't here. Maybe you don't need votes that bad. <laughs> In fact, there aren't any names. It says, the chosen few will be notified. When, Unky? Well, it says, last night. Poor Unky. He always wanted to be a son of Summerfield. Too bad, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. If you had one of those coonskin caps, I could use it to cover my pet turtle at night. <laughs> Leroy, I don't think you should kid Mr. Gildersleeve about those caps. Who's kidding? Leroy, it just happens to be the greatest honor a man can have in Summerfield, to be asked to wear one of those raccoon caps. Oh, I don't know it's such an honor. All the important men in town are members. Of course, they're my best friends belong. P.V., Judge Hooker, and Arnold Goat. Uncle Mort, you shouldn't say that about the judge. Well, and take Rumson Bullet. What's he but a stuffed shirt? If they don't want me in it, I don't care. I wouldn't join those mossbacks if they asked me on bended knees. Atta boy, Uncle. I can be hard to get, too. I'll get it, Bertie. I'm on my way to school. Yeah, I'll get it, Leroy. Uh, we'll both get it. Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, good morning, Gilday. 
Leroy. Oh, hello, Judge. Hi, Judge. Where's your cap? Oh, did you see the morning paper? Yes, we saw it, Judge. Since my picture appeared, there's been a phenomenal rise in circulation. Whose circulation, Judge? The papers or yours? The papers, Gildy. They're pretty extra copies. The offer. Who wants them? I do. I ordered three dozen extra copies myself. <laughs> well, you can have my paper, too. I don't want it. You should keep it as a memento, Gildy. Now that you're going to be a son of Summerfield. I am? Last night, Rumson Bullard and I pushed your name through. You did, Horace? What a fine bunch of fellows. Oh, brother. It was too late to notify you last night, but now... By virtue of the authority vested in me, I command you, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, to appear at our meeting for new members tonight. Do you accept? Do I? Unc. What is it, Leroy? Make him get down on his knees. <laughs> what? You said you wouldn't join those old moss backs. Leroy, it's time for school. Well, Gildersleeve, you made it. Tonight you'll be a son of Summerfield. Very exclusive organization. Invite George is getting more exclusive all the time. I think I'll drop in the drugstore and let Peavy congratulate me. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Well, you can congratulate me, Peavy. At long last, I'm joining the Sons of Summerfield. You're not seeing the judge, have you? Well, he came to see me. And, Peavy, I can't wait for that meeting tonight. Well, I can't wait either. I always enjoy the horseplay before those initiations. Yes, I imagine. Horseplay? <laughs> <laughs> is the horseplay fun, Peavy? Well, it is for the members. <laughs> Uh, Peavy, the judge didn't say anything about horseplay. Well, he wouldn't. But you're a pretty husky fellow, well padded, sound of wind and limb. Yes, but, Peavy, what do they do? Not that I'm concerned about it. Well, that's all secret shenanigans. I don't know what Mr. Bullard has planned. Bullard? What's he got to do with it? He doesn't like me. No, I don't know. He seemed very anxious to have you join. He did? Then he asked to be put in charge of initiation. Who? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me just a minute, Mr. Gilbert. That's the liniment, bandages, iodine, sterile gauze, assorted splints. Peavy, what are you doing? Just getting an emergency kit ready for the meeting tonight. Bandages? Iodine? You use those things in the initiations? No, we use them after the initiation. <laughs> but Peavy... When you join the Sons of Summerfield, you don't need first aid. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> if, if it's that bad, why did you join? Well, they just came and got me. They wanted a pharmacist on the scene. Oh? And after the initiation, I wanted one, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peavy, I don't believe you. Well, neither did Mrs. Peavy. I didn't get home for two days. <laughs> Peavy? You mean the initiation lasted two days? Well, counting Mrs. Peavy, mine lasted a week. Uh, that's very funny. <laughs> what am I laughing at? I don't know why. I've been able to get that initiation off my mind all day. It'll be over in an hour or two. Either a day or two. No. Peavy was just trying to get me worked up. Nothing to an initiation. Hello, Skillersleeve. Oh, hello, Bronco. Monkey, you're home early. Well, Marjorie, there wasn't much to do with the water department. Mr. Gillersleeve's too excited about joining the Sons of Summerfield tonight. <laughs> you Bronco. When you were in college, you joined a lot of secret organizations. I guess you had a lot of fun when you were initiated. The horseplay, you know. Gee, you have to go through that stuff before you get in? Well, they seem to have something planned. Childish pranks. They'll probably blindfold me and have me eat cold spaghetti. 
Yeah, I don't mind. They put some cheese in it. <laughs> no, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. I have an idea they'll put you through the paces. You think so? Oh, they won't do anything to you, Anki, with Judge Hooker there. Well, the judge isn't in charge of initiation. Who is Mr. Gildersleeve? Rumson Bullard. Mr. Bullard? Oh. <laughs> Bronco, what are you laughing at? Boy, do I feel sorry for you. <laughs> well, if you feel sorry, stop laughing. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Bullard might do something to Unky. I wouldn't put it past him. No, Marjorie, there's nothing to be concerned about. There are laws to protect citizens. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, those fellows can go pretty far. A senior in college had it in for me, and when he caught me at the initiation, do you know what he did to me? Uh, no. That big ape waited until he got his chance, and then he... Bronco, don't tell Uncle Mort about that. Why not? You don't want to frighten him. No, you don't have to worry about frightening me. Go ahead, Bronco. What did the big ape do? No, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, I think Marge is right. I don't want to frighten you. Go for it. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bertie. I got your new suit ready for the initiation tonight. My new suit? Yes, and a fancy white shirt. If you're going to be a son of Summerfield, you got to shine. <laughs> Auntie, uh, don't you think you should wear something, well, something older? Well. Something old. Mr. Gildersleeve, it ain't going to be that kind of initiation, is it? Well, I don't know, Bertie. Everybody around here is trying to scare me. Oh, if they've taken you into that nice club, they ain't going to sport around with you, Mr. Gilsey. Oh, of course not. That Sons of Summerfield is a gentleman's club. When they take in a new member, they ain't going to sport around. No. Those men are all your friends, Mr. Gilsey. Certainly. Judge Hooker, would he get you in there and then play tricks on you? The judge? Would he? No, no. And there's Mr. Peavy. He wouldn't. Would he? Bertie, they're my friends. And Miss Bullock? Well. Miss Gilsey? Yes, buddy. On second thought, you better wear your old suit. Oh, oh my goodness. Getting dark. I've got to face that initiation in a couple of hours. There's nothing to be concerned about. Bullard doesn't dare lay a hand on me. He needs my vote. Still, they blindfold you with these secret initiations. You can't tell who's giving it to you. you know, I saw Bullard put some stuff in his car. It looked like rope and chains. Say, I think I'll go take a peek in his Cadillac. I'll just sneak across the street. Who's that? Hello, Gildersleeve. Oh. Mr. Bullard, I didn't see you on my porch. I was about to ring your bell. I just wanted to be sure we'll see you this evening. Oh, yes. Good. (laughs) (laughs) Nice of you to take such an interest in getting me in the club, Mr. Bullard. I've been looking forward to this for five years. Gildersleeve, I've been looking forward to this, too. You have? See you tonight, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Ooh, what a dirty laugh. That settles it. He's laying for me. But I'll fool him. I'll fool him. I'm not going to be an old son of Summerfield. I'll fool him. Judge Hooker speaking. Judge, about tonight. Yes, Gildersleeve. I'm not being initiated. Explain to the sons of Summerfield that I can't make it. Why not? Well, I have a previous engagement. Very important. Well, it must be very important. We were all ready for you. Yeah, that's what I just found out. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Judge. Gildy, are you sure this initiation doesn't have you a little frightened? Judge, how can you say such a thing? I'll admit some of our initiated get cold feet, but we've never let a man get away. Uh-oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Judge. <laughs> They'll never get me... Not that I'm afraid of anything. Hi, Al. Stop, Leroy! Don't frighten me like that. What a character. A great 
Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Fresh is a word of many meanings. In a schoolboy, it's high spirits. In a schoolgirl's complexion, it's beauty. In a margarine, it's taste. And that's why so many women insist on parquet margarine as the margarine they serve on their tables and use in their cooking. For parquet is the margarine that always tastes so good because it's always fresh. Yes, fresh, really fresh, always fresh. Parquet is made fresh from selected products of American farms. It's rushed fresh in refrigerated trucks to your store. It's sold fresh by your grocer. Each pound of parquet is flavor dated, and stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that no matter where or when you buy parquet margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. For freshness, for flavor, get P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft at your grocer's. Well, the great Gildersleeve was looking forward to joining the sons of Summerfield until he learned that his longtime enemy, Rumson Bullard, was in charge of the initiation. Those sons of Summerfield won't get their hands on me. I told them I had a previous engagement, and by George, I'll get one. Yeah, I hope she's home. Why, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. What a surprise to see you. To see me? Well, Catherine, we have a date tonight. We do? To go dancing. Throckmorton, you didn't ask me to go dancing tonight. Yeah, well, I meant to. Yeah, I mean, are you sure we don't have a date? Of course I'm sure, silly. Besides, this is the evening you're supposed to be initiated into the Sons of Summerfield. Well, I'd pass that up rather than break a date with a girl like you. Gorgeous. We still don't have a date. Eh. I have to work at the hospital this evening. I'm due there now. You Well, why don't I go down there with you? Oh, that's right, Morton. You're so impetuous. You bet. That's probably the hospital calling. I'll have to run. But, Catherine... I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I have my patients to think of. She doesn't know how close I am to being a patient. Leroy? Yeah? Isn't this the evening you and I were going to lay the tracks for your model railroad? Heck no. Piggy and Leroy. Oh, I thought we may have had a previous engagement. Uncle Mort, I thought you had that previous engagement with your little nurse. Well... Oh, I don't blame you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm sure you'd rather have a date with her than take Mr. Bullard's initiation. Yeah, I'll say. Dating Miss Milford's a lot less painful, huh, Uncle? <laughs> now watch it, young man. Leroy, stop teasing Uncle Mort about the initiation. He's frightened enough as it is. No, wait a minute, children. I want to make something clear to you. Marjorie, Bronco, Leroy, all of you. I'm not afraid of this initiation. I'd be down there right now if I hadn't thought I had a previous engagement. And I thought I had one. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll show all of you this silly initiation means nothing to me. Where's my old suit? I'm going. Good for you, Uncle. That's the old fight, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, boy, Uncle. Here, take my geography book. What's that for? You can stick it in the seat of your pants. Leroy. <laughs> well... I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I've got it. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey's rev, then. If it's the Judge Hooker, tell the old goat I'm on my way. This ain't no old goat. This is your little bow peep. <laughs> <laughs> bow peep? Hello? Trockmorton, I'm calling from the hospital. Well, Catherine. You were so sweet this evening, and I may have forgotten we had a date. Yeah, well, it isn't important now. But it is. We're not busy at the hospital. Would you care to spend the evening with me here? Would I? See you soon, then. Sooner than you think. Bye! <laughs> Holy cow, what's going on now? You see, children, I did have a previous engagement. With Miss Milford, Uncle? You bet. Leroy, here's your geography book. I'm studying medicine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hospital. 
hospital's quiet. Hey, here are those bells again. Well, they're music to me tonight. <laughs> you must leave. You're pretty clever. You avoided those sons of Summerfield. Oh, there you are, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. You did rush over. Yep, hit every green light. By the way, Catherine, you're standing under one. What? The green light over the door. That means go ahead. Throckmorton, we're in the hospital. Oh, Care to step out under a traffic light? <laughs> I'll be off in an hour. Great. What'll I do in the meantime? Well, how'd you like to look around? See what goes on behind the scenes. Fine. If you think nobody would object. Oh, no, no, no. It'll be all right. There are just a few nurses around. Why don't you just slip into this white jacket? Me? Of course, sure. If anybody questions you, just say you're a doctor. Dr. Gildersleeve? Well, say you're, you're Dr. Hubble from out of town. Here, here, let me button the jacket for you. Yeah. You watch it, Catherine, you're tickling. <laughs> Billy. Now, you put on this white cap, it'll make you look professional. <laughs> That's for me. I'll see you later. You but Catherine? Yeah. Oh, well. Dr. Hubble, huh? Here, let's see how I look in this outfit. Here's a mirror in this linen closet. Say, I look pretty good. I should have been a doctor instead of a water commissioner. <laughs> Dr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Yeah, the jacket's a little tight. Look at those brawny arms hanging down there. They look very capable. Well, they should. They turned off a lot of water in their day. <laughs> oh, uh, pardon me. You uh, certainly. Excuse me. Are you a doctor? Me? Yes. I'm Throckmorton P. Hubblesleeve. I mean, <laughs> Hubble. <laughs> oh, well, I'm an intern. I hadn't seen you around. You, well, I'm not around very often. You know, Doctor, for a moment I thought you might be impersonating a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> How could you think a thing like that? Well, I was reading where some imposter got caught doing it last week. Yeah, what happened? Well, I think he got off too easy. $5,000 fine in ten years. You $5,000 fine in ten years. Well, see you around, Doctor. I have to go take some blood count. <laughs> what a job. Counting blood. <laughs> well, you asleep, you must look like a doctor. You fool that intern. You think I'll stroll down the hall. Yeah. There's a patient with the door open. He can't be very sick. Hello there. How's the bandaged foot? Oh, it's a head. <laughs> There's a bed turned around. Well, he smiled at me. I guess I have a good bedside manner. Well, right, George, I should have been a doctor. Yes, sir, I'm enjoying this. Oh, doctor, Dr. Hubble. Is somebody calling Dr. Hubble. Well, that's me. I better get this cap and jacket off. Doctor, don't take off your jacket. We need you in surgery. Surgery? You don't need me. Oh, yes, we do. It's an emergency appendectomy. <laughs> appendectomy? But in there. Young man. Oh, I can't do it. I don't have my license yet. They put me under the prison. Oh, my goodness. Uh, right in here. The patient's under anesthetic. The nurses and other interns are ready. Yeah, but... But... Ooh, look at all the people with masks on. Uh, there's the patient under the sheet. Ooh. Big fellow. Have you scrubbed up, doctor? Yeah, well, I took a bath before I left home. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> Hurry, doctor. Scalpel. Scalpel? Well, now, wait a minute. I have a confession to make. I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor? What? Not a doctor? Oh, you imposter. Yeah, that's right. I'm an imposter. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. I only did it while waiting for a nurse. Mr. Gildersleeve, this is a very serious offense. Yeah, I know. $5,000 in ten years. At least that. We'll let the patient decide. The patient? Nurse, pull back the sheet. Yes, doctor. Yeah, I don't want to see him. Why not, Gildersleeve? Oh! <laughs> Judge Hooker, impersonating a doctor, were you, Gildersleeve? Bullock, is that you behind that mask? Oh, and Catherine, are you in on this, too? When Judge Hooker asked me, I couldn't resist helping him. Gildersleeve, you can't escape the sons of Summerfield. Well, you've got it. I guess you want to take me to the initiation. This is it, Gildy. It's over. Is this all? Welcome to the sons of Summerfield, Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you fellas certainly fooled me. <laughs> Say, who's in this white gown? 
Another nurse? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Really? <laughs> what a fine bunch of fellows. All together now for Gildy. For he's, he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Remember, the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh, really fresh, always fresh, is parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where the law permits the sale of colored margarine, you can now buy yellow parquet already colored and ready to serve in its new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, it tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Why, George, fellas, this operating room idea was really clever. Great initiation. Thank you, Gelda. It was my idea. Yeah, of course, I guess what you were going to do. I was way ahead of you. Gildersleeve, didn't you think we were going to paddle you a little? Paddle me? No. I knew you fellas wouldn't do that. Old friends of mine. All right, Gildy. You are now a son of Summerfield. And here is your coonskin cap. Well, just like a crown. Yeah, I'll put it on for you. You? It's too big. Judge, you're pulling it down over my eyes. I can't see. Are you sure you can't see, Gildersleeve? Not a thing. Good. (laughs) What a sneaky thing to do. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Gail Gordon, Gil Stratton, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. There's magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement in almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better, particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and hear The Falcon solve the case of the double exposure. This is the Great Gildersleeve. On your marks for Groucho on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you each Wednesday night by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. The next time you shop for margarine, remember this. The margarine that millions prefer because it tastes so good is parquet margarine made by Kraft. And the reason parquet tastes so good is that it's always fresh. 
If you live where colored margarine is sold, you'll want to get that wonderful yellow parquet that comes already colored and ready to serve in its new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in parchment-lined aluminum foil, a flavor saver foil that seals freshness and goodness in, keeps odors and staleness out, and so easy to serve. No mixing, no bother. In other states, you get the same wonderful parquet taste and freshness in the handy Color Quick bag or regular parquet package. So don't wait. Get the margarine that tastes so good at your grocer's tomorrow. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. What's doing with the great Gildersleeve? It's election day in Summerfield, Rumson Bullard versus Terwilliger for mayor. And being a party who is vitally interested in the outcome, our water commissioner is up bright and early. Oh, what an exciting day. No matter how the election goes, I can't lose. <laughs> Good morning, Unky. Good morning, my dear. Hi, Unky. Hello, Leroy. Hey, where's Bertie? What's with breakfast? Well, it'll be a little late. Bertie went to the polls. Oh, isn't Bertie wonderful? She's always the first one to vote. How can she vote on an empty stomach? <laughs> <laughs> you children want to help me until Bertie comes back? Well, what can we do, Unky? Well, I bought this box of cigars from Peavy to pass out to the voters. You can help me put campaign bands on the cigars. Cigars on an empty stomach? Leroy, get busy. Okay. Wonder how these would be with sugar and cream. Uh, <laughs> these campaign bands are awfully cute, Uncle Mort. Yeah, thank you, Marjorie. Your old uncle's idea. I want to spread these around today. Vote for Bullard for me. How can anybody vote for Bullard on an empty stomach? Careful, <laughs> Leroy. Our neighbor is going to be the next mayor. You certainly are working hard for Mr. Bullard, Donkey. Well, if he's elected, he says I'm going to be his water commissioner. And I think a man with such good judgment deserves to be elected. <laughs> what if Mayor Terwilliger gets re-elected? Well, we're on good terms again. If he's re-elected, I'll still be in office. What an operator. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie, aren't you taking an awful chance passing out those vote for Bullard cigars? Yeah, that's not being fair to Mayor Terwilliger. Leroy, I'm being fair. How? Yesterday, I passed out two Williger buttons. Uncle, you can't support both candidates. Well, Marjorie, I have a little family to think of. In politics, you have to straddle the fence while keeping both ears to the ground. <laughs> and that's hard to do. It is for a fat man. Leroy, hand me some more cigars. Okay. Hey, who's at the door? Uh, it must be Bertie. She probably forgot her key. Well, at least I got all these cigars banded before breakfast. Good morning, Gildersleeve. Well, Mayor Terwilliger, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I wanted to be sure that all you city hall boys are campaigning today. Campaigning? Oh, yes. If we want to stay in office, we'll have to work as hard as we did in the last election. You, well, Mr. Mayor, you might say I'm working twice as hard as I did in the last election. (laughs) <laughs> well, good for you, Gildersleeve. Uh, say, are those cigars in your hand? Yeah, I still have those in my hand. I, I enjoy a good cigar, Gildersleeve. You, you wouldn't enjoy these. <laughs> Gildersleeve, let's see those cigars. Yeah, but... Bullet for mayor! Is that what it says? Gildersleeve, what are you trying to do to me? Now, Mr. Mayor, let me explain. There's nothing to explain. Gildersleeve, when I'm re-elected, you can clean out your desk. But clean out tomorrow morning, early. But, oh, you slammed the door. Right on the cigars. <laughs> well, that does it. I choose to support Bullard. What a character. <laughs> Stuffy mayor. I don't have to depend on him for a living. I'll depend on Bullard. He'll be elected anyway. Sure. Miss Gilkey, I'm home. Yo, oh, all right, Bertie. I'll call the children and we'll have breakfast. Yes, sir. Miss Gilkey, you sure are a lucky man. You know what this, Bertie? Didn't I see the mayor just leaving here? Well, yes. You sure are lucky to be close to him. He's got it in the bag. You? 
How can you tell? I was talking to the early birds around the poles, and the early birds all seem to be voting for Matthew Williger. He's got it in the bag. You been birdie? Yes, sir. You sure are lucky, because the early birds are voting for Matthew Williger. He's got it in the bag. Please. Mr. Jerry, you know why you're so lucky? Birdie. That's right, because all the early birds are voting for Matthew Williger. He's got it in the bag. <laughs> I wonder if those early birds could have liked that worm. These bullards got to be elected. All right, George, I'll smoke out some voters with these cigars. I'll start with Floyd. He may even leave a few cigars in his barber shop for the customers. Hello, Floyd. Hi, Commissioner. Did you come in on election day to get clipped? <laughs> I just dropped in to leave you a few cigars. Yeah? What's the catch? No catch. <laughs> of course, the cigar does suggest you vote for somebody. Vote for who? White Owl? No, Floyd. Well, an owl would make a better mayor than anybody that's running. No, Floyd Bullard is a fine man. Oh, yeah? All he'll do when he gets in is feather his nest. Why not let an owl do it? <laughs> Floyd, please be serious for a minute. Commissioner, you're wasting your breath. I ain't even voting this time. Not voting? Why? Well, Lovey and me don't see eye to eye in politics. We just cancel each other's vote. She finds out how I'm voting and she votes the other way. But Floyd, she doesn't have to know how you're voting. We use the Australian secret ballot. Commissioner, you don't know Lovey. I couldn't keep a secret from her if I was in Australia. <laughs> Lloyd, you've got the wrong idea. Every citizen should vote. You're a very privileged person. I am? Absolutely. In a lot of countries, nobody can vote. If you don't exercise your right to vote, someday they may take it away from you. They wouldn't dare. I'd take it to the Supreme Court. <laughs> well, if we don't vote and protect our democratic way of life, someday there may not be a Supreme Court. Are you kidding? It's getting bigger all the time. <laughs> But when people give up their voice in government, they're headed for slavery. Say, uh, I've been reading about that. This is a free country, and every citizen should vote for the man of his choice. Kamish, you convinced me. I'm going to vote. Fine. Have a Bullard cigar. I can't take it. Do I? I'm voting for Terwilliger. But, Floyd... Like you say, this is a free country. You're over. Ah, stop worrying, Kamish. I'm only kidding. I'll go down and vote for Bullard. You will? I had a friendship for you. I know you wouldn't be stumping so hard for him if your job didn't depend on it. You will. And just to show what kind of a pal I am, I'll get another vote for you. You how, Floyd? I'll tell my wife I'm voting for Terwilliger, then she'll vote for Bullard. <laughs> <laughs> Floyd, you're true blue. <laughs> Steve, you're doing all right. You've already picked up two votes this morning. Now I'll see what I can do with Peavy. It's pretty hard to get him to take sides on anything. But he's true glue, too. He'll help me out. Good old Peavy. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) What can I do for you this morning? Well, I want to have a little talk with you, Peavy. Very well. Do you mind if I go ahead with my work? No, go right ahead. What are you doing? I'm putting up a display of jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns? Peavy, Halloween is over? I know that. This is a special on jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> you care to buy one, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, thanks, Peavy. What a time to sell Halloween stuff. Well, I'm just trying to get my jack out of the old lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Jack, old lantern. Yeah, oh, I know, Peavy. He's in a good mood. Now I'll twist his arm. <laughs> uh, Peavy, you and I have a lot of fun together, don't we? Well, yes. We've been pretty good friends down through the years, haven't we? Mm, yes. So if I ask you to vote for Buller today, you will, won't you? Well, no. <laughs> Peavy, you mean you're voting for Terwilliger? I didn't say that. Oh, then you are voting for Buller. Well, I didn't say that either. Oh, what an enigma. How's that? 
Nothing, Pete. Here comes the judge. I'll bet he's voting for Bullard. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, hello, Judge. Hello, Horace. Well, Gildy, are you on your way to the polls to stuff the ballot box with your big fat vote? <laughs> I haven't had a chance to vote yet, Judge. I'm too busy campaigning for Bullard. Bullard? You're already in office. Don't you want to stay there? You bet. That's why I'm pulling for Bullard. You don't know how to push him, too. <laughs> Judge, you vote for me and Bullard, won't you? Well, I hadn't planned to. But, Gildy, old friend, if it means so much to you, I'll cast my vote for Rumson Bullard. Great, Judge. You're true blue. My, my. <laughs> now, Peavy, how about you? Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't consider Mr. Bullard a proper man for mayor. Well, I hate to bring this up, but you're a little obligated to vote for Bullard. I bought his campaign cigars from you, Peavy. That sort of makes you four Bullard. Have you smoked one of them? <laughs> no, but I'm giving them to all Look, my... gentlemen, a parade. Bullard for mayor. Say, that's the band we hired. I wonder whose money they're spending. Uh, nice and loud. That should get a lot of votes. Except I don't think we have enough brass. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Peavy, come on, Judge. Let's join the parade. Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Year in and year out, millions of people buy parquet margarine for one big reason. It tastes so good. It's delicious as a spread, a seasoning, a flavor shortening, because it adds its own delicious flavor to every food it's used with. Yes, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good. And the reason it tastes so good is because it's always fresh. If you live where colored margarine is sold, look for yellow parquet, that good-tasting, fresh-tasting margarine that comes already colored, ready to serve, in the new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in Flavor Saver aluminum foil. Elsewhere, get parquet in the Color Quick bag or regular package. In any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. It's high noon on election day, and the water commissioner is in high spirits. Why, George, I've picked up a lot of votes for our side. I think I'll call headquarters and let Bullard know how indispensable his water commissioner is. Bullard for mayor, headquarters. Hey, Mr. Bullard, this is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, your water commissioner. How are we doing? From all reports, Gildersleeve, we've overtaken Terwilliger's early lead. It's a landslide for me. It is? Well, good. We're in, huh? We can't lose. In fact, I'm giving a big victory luncheon at the Crystal Room in the Summerfield Hotel. Can you join us in ten minutes? Yeah, I can join you in ten seconds. Gildersleeve, I'm glad you got here before the others arrived. Well, Mr. Bullard, I move fast. I've covered a lot of territory for you this morning. I know, Gildersleeve, and you'll be rewarded. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, come on in. I want you to see the spread I've ordered. Yeah. Well, first time I've been in the crystal room. Nice crystal. You know, what a lot of food. Oh, yes, yes, and this is just the beginning. Take a look at that sterling silver platter of hors d'oeuvres. Nice. Cheese. Smoked oysters? What's this? Oh, that's caviar, Gildersleeve. Oh, eating a little high on the hog, aren't we, Mr. Bullard? <laughs> you don't know how close you are to being right. <laughs> Look in here. Well, a whole roast pig eating an apple. Yes, I had the pig flown in. Flown in? You're on the airline? 
Oh, no. No, I chartered a plane. A special plane for a pig? Isn't that a little expensive? Not for a good pig. <laughs> yes, but who's paying for all this? Oh, I'll send the bill to the city treasurer after I'm mayor. It isn't important. It's only money. It's only money. <laughs> well, that's right. I intend to make a number of changes when I'm in office, Gildersleeve. First of all, I'll buy a new city hall. A new city hall? What's wrong with the old one? It's so dirty. <laughs> and cars, Gildersleeve. Um, how many cars does the city own? You yeah, have many cars? Well, there's one. One? Yeah, Hopmobile sedan. <laughs> the chief of police Gates has it. He locks the back doors and uses it for a patrol wagon. Oh, how revolting. I'll buy a fleet of new cars. Small cars for the small city employees, large cars for the large employees. Uh, like the water commissioner. Yes, hey, that'll be fine. Yes, indeed. But what about the money? Oh, Gildersleeve, stop harping about money. I hate to talk about money. It's dirty. <laughs> If the treasury runs short, I'll simply raise the taxes. Raise taxes? Naturally. Don't you agree? Oh, yes. Sure. Of course. Good, good. I'm going to see that you do very well, Gildersleeve. Very well. Well, thank you. Uh, excuse me. I'll open the door for the others. You're right, George. I'm doing all right. Meritor Williger never treated me like this. Gildersleeve. Put that apple back in the pig's mouth. <laughs> what are you doing with it? Just polishing it. <laughs> I eat so much I could hardly get back to the office. Before I go vote, I think I'll sit down a while. Let the lunch settle. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of time before the folks close. <laughs> I was solid with Booker. He said I was going to do very well. I'll have a big car. Yeah, I'm sure Bullard is the man for the job. Still, you're getting pretty free with the voters' money. Flying pigs. New city hall. <laughs> raising taxes. Well, it's not my worry. Or is it? I wonder what it'll be like when Bullard is there. Yes, Bertie. What do you want for dinner tonight? Well, how about a roast pig stuffed with caviar? <laughs> yes, sir. One roast pig. Yeah, on second thought, Bertie, make it two pigs. Mayor Bullard gave me another raise today. Yes. Mr. Gilsey, where's Mayor Bullard getting all that money? You folks got an oil well down there at the city hall? <laughs> well, we have a good tax collector. Oh, then I'm the oil well. <laughs> What's this, Bertie? I notice my taxes have doubled. Well, the city has a big payroll now, Bertie. The administration has to support a lot of supporters. Yeah, I mean people. <laughs> yeah. Now, Bertie, don't worry. I'll give you another raise. That won't do me no good. Every time I get a raise, the tax collector raises me back. Hmm. <laughs> Bertie may have something there. Hey, Aunt. Yeah, what is it, Leroy? I just made 30 cents selling papers. Well, good for you, my boy. What's so good about it? Where's my pork barrel piggy bank? The pork barrel? You're right over there by Mr. Bullard's picture. Gosh, a little kid makes 30 cents selling papers and has to give 15 cents to the city. Oh, yes. The children are paying taxes now, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Strange. Nobody thought of that before. Giving the kiddies pork barrel piggy banks to put their taxes in. Yeah. What a dirty trick. I'm sorry, Leroy, but... Poor little kid. You were a little... little kid. <laughs> oh, doorbell. It must be the tax collector. They come every day now, just like the milkman. <laughs> no, it's Mr. Peavy. He's not a tax collector. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. 
<laughs> What's this, Peavy? Tax collecting is my new job. I lost my pharmacy, so I had to get on the city payroll. Peavy, how did you lose your drugstore? Mayor Bullard's civic improvement plan. He made me take it down. Oh? What's he going to build? A statue. A statue? Mayor Bullard wants to perpetuate the memory of our greatest civic leader. Who's that? Mayor Bullard. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I wonder if he isn't going too far. Anki, is that the tax collector? Yes, Marjorie. It's Collector Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Peavy. Here's Bronco's weekly paycheck. Very well. And here's your change. Fifty, seventy-five, eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-seven cents. <laughs> Marjorie, is that all you get back? Isn't it terrible, Anki? How will Bronco and I ever live on that? And we have the baby coming. Baby coming, you say? Well, Mayor Bullard will be glad to hear that. He'll want to send the youngster a pork barrel piggy bank. <laughs> yeah, that Bullard. I don't think he's giving the taxpayers a fair shake. He's giving us a shake, all right. A shake down. Judge Hooker, what are you doing here? I want to tell you a few things, Gildy. You talked me into voting for Bullard. You're to blame. Yeah, you're to blame. Troy, you here too? You talked me and my wife into voting for Bullard. You're to blame. You've been fellows. I can't make payments on my car, Gildy. You're to blame. You judge. I can't pay the rent. You're to blame. You, Floyd. Excuse me, but I can't buy shoes. You're to blame. You've been I can't keep a nickel. You're to blame. But you... We can't support a baby. You're to blame. Please, wait a minute. You're to blame. 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 you are to I slept longer than I thought. The polls close in five minutes. They've already voted. Oh, Gildersleeve, you bungled this. Well, there's only one thing to do. I'm going to make my one vote count. Of you to come down with me this morning, Leroy. Help me clean out my desk. Oh, it's nothing, Unc. Gosh, look at all the papers. You must have been a very important man. Yeah, I must have been. The election was plenty close. Terwilliger had just made it. Yeah. Gosh, maybe if just one guy had switched his vote to Bullard, you might still be in office. Uh, Leroy. Yeah, Unc? When you're old enough to vote, always vote for the best man. I will. Uncle, who do you think was the best man this time? Mayor to Willigan, Leroy. Yeah? Then that's who you voted for. Maybe it was your vote that... Gee. Here, my boy. Take these papers out and burn them. Okay. You want me to burn these old Bullard for Mayor cigars? No, I better save them. When Marjorie's baby comes, I may not be able to afford any. <laughs> I can change the band to It's a Boy. Yeah. If you voted for Mayor Terwilliger, why don't you tell him? You'd never believe it, Leroy. No, I guess you wouldn't. Well, I lost my job, but by George, I can hold my head up. Cleaning out my desk isn't as hard as I thought it would be. Well, good morning, Gildersleeve. Oh, good morning, Mayor Terwilliger. Cleaning out your desk, I see. Well, that's what you told me to do. Well, Gildersleeve, I won the election. Aren't you going to uh, congratulate me? Offer me one of your uh, bullet for mayor cigars. <laughs> oh, yes. Have one. It'd take two. Well, thank you, Gildersleeve. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> Good cigar. You're glad you like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gildersleeve! It exploded! Oh, my goodness. Gildersleeve, how dare you give me a loaded cigar? Loaded? But, Mr. Mayor, it was just like the rest of them. I you, mean... You mean all those bullet for Mayor cigars were loaded? Well, I... Oh, now I'm beginning to understand. <laughs> Gildersleeve, why didn't you tell me what you were up to? <laughs> what did I tell you what I was up to? <laughs> 
passing out loaded cigars with my opponent's name on them. Why, that's the most sensational campaign idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Gildersleeve, put that stuff back in your desk. You're still my water commissioner. <laughs> I am? Well, thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Good old TV. He knew Bullard shouldn't be mayor, so he sold me loaded cigar. Uh, what are you mumbling about, Gildersleeve? You're nothing. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> May I take the other loaded cigar? You're not going to smoke it. Oh, no. I thought I'd give it to Mr. Bullard. He'll get a bang out of it. <laughs> <laughs> hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. Fresh-tasting margarine is the best-tasting margarine. So when you shop, get Parquet, the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Where colored margarine is sold, get yellow Parquet, already colored and ready to serve in its wonderful new Flavor Saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get the handy Color Quick bag or regular package. Parquet, remember, is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Uh, it's been a fine day. Good old Terwilliger back in office. And I'm back in water. Here comes Bullard. What will I say to him? Hello, Bullard. Hello, Gildersleeve. <laughs> nice day. It is. No need to be angry, Bully. About the election, I mean. I'm not angry. Good. However, there is one thing I should like to say, Gildersleeve. Oh? Uh? You are an nincompoop. What? <laughs> and a boneheaded jackass. Oop! <laughs> And if I were mayor, I'd not only throw you out of the water department, I'd run you out of town! You see what nearly happened to me, folks? Don't let it happen to you. Go to the polls and vote. Good night, Bullard. <laughs> Bum sport. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White. The music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Rod, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Martha Hugh Bryan, Stan Farrar, Earl Ross, and Richard LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Want to taste something good? Well, next time you make a cold meat sandwich, don't forget to add a little Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft's prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen to The Falcon on this station next Sunday afternoon. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and hear The Falcon solve The Case of the Rich Racketeer. This is the Great Gildersleeve. On your marks for Groucho on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each Wednesday by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, are the makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices, that extra mellow-tasting pasteurized processed cheese in perfect slices. 
I wonder if you've seen them in your grocer's dairy case. Those neat, really neat square packages of Kraft Deluxe Slices. They're so neat you'd never guess everyone holds eight big slices of extra delicious processed cheese. Eight perfect slices, no slivers or broken pieces, that are cut, wrapped, and sealed for you by Kraft. So look for them when you shop the five delicious kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices. It's a brisk fall morning in Summerfield. The maples are turning red and gold, and there's a fine lift in the air. Makes a man feel like being up and doing. The great Gildersleeve is up. And what's he doing? Well, he's coming out to get the morning paper. Say, what a day. Sunshine, blue sky. Right, George, on a day like this, a man can't go wrong. Good morning, Gilder. Yeah. Huh? Yo, Judge Hooker. Out pretty early, aren't you, Horace? Yes, I'm taking a walk. Getting some ozone and matizone. <laughs> good, very good, Judge. How do you like my autumn necktie, Gilder? Oh, brother, a purple tie. Hey, what's that on a Judge? A green duck? That's a chartreuse goose. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a combination. An old goat with a chartreuse goose. Gilder... <laughs> Good morning, Leroy. Look at the new football Unc bought me. Keen, huh? Oh, that's a Cracker Jack. Yeah. Unc got it for me. Yeah, what a fine little boy. We're going to work out some tricky plays and stuff, aren't we, Unc? Sure. My, how nice it is to see you and little Leroy growing closer together. Doing things together. Unc can do anything. Better than anybody. <laughs> oh, isn't that just like a boy, Judge? He's setting a high standard for you to live up to, Gilde. You should be very proud. Why, am? Yes, sir. Well, I have to be going. Good day, Gilday. Bye, Leroy. You lie, Judge. Fine, old friend. So long, Judge. Okay, come on, Unc. Let's run a couple of plays. You well, I'm not exactly dressed for football, my boy. Oh, come on, Unc. I'll bet you were a swell football player when you were in school. Well, I was pretty tricky. Nimble, too. I wish I could have seen you. Yeah, I used to run interference. Clearing a path for the man with the ball. A path? You can clear a road. <laughs> you bet. You know this player, Choo Choo Justice? Yeah? Well, they used to call me Honk Honk Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gee, and you're my uncle. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago, Leroy. You better take the ball and find some of your little friends. Uh, throw me just one pass, Unc. Just one. Well, all right. You run across the lawn and I'll throw it to you. Uh, hello, Gildersleeve. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Playing football, are you? No, no. Just tossing the ball around. Mr. Bullard, Uncle Mort used to be a famous football player. Really? Now, wait. Sure. He was the captain of the team, weren't you, Uncle? Leroy, I didn't say that. Oh, this is very interesting. I played football, you know. Oh, Harvard. At what college did you play, Gildersleeve? Uh, college? Gildersleeve, you better get out of this. Uh, what was your position on the team, Gildersleeve? Your position? Well... I could play any position, couldn't you, Unc? Now, Leroy... I didn't know you were active in sports, Gildersleeve. No, I'm not. He is, too. He was the trickiest player on the team. Show him, honk, honk. <laughs> Show him how he used to tear up the opposition. Yeah, let's try it, Gildersleeve, just for fun. You now wait. I I'll be the opposing team and you carry the ball. I'll try to stop you. He is going to be keen. He'll never lay a hand on you, Unc. Oh, my goodness. Signal, 24, 77, 46, height. Turn, Unc. Yeah. <laughs> Look out, Bullard. End of the line, Gildersleeve. Down you go. <laughs> I'd say you lost about five yards on that play, Gildersleeve. I lost more than that. Gee, Uncle, what happened? How should I know? Oh, that Bullard. What a sneaky thing to do. Flatten me right in front of Leroy. And after I'd told the boy I was such a hot football player... I only told him that to make him happy. Honk, honk, Gildersleeve. You ought to have your head examined. 
Good heavens, Uncle Mort, what happened? Well, look at your suit. Was that Marjorie? Oh, yes. Grass stains. Well, I was playing with Leroy. Must have slipped. <laughs> Excuse me, what was going on out there in the front yard? First I seen you running, then you disappeared. Did you fall in a hole? <laughs> it was nothing, but we were just playing a little game. I never seen nothing like that. What you call that game? Drop the water commissioner. What's that? <laughs> nothing but. Yes. First he was there, and then he wasn't. Fell in a hole. <laughs> hey, look at Leroy. Still out there in front talking to Bullard. What are you looking at, Anki? You had Bullard. Standing in our grass. How can it grow with his big feet on it? Oh, Uncle Mort, what happened between you and Mr. Bullard? Yeah, nothing new. Just that I get pretty tired of him coming over here, showing off in front of Leroy. I should tell him to get off the property. Oh, Uncle. Hey, Uncle. Yeah, I'm in the living room, Leroy. How do you feel, Uncle? Anything busted? No, nothing is busted. Nothing that shows at any rate. Gee, Uncle, what happened? Leroy, stop asking me what happened. Well, what did? Nothing. Simply because I slipped on the wet grass and that Bullard jumped on me. I've been talking to him, Unc. Gee, he's pretty good at a lot of stuff. Leroy, simply because the grass was wet. Okay, so he's better than you at football. There's other things you can do better than he can. Isn't there? (laughs) Certainly there are. Plenty of things. Think you can beat him playing golf? He says he only shoots 70. Well, I'd have to spend some money to beat him at that. I only have one club. <laughs> Gee, maybe tennis, Unc. He says he only plays that three times a week. What happened to my tennis racket? Oh, yes. Bertie used it the night the bat got in the house. <laughs> well, I know you're better than Mr. Bullard at something. There has to be something. Hiking, maybe? Hiking? Say, that's a thought. Bullard doesn't even walk down to the drugstore. Hiking is a sport, isn't it? Certainly it is. Go challenge you, monk. Leroy, you can't challenge a man to a hike. Let's not be silly about this thing. Well, we got to win at something. You poor little fellow. All right, my boy. As soon as I change my clothes, I'll stop over and see Mr. Bullard. Atta boy, Unc. Sneaky trick, asking Bullard to go for a hike. After all, I walk to the office almost every morning. I don't think Bullard walks from the living room to the dining room. I bet he has bus service. Well, it serves him right. He knocked my legs out from under me. I'll walk his legs off of him. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hello, Bullard. I just stopped by to say, no hard feelings. Well, that's nice of you. But if there are no hard feelings, why are you smiling? Well, I'm smiling because it's a nice day. Oh. In fact, I was about to suggest that you and I take a little hike together tomorrow morning. Hike? Yeah. That means to go someplace. Walking. You want me to go for a hike? Yeah, it might be a lot of sport. Good exercise. Very well. We'll go tomorrow morning. Oh, fine. Bright and early? If you like. Shall we go out to Old Stone Face? Stone Face? Well, I've never been there, but it sounds interesting. It certainly does, Stoneface. Here, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> See you in the morning. At the crack of dawn. Fine. Thank you for asking me. Oh, well, it's all right. See you in the morning. Goodbye. See you in the morning. <laughs> Too bad Georgie fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> it's a dirty trick, but he's got it coming to him. Besides, when he pulls up beside the road in the morning, a car can come out and get him. Say, I'm going down to the barbershop. I don't need a shave, but Floyd will get a kick out of hearing about this. Yeah, I can hear him laughing now. Yeah, I knew you'd get a laugh out of it, Floyd. Hey, you inviting Bullet to go hiking. That's <laughs> the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I ever heard, too. And you're going out to Old Stone Face, huh? Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> Someplace Bullard's heard about. He probably has no idea what it is or how to get there. Oh, he knows what it is. It's a hunk of rock. goes way up in the air. In fact, I told him about it. You told him? <laughs> Kamish, I got news for you. Oh? 
Does high places bother you? High places? Yeah. Well, I don't like it when you lift the barber chair up. Have you ever wanted to crawl out on the ledge of a five-story building? Floyd, what are you getting at? Get a grip on yourself, Kamish. Bullard spent two years in Switzerland. He's a mountain climber. He's a mountain climber? Sure, he goes out looking for cliffs. He crawls up them, holding on by his toenails. What? It's his hobby, Kamish. If you and him are going hiking, you ain't just going too old, Stone Face. You're going up it. Oh, my goodness. Gildersleeve, you've done it now. This time you've gone too far. The Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. Say, friends, have you tasted the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices? Every package of Kraft Deluxe Slices holds eight of the most perfect slices of the mellowest, most delicious pasteurized processed cheese you've ever eaten. You see, Kraft Deluxe Slices are different. They're not cut from a loaf. Instead, an amazing new Kraft invention forms these perfect slices in a way that captures all the fine, deep-down, mellow flavor in every slice. Then, right away, the slices are wrapped, ate to a package, and sealed by Kraft. That way, these fine slices stay perfect and protected all the way to your kitchen. And you won't find a sliver or a broken piece in the package. That way, you can be sure all eight big slices are perfectly easy to separate, too. Why, you can peel these slices apart easier than you'd peel a banana. So get Kraft Deluxe Slices tomorrow. Get several packages so you'll have some on hand always for wonderfully quick and easy snacks and sandwiches. Remember to look for them in your grocer's dairy case when you shop. Kraft Deluxe Slices. This morning, the great Gildersleeve set out to prove to his little nephew Leroy that he was a better man than Rumson Bullard. And it's turning out to be quite a job. That Bullard, football player, tennis expert, golf champion. I was sure I could walk farther than he could. Now he's a mountain climber. Gildersleeve, you just keep your big mouth shut. Well, after this, I will. Yeah, you say that, but you won't. Anyway, it's too late now. You've done it, insisting that Bullard go hiking with you. Oh, brother. I can see myself going up old stone face like a bug on a wall. <laughs> I don't dare tell the little family. Say, maybe I should. They'll put their foot down. They won't let me take a risk like that. Sure, why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> oh, Gildersleeve, you're shrewd. <laughs> Hello, anybody home? Hello, Anki. Hi, Unc. Judge Hooker and I are going out in the morning looking for nuts. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going hiking with Mr. Bullard in the morning. Judge Hooker's a keen old guy. Leroy, I said I was going hiking with Mr. Bullard in the morning. Aren't you even interested? Well, sure, but I can't go with you, Uncle. I promised Judge Hooker. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know you and Mr. Bullard will have a good time, Unky. Yes, but mind me, wait. It's going to be pretty whiskey. We're going up a cliff. Straight up. Bullard is a mountain climber from Switzerland. Hey, that's keen, Unc. Keen? Yeah, maybe he'll teach you to yodel. Oh, for <laughs> Children, I'm telling you about it because I want you to know. This is going to be dangerous. When you go up a mountain, you don't always come down. Ah, you'll come down. <laughs> yes, but... Oh, I'm not worried about Mr. Bullard, Unky. Neither am I. Well, what about me? What's the matter? Don't you want to go, Unc? Well, certainly I want to go, but... Uh, Unky, do you want us to tell you not to go? No, you, of course not. It's just that... Well, then, if you want to go, you go. Oh, what a stubborn family. Hello, Phoebe. Ah, hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? You just give me a coat, Phoebe. Double strength. Yeah, very well. Everybody all right at home, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, fine. 
My Judy and Bronco are happy about the baby coming, I presume. Yeah, happy. The Coke will be ten cents. Ten cents? And when I finish the conversation, it's five cents extra. <laughs> You're all right, Pete. No, it isn't really five cents extra. I say that sometimes. It amuses people. Oh, sure. Mr. Bullard was in a while ago. Says he and another fellow are going to out and climb old Stoneface tomorrow. Who? Who? What else did he say, Petey? Now, he was telling me all about mountain climbing. <laughs> the things those fellows do. What do they do, Petey? Well, it seems they carry a kind of a pickaxe. Yes? And when they're 500 feet in the air, they reach up and stick the point of that pick in an overhanging rock. Yes? Yeah, and then what? Then they climb up the handle. <laughs> Oh, he says there's no danger unless the handle comes loose. Please. Of course, as Mr. Bullard says, there's one nice thing about going mountain climbing. Oh? If you make one slip, you don't have to worry about walking home. Well, that does it. I'm not going. How's that? Nothing, Pete. I thought you said you weren't going. Well, I'm not. Well, what are you getting off the stool for? I'm going. I thought you said you weren't. You, well, I'm not. Peavy, you're all mixed up. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Climbing up pick handles 500 feet in the air. That's going too far. I'm simply going to tell Bullard it's all off. He can swing by pick handles if he wants to. He isn't going to liquidate this water, Commissioner. Ooh, there's Bullard and Leroy in front of the house. Well, I'll just tell him I can't make it, that's all. Hi, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. Good evening, Gildersleeve. Hello, Bullard. Mr. Bullard's been telling me about mountain climbing. Gee, you sure got nerve, Unc. You will. The fact of the matter is... I uh, came over to see if you had a stout rope, Gildersleeve. You stout rope? Yes. When we go up old stone face, we'll tie one end around your waist and the other around mine, just in case one of us should slip. Yes. You will. Bullard. Uh, we'll need it, too, in ascending the nose of old stone face. It's the face of an Indian, I understand, has a large nose. Oh? Yeah. We'll throw the rope from below, anchor it to the tip of the nose, and then swing out from the upper lip. Boy! Just like those guys that hang from an aeroplane. You loafer. You bullards. I want to... I want to... Hey, it's starting to rain. Rain? Oh, no, we can't go in the rain. We can't? I mean, we can't? Oh, what a shame. What rotten luck. Yes, isn't it? And I was looking forward to going. Wouldn't have missed this climbing trip for anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Gildas. Well, that's life, Bullard. We have to take the bitter with the sweet. Too bad. Hey, what's this, Bertie? <laughs> Gildersleeve, we can go after all. Aren't you delighted? <laughs> I'm delirious. Fine morning for climbing, Gildersleeve. Yeah, fine. Uh, Bullard, we aren't going up that cliff, are we? Well, of course. That's the first step in our climb. This is old stone face, and that's the lower lip. But what are we going to hold on to on the face? No wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the exciting part of it. We'll make our own toe hold. Up we go, Gildersleeve. Bullard, watch it. Stop pushing. Oh, there. Oh. Oh, this is going to be interesting. There's nothing with which to brace ourselves. Yeah, I can brace myself on my own goosebumps. Steady, Gildersleeve. Don't look down. If I look down, there's nothing there. Well, we've reached the Indian's upper lip. Hmm. A lot of brush in here. Yeah. Mustache. 
Quite a climb, eh, Gildersleeve? Yes, it certainly has been. Well, let's go home. Home? This is only the beginning. Now I'll throw the rope up to the end of the nose. You good bullet. There we are. Now, up we go, Gildersleeve. You what if the rope comes loose at the top? Well, let's not dwell on that. Let's think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Hundreds of feet in the air, climbing over a stone Indian's nose. It'd be just my luck if he sneezed. Hold on to the rope, Gildersleeve. This is where we start up the forehead. You bullet. This is awful high. Yes, yes it is. Lifts your spirits, doesn't it? Makes you wish you were a bird. Makes me wish I was a gopher. <laughs> I'd dig a hole clear back to Summerfield. Courage, Gildersleeve. This is liable to be just a little risky. <laughs> just a little, he says. Now we'll have to go up over this eyebrow here. He's an intelligent water commissioner. Hanging onto an eyebrow. <laughs> Dangling in space. Ooh, careful, Gildersleeve. One slip here and neither of us will have to walk home. <laughs> We're almost to the top. The things I do for Leroy. If I ever get out of this, I'll never set foot out of the house again. I'll spend the rest of my life in bed. A low bed. Gildersleeve, what are you muttering about? Uh, nothing. Bullard, uh, uh, we're just about to the top. Let's sit a minute on this ledge. Yeah, sure. Here's a nice little circular pile of twigs. Nice cushion. <laughs> Gildersleeve, there's a large bird overhead. He's glaring at you. Hey, big bird. Tough looking, too. He's diving down, Gildersleeve. Look out! Get away! Shoot! Shoot! Out! Cut that out! Gildersleeve, get up! Get up! What's the matter? You're sitting on his nest. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, there goes the rope. What? Hey, Bullet, grab the rope. The end, the pick. Oh, brother, everything gone. Nice work, Gildersleeve. Nice work. Well, thanks. Huh? The rope is gone. The pick is gone. Gildersleeve, barring the possibility that you are carrying a helicopter in your pocket, we are here to stay. But, Bullard, it's only a few feet to the top. Yes, that's true. We could make it easily if we were meadow larks. Well, somebody will see it. We'll call for help. Yes, yes. The butterflies will hear us. You mean we could sit here from now on? We could. As I see it, this is probably one of the most inaccessible spots in the entire county. And all because you had to drop the rope. Gildersleeve, you are a nincompoop. No, wait. At a time like this, let's not argue. No. No, let's not. I forgive you, Gildersleeve. I forgive you everything you have ever done to me. Now, don't lose your head, boy. Be calm. I'm calm. You, me too. Old friend. Old pal. You're brave. You too? Friends to the end, Gildersleeve. Hey, you Alice. bet. Hey, hey, what was that? You sounded like Leroy. Hey, it is Leroy. Leroy, where are you? We're up here, down there. It's Judge Hooker. We're right above you. Judge, you're a lifesaver. How'd you ever get way up here? Well, there's a road up here, Gilda. <laughs> and a nice drinking fountain. Leroy and I stopped to see if you'd make it. Oh, for heaven's sakes, we could have driven to the top of this darn thing. What are you doing down there, Gilda? We're playing canasta. <laughs> Hand something down so we can climb up. Throw down a rope, Judge. We haven't got a rope. 
You will hand something down. Here you are, gentlemen. Take hold of this stick. Oh, Jed, you beautiful stick. You, yeah. Yeah, I've got it. Hold on, Judge. You, please, Pop Grant. We'll quit your shoving. You're What's shoving. What's going on down there? Well, hold it, Judge. I'm coming up. Come on, Bullard. Hold on to my coat yeah. head. Yeah. 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 Gee, Hunk, you made it. You bet. I got to the top first, too. I'm proud of you, Hunk. You, thank you, my boy. I think you accomplished a remarkable feat, Gilda. And the grandest thing of all is that you and Mr. Bullard, in this heroic struggle on the treacherous slope, have at last found each other as true friends. Gildersleeve. Yes? You stepped on my head. I did? Well, it's been a good day after all. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Mothers, you'll give your family a real treat if you serve Kraft Deluxe Slices, those big, perfect slices of fine, pasteurized, processed cheese that are cut, wrapped, and sealed by Kraft. You know, Kraft Deluxe Slices come in five favorite kinds. Everyone at your house can enjoy his favorite, whether it's delicious Kraft American, Kraft American with scarlet pimentos added, nut sweet Kraft Swiss, Craft brick with that deep down rich taste or sharp tantalizing old English brand. So get several kinds for quick, easy to fix snacks and sandwiches ready whenever you want them. Tomorrow when you shop, look in your grocer's dairy case for the five delicious kinds of convenient craft deluxe slices. <laughs> Kidding. Did you and Mr. Bullard really climb all the way up old stone face? You yeah, certainly did. Clear from the bottom. I can't believe it. Mr. Gilsley, have you seen the morning paper? No, I haven't, Bertie. Look here. There was a photographer out there yesterday, and he got a picture of you and Mr. Bullard going up that cliff. You did? Well, let's see that. Well, there's old stone face, but I don't see you and Mr. Bullard. You were there. See those two dots on the end of the Indian's nose? I'm the one on the left. <laughs> You did that just for me? Yeah, just for you, my boy. Gee. Hey, Aunt Mr. Bullard's out in front. Shall we get the football and run a couple of plays? Uh, no, thanks. I'm very busy. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, and music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's a secret for making dull meals interesting. Add craft prepared mustard to any meat dish, hot or cold, and see the difference. Hidden flavors pop right out because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard, you know. Craft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember, with any meat dish, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen to The Falcon next Sunday afternoon over the station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and be sure to hear The Falcon solve The Case of the Widow's Gorilla. You bet your life it's Groucho Marx next on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. 
makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices, those perfect slices of extra mellow-tasting pasteurized processed cheese. When you shop tomorrow, look in your grocer's dairy case for those neat square packages marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. As neat as they are, every package holds eight big slices of delicious processed cheese. Eight perfect slices that are cut, wrapped, and sealed for you by Kraft. So remember to look for those handy packages and try all five grand kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices. See what's doing at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. Little Leroy is just knocking on his uncle's door, and by the tone of his voice, he's trying to get out of something. Unc! Yes, Leroy? Come in. Thanks, Unc. I don't have to be in the Summerfield Centennial, do I? You what's this, my boy? They're auditioning all the school kids for the pageant. They want me to be a singing Indian. A singing Indian? Well, Leroy, I think you'd make a fine Indian. Are you kidding? I don't have to sing, do I, Uncle? Do I? No, Leroy, why not? I'd just be wasting their time and my time. No, you wouldn't, my boy. You don't think so? By the moon of the sky, blue waters. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You'd be wasting your time. <laughs> Key, I don't have to do it, huh, Uncle? Well, I think you should offer to be in it. You can't carry a tune, but you might carry a hatchet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Uncle, I don't want to be in the old pageant. No, Leroy, this centennial is going to be quite a thing. There's an article here in the newspaper about the pageant. Pageant's magic. Here, listen to this. The city is agog over the approaching celebration. It was 100 years ago that Captain Otto K. Summer planted the barrel of his trusty squirrel gun in our soil and said, I dub thee Summerfield. Oh, brother. My teacher says they're even going to have a guy out there dressed like Captain Summer singing. Yes, I'll have to have somebody impersonate him. That'll be the leading role. You say, let me read this again. Is squirrel gun ourselves. Auditions are being held at... Well, excuse me, Leroy, I have to go. Where are you going? Captain Otto K. Summer is going to the audition. In the land of the sky, blue water. What a character. Well, I didn't do badly on the audition. Nice fellow, that pageant producer. I could tell I impressed him, too. He smiled when I hit that high note. Me, 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 me. Gildersleeve, you're dynamite. <laughs> yeah, sure. He'll pick me for the title role. I think I'll stop in the barbershop and let Floyd meet Captain Otto K. Summer. Well, if it ain't the water commissioner. Hello, Floyd. Hop right up in the chair, Commish. You know, I don't need anything, Floyd. Just thought you'd like to know I'm singing in the Summerfield Centennial. You don't say. What you gonna sing, Commish? Cool water? <laughs> cool. Floyd, I can see you haven't the faintest idea what this pageant is all about. Yeah, I just auditioned for Mr. Hoyland. He's the man who came out from Kansas City to stage the pageant. Yeah, he's quite a guy. Yeah? yeah what do you know about him? I just know he's got his eye on me for the title role, that's all. You, Floyd? Did you go down and audition too? No, he came in for a shave, so I sung for him while he was in the chair. A singing barber. Yeah, regular figuero. That's me. <laughs> Lloyd, if you think you're set for the title role, you're mistaken. Oh, well, yeah, I had him charmed, Commish. His whiskers come off like wet wallpaper. Lloyd, I'm going to sing the role of Captain Summer. Is that so? He even had me practice Captain Summer's song. In summer feel I take my stand to live and die on this dear land. He had me sing that, too. You. Oh, here comes the judge. Hello, Horace. In Summerfield, I take my stand to live and die in this dear land. <laughs> you too? What do you mean, me too, Gilday? I just auditioned for the part of Captain Otto K. Summer. 
You judge with that shiver in your voice, you don't sound like somebody who's having a cold winter. <laughs> the commission thinks he's going to play the captain. You, Gildy, you're too big to play Captain Summer. But you might be his horse and let me ride you in piggyback. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, John. But I'm going to be Captain Summer. I'm going to be Captain Summer. I know I'm going to get the role. You, the pageant's going to be outdoors, and my voice carries. You can say that again. It never stops. <laughs> oh, balderdash. That's better than sounding like a bullfrog in a well. Who sounds like a bullfrog? The telephone. No, I, I'll answer it. I'll answer it. I pay the rent. Very well. You nosy old goat. Lloyd's Barbershop's your nickel. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Yeah, he is. Commission, it's for you. For me? It's your niece. You, Marjorie? Uh-huh. I wonder what she wants. Hello, my dear. Uncle Mort, I've been calling all over town for you. You yeah. have? Anything wrong? No, but a Mr. Hoyland phoned. Oh, yes. He's in charge of the centennial pageant. What did he want? Well, he wanted to contact you before you made any plans for this evening. He wants to come over and talk to you. He does? Well. He made it sound very important. You, yeah, it is important. It means I'm singing the title role. That's all. What's this, Gildy? Oh, good for you, Rocky. Yeah, thank you, my dear. Goodbye. Bye. Well, fellas, I guess you heard that. I heard it, but I can't believe it. <laughs> no, Floyd. There's plenty of parts in the fashion for everyone, and I'll see that you get one. I was certain I'd get that role. My voice carries so well. You don't feel badly, Judge. If you dye your hair and put a feather in it, you can be an Indian with Leroy. <laughs> I ain't going to be left out. What can I be, Commissioner? Floyd, you can put on one of your barber sheets and be the judge's teepee. Yeah. Gosh, Aunt, you mean you're going to be the big cheese of the whole pageant? Well, Leroy, why else would Mr. Hoyland of Kansas City be coming out to see me? Why shouldn't I be the big cheese? Yes, Leroy, why shouldn't he? Okay, so he's a big cheese. Excuse me. Yes, Bertie? How many cups of cocoa do you think you'll need tonight? Uh, you better make a pot full, Bertie. Yes, sir. Cocoa, Uncle? Yes, my dear. Mr. Hoyland arrives, I'm going to serve cocoa and crumpets. Crumpets? Well, tally ho. <laughs> Leroy, that sort of thing impresses artistic people. And besides... The warm cocoa will keep me in good voice. No doubt he want to hear me sing. I sure hope you get your part, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, thank you, Bert. Yes, sir. You go throw the book at him, Mr. Gillsleeve. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. Yeah, I will, Bert. Yes, sir. That'll sort the leading part for you. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. Yeah, that's the idea. Mr. Gillsleeve will get the leading part because he's throwing the book at him. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. Yeah, all right, Bert. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know how you get the leading part? Yes, that's Bert. right. Cocoa, crumpets, and crooning. <laughs> Bertie's awfully happy for you, Unky. Yeah, Bertie's a jewel. Well, that must be the guy at the door. I'll let him in. Not in that hop along Cassidy sweatshirt, Leroy. You better come upstairs with me, Leroy. Heck no, I want to stay and watch. I've never seen anybody from Kansas City. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Upstairs, Leroy Scoot. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Mr. Hoyland. Come right in. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a little chilly out. Yes. How about a cup of hot cocoa? Cocoa? You can enjoy cocoa and crumpets while I crew. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve, but that isn't necessary. You know, no, Mr. Hoyland, I'll be happy to. I know, but the reason I came Excuse over... Me. Uh, Ready! Uh, just be seated by the piano, Mr. Hoyland. The cocoa will be right in. Well, uh, you, you see... must be rather fatigued after auditioning so many bad voices. As a matter of fact, I discovered one remarkably fine voice. Well, I've been singing for quite some time. Uh, yes, yes. Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, this may come as a complete surprise to you. No, but... on the contrary. I expected it. <laughs> I see that now. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, the reason I'm here is... Uh... Excuse me. You ready? You just put the cocoa on the coffee table. Yes, sir. Then I'll go get the trumpet. Good evening, Mr. Hoyle. Good evening. Yeah? Do you know Bertie? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, she auditioned with members of the choir from her church. She did? Well, Bertie, you didn't tell me you auditioned. <laughs> 
No, sir. <laughs> you have a lot of talent in your home, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, yeah, you have. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bertie, I uh, wonder if you'd mind singing that solo for me again. I'd be glad to if it's all right with Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, certainly. <laughs> yes, indeed. You go right ahead. And then I'll sing. <laughs> I'll play for you, Bertie. Uh, thank you, sir. You yeah, wonder what's going on. I don't get it. Bertie has a good voice, but she couldn't possibly play Captain Otto K. Summer. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just wanted to confirm what I felt all along. Oh? Bertie has a remarkably fine voice, and I'd like to arrange for her to study in Kansas City, if uh, she'd care to take advantage of it. Would you, Bertie? Oh, Mr. Wallen, I don't know what to say. I'm so excited. Wouldn't that cost a lot of money? Oh, don't worry about that. There's a foundation with money available to train talent such as yours. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ain't this wonderful? What do you think, Mr. Gildersleeve? You are, yes. You're wonderful. Congratulations, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Bertie's going to study voice in Kansas City. My land. I bet them prophets is burnt up, sir. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, that's what I came here about. Yeah, I see. Even Mr. Hoyland. What about the role of Captain Otto K. Summer? Uh, that requires a good baritone. You bet. That's what I was telling Floyd and the judge. I mean, go right ahead. I interrupted you. You were speaking about a good baritone voice? Uh, yes, I couldn't find one in Summerfield, so I'm singing Captain Summer myself. <laughs> what a sneaky way to get the leading role. Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Here's some wonderful news for every one of you homemakers listening in. Now you can buy a neat package that holds eight of the most perfect slices of the most mellow-tasting pasteurized processed cheese you've ever eaten. They're called Kraft Deluxe Slices, and they're different, really different from any other cheese in slices you've ever had. Because these slices are not cut from a loaf. That's right. These slices are formed by an amazing new craft invention, and they're made in a way that captures extra cheese goodness, a deep-down, mellow flavor in every perfect slice. Then immediately they're wrapped, eight big slices to the package, and sealed by craft. So every slice will stay perfect and protected all the way to your kitchen. 
This way, you'll never find slivers or broken pieces in a package of Kraft Deluxe Slices. You'll find only perfect slices, slices that are easy to separate. Open that package and just see if Kraft Deluxe Slices don't come apart even easier than you'd peel a banana. You'll find Kraft Deluxe Slices in your grocer's dairy case, so look for them when you shop tomorrow and take home several packages so you'll always have some on hand for delicious snacks and sandwiches you can fix in a jiffy. You'll never want ordinary sliced cheese again once you discover Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, let's get back to the Great Gildersleeve. One good thing came out of the auditions for the Summerfield Centennial. The impresario discovered Bertie. Now it's generally accepted that she'll go to Kansas City to study voice. What the great Gildersleeve finds difficult to accept is that he's losing his housekeeper. <laughs> Three days ago we had a housekeeper for life. Now we only have her for this evening. The heck with the house. I'm worried about the cooking. Leroy, you're always thinking about your stomach. I wonder what Bertie will have for our last dinner. Leftovers, I guess. She's been so busy packing all day. Yeah, Bertie's been pretty busy. But she's happy. That's the important thing. Gosh, I remember the good old days when Bertie used to come out of the kitchen carrying a big stack of waffles and a platter of bacon and eggs. Yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And those swell apple pies with the big hunks of cheese. Yeah. And those big juicy pot roasts. Now all we got left is the pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll miss her, my boy. Oh, do you think she really wants to go? Well, Mr. Hoyland says it's a great opportunity for Bertie. And he wants her to start studying right away. And he's pretty persuasive. Why didn't he stay in Kansas City? The house will fall apart. Now, Leroy, Marjorie can take over. What good is she? She's going to have a baby. <laughs> well, you and Bronco and I will run the house. Oh, brother, it will fall apart. Unc. Hmm? Huh? Isn't that Bertie's train ticket up on the mantle? You know it is, Leroy. What if that ticket should disappear? Disappear? What if that ticket should fall into the fireplace? Accidentally. Leroy, how can you think of such a thing? Besides, there's no fire in the fireplace. Well, I could light the fire and you could push the ticket off. Leroy, I'm amazed at you. I wouldn't consider that. Still, I could light the fire and Leroy could push it off. No. I guess we're trapped, Tonk. Yeah, I guess so, my boy. Hey, let's be big about it. I'm trying. Good boy. I think I'll get down to Peavy's and buy Bertie a nice going away gift. I think I'll go raid the icebox while there's still something in it. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Well... Bertie's leaving tonight, Peavy. Yes, so I hear. Well, I'd like to get her a going away present. Very well. Something pretty nice, Peavy. Yeah, how about this big vanity chest? It's the best in the house, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, the best is none too good for Bertie. Just charge it. Very well. Uh, don't tell any of your friends, Mr. Gildersleeve, but since it's for Bertie, I'll give it to you wholesale. Well, thank you, Peavy. The way I see it, a person going to the city to seek a career needs every advantage. Yo? You know, it brings to mind the young fellow who used to work for me. He went to Los Angeles to get on the radio. You did? He thought he had a voice like Nelson Eddy. But he didn't. He just had hair like him. <laughs> well, uh, did he get on the radio, Peavy? No, he's a singing car hop. Well, that doesn't sound like much of a career. Well, with that hair, he still might make it in television. Yo. <laughs> You, why doesn't he give up and come back to work for you? Pride, Mr. Gildersleeve. When a person goes to the city and fails, it's hard to come back home. See, I hadn't thought of that. Of course, I'm not saying that's going to happen to Bertie. But... Well, if it should, it'd be a terrible thing, Peepy. It'd break her heart. 
I wonder if I shouldn't have a talk with her about that. Well, I'd hate to see a fine woman like Bertie stranded in the city. By George, it's my duty to have a talk with her. A lot of good voices that never get any place. Look at me. Yeah. You know that with my voice, I could have had a musical career. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> really? I didn't think of this before. It's my duty to point out to Bertie the pitfalls. It's a rocky road to success. He's in that toilet. He's just thinking about a voice. I'm thinking about a human being. And this human being is a good cook. Bertie! I'm in the kitchen, Miss Gilsley. Yeah, I'll just put the bandage just behind this chair until I have a talk with her. I'd much rather give it to her as a stay-at-home present than a going-away present. Are you busy, Bertie? Just packing lunch to eat on the train. Yeah, Bertie's going on a train to Kansas City. <laughs> uh, well, before you pack the lunch, Bertie, have you given this trip a lot of thought? Yes, sir. You, are you sure you're going to be happy? A lot of things can happen in that big city, Bertie. Yes, and Bertie's ready for him to happen. <laughs> you are? I got new suitcase, new shoes, new dress. Mr. Gilsey, are you looking at the new birdie? Yeah, I know that birdie, but... Yes, sir, you looking at the new birdie. I got my ticket and I'm ready to roll. Well, that sounds nice, birdie, but about a singing career... Ain't that wonderful, Mr. Gilsey? I gotta pinch myself to see if it's true. Ouch! It's true! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, birdie... Of course, if you don't think I'll go... Oh, no, birdie, it isn't that. Then what was you gonna say? Well, you, you step into the living room, Bertie. I want to give you your stay at home. I mean, your going away present. I put Bertie's suitcase in the car, Uncle. Huh? Yeah, thank you, my boy. We'll be ready to leave in a few minutes. Oh, Unky, wait till you see Bertie. She's stunning in that new dress. Oh? Yeah, I come. I hope I stunt them in Kansas City. Well, I'm sure you will, Bertie. Gosh, Bertie, you sure look keen. <laughs> Thank you, Leroy. You'll write to Bertie, won't you? Oh, sure. Oh, we'll all write, Bertie. And after the baby comes, I'll send you pictures. Yes, ma'am. I sure want to see that baby. You sure you're going to be all right, Miss Marjorie? Oh, I'll be fine, Bertie. Well, what about little Leroy? Is he going to get enough to eat? You don't have to worry about that boy getting enough to eat. You just worry about yourself, Bertie. Yes, sir. Where's Mr. Bronco? I'd like to say goodbye to him. Well, oh, he's working late, Bertie. He'll meet us at the train. Yes, ma'am. And... And... You well, it's still a little while for train time. Yeah. What do we do? You will just talk, Leroy. Well, why doesn't somebody say something? Uh, Bertie, you sure you have everything? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, how's the voice, Bertie? Oh, Mr. Gillespie, I've been so busy. I haven't had time to try it today. And I have to sing that song for him when I get to Kansas City. Well, would you like to run over it once, Bertie? Yeah, good idea. I would like to have you play it for me once more, Miss Marjorie. All right, Bertie. Go in the home, go in the home. I'm a go in the home. Quiet life, some still day. I'm just go in the home. It's not. What's the matter, Miss Marjorie? Something wrong? Why'd she stop playing? What's the matter, my dear? I'm, I'm sorry, Bertie. I, I got a little dizzy. I I guess I'd better go upstairs and lie down. Poor little girl. I'll help you upstairs, Miss Marjorie. Yeah, I'll take care of her. No, I'll help her, Unc. You and Bertie had better go. Oh, yes, Unky. You haven't much time. Well. Goodbye, Bertie. Goodbye, Miss Marjorie. Mr. Gilsey? Yes, Bertie? I ain't going. <laughs> now, Bertie, Marsha will be all right. She'd be very unhappy if she thought you stayed because of her. You go and sing. 
I couldn't sing a lick. You're right. I, I got laryngitis. <laughs> oh, come now, Bert. Yes, I got laryngitis. I couldn't sing a lick. I, I'm staying in on this skill sleep. Well, you know we'd love to have you, but... And I'd love to say, excuse me, Miss Gillsleeve, I gotta eat some water up from my laryngitis. You're all right, Bertie. Yeah, I wonder if Bertie's doing the right thing. Thing that'll make her happy. Stay in the home, stay in the home. Little laryngitis. She's singing like a bird. Well, she's happy. What a fine woman. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. You know, folks, if everyone at your house seems to favor a different kind of processed cheese, you can still enjoy the convenience and extra mellow goodness of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Because these big, perfect slices that are cut and wrapped each of the package by Kraft come in five delicious kinds. There's Kraft American. Kraft American with scarlet pimentos added. Nut sweet Kraft Swiss. Kraft Brick with that deep down rich taste and sharp Old English brand. Get several so everyone can enjoy his favorite for quick snacks and easy sandwiches. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case, the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Hello, Phoebe. Mr. Gildersleeve, what can I do for you this morning? Yeah, good news, Pete. Oh? Yep. Bertie didn't go to Kansas City after all. He couldn't leave the little family. My, my. I presume you'll want to return the vanity case. Oh, no. No, I said I'd rather give it to her as a staying at home present. And I did. You know, I'm no cheapskate, Pete. Yeah, I'm glad of that. You are? You see, I sold that to you wholesale because it was a going away present. Yes, but now that it's staying in town, I'll have to charge it to retail price. Oh, <laughs> Phoebe! I'll just put it on your bill. Oh well. What the heck? We still have Bertie. <laughs> by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Ted Von Elts, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Ross, and Dick McGrath. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Hey, this is me again, folks. Before we say goodnight... I'd like to remind all of you how important it is that we attend and support the church of our choice. Especially right now, when certain forces around the world are trying to destroy the rights of mankind to his faith in God. Our churches are a vital part of our way of life. So go to church this week and take the little family. Good night, everybody. Here comes that Groucho Marx on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. 
Kraft, you know, are the makers of the wonderful new Kraft pasteurized processed cheese and slices. Those perfect slices of extra mellow-tasting processed cheese that are formed, then wrapped and sealed for you right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case. Eight fine slices in every neat package. And those packages really are neat, and they hold eight delicious slices. Look for them when you shop tomorrow. Those neat square packages marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, the great Gildersleeve considers himself a very lucky man. He's head of the water department, head of a happy little family, and he's headed for home. You're right, George. It's always nice to get home on a cold winter evening. Yes, sir. After a big dinner, there's nothing like sitting by the fire with your little family. Yeah. Look at those two snowbirds huddled together. Say, after dinner, I think I'll go over and sit by the fire with Catherine. Oh. <laughs> Listen to those little birds cheep. Rock, Oh, that's no bird. Mrs. Thompson's sister. Well, I'm not going to get trapped by that siren's call this time. Come over here, you naughty boy, you. Hello there, Vicky. Where have you been, Throckmorton? Me? Well, I haven't seen you since you and the family were over at my sister's for Sunday dinner, and that's been over a month ago. You well. I hoped you'd be giving little Vicky a ring. Yeah, I did. I phoned you the next evening, but you were out. Oh, well, I must have been spending the evening at the library. You yeah, the library. <laughs> I know who was taken out, and it wasn't a book. Why didn't you call me again? Well, I did. But every time I phoned, they said you had a date with a fellow named Schultz. Oh, now, Trot Martin, why don't you try me this evening? Yeah, what happened to Schultz? Oh, he left town. He did? When? This afternoon. <laughs> I just took him to the train. Uh, can I take you home? No, thanks. Uh, that is, uh, I live right down the street. All right. But really, Throckmorton, I haven't a thing to do tonight. And I feel I can hint to you, since Franco's my nephew and he's married to your niece. What about tonight? Well, I thought I'd go over and see you. Yes? Yeah, I mean, I was planning to... Uh... What are you going to do, Throckmorton? Let's say I'm spending the evening at the library. <laughs> yeah, that Vicky's an attractive girl. But what a flirt she is. Well, no woman can wind me around her finger. Louis Leave, I'm proud of you. You stood like the rock of Gibraltar. You wonder where the little family is. Hello! Where is everybody? Oh, hello, Anki. Welcome home. Yeah, well, Marjorie, did you have a nice day, my dear? Wonderful, Anki. Good. Where's Leroy? And Bronco, the boy husband. Well, Leroy's out back building a snowman, and Bronco's still working. Oh? I thought he closed his real estate office at 5 o'clock. Oh, he has a sideline now. After hours, he sells calendars. He calendars? Uh-huh. He says a lot of business firms buy them this time of year, and with the baby coming, he wanted to make some extra money. Yeah, right, George. That Bronco's quite a boy. Hello, Marge, honey. Hello, darling. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Watch it, Bronco. <laughs> now, how's the calendar business? Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm red hot. I've taken three orders for calendars since 5 o'clock. Mike's Bowling Alley and the Corner Gas Station. Yeah, well, that's only two. Who's the third? You. <laughs> <laughs> Me? But, Bronco, what would I do with calendars? Use them for goodwill advertising, Mr. Gildersleeve. Your water customers will feel better about paying their bills if you give them a calendar. Yeah, well, you may have something there. Everybody isn't too prompt about paying. Oh, Uncle, you're going to buy some calendars? Sure, what the heck. Oh, fine. Now, uh, which of these pictures do you want in your calendars? Yeah, well, let's see. Hmm. Mostly dogs and girls. Uh, how do you like this one, Mr. Gildersleeve? 
the Irish setter. Yeah, I like this one, the Scotch lassie. <laughs> I think you're right, Unky. There's nothing like a pretty girl for a calendar. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but she's reserved. She is? Yeah, by the bowling alley. Yeah, I might have known. Nice pins. <laughs> You can put anybody's picture on the calendar, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I can? Sure. Well, give me time to think about it, Bronco. Oh, whatever you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come on, Marge, honey. Tell me everything that happened today. All right, darling. See you later, Unky. Ta-ta. Mm. Ooh, I, I could use my picture on the calendar. No, girls are prettier. <laughs> well, what about Catherine? By George, I'll hurry over there right after dinner. Why, George, this is a great idea. Putting out a calendar for the water department with my girl's picture on it. I'm glad I thought of it. Well, icicles hanging from the eaves. Pretty. Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. It's chilly out here. Come on inside. Yeah, thanks. Mmm, nice and toasty in here. Yes, it is. Let me take your coat. Yeah, thank you. Come over by the fire and sit down. You bet. <laughs> yes, I've got a wonderful idea. Oh? Let me see your profile. You've seen my profile. Yes, but my delinquent water customers haven't. What are you talking about? Now, it tilts your nose a little. Let me fluff out that red hair. Throckmorton, <laughs> why are you looking at me with such a critical eye? I was just wondering how you'd look hanging on the wall. <laughs> you what? Yeah, I mean, well, the water department is putting out some 1951 calendars. And it occurred to me that you'd make a hit with the customers if your picture appeared in the calendar. Oh, well, that's a very nice thought, Throckmorton. But I'm not a model. I'm a registered nurse. Well, I think you'd register with the customers, too. <laughs> You're pretty cute. Thank you, Throckmorton. But I couldn't possibly do that. Why don't you get somebody else? I'm not interested in getting anybody else. If I can't have you, I won't have anybody. Oh, now you're acting like a little boy. No, I'm not. But, Catherine, you'd mean a lot to me if you'd let me use your picture in your nurse's cap and uniform. Oh, Oh, well, if it's that kind of picture... Then you'll do it. Well, if you really want me to... You bet. And I'll put a caption on your picture. Our water is as dependable as your nurse. Always on tap. Oh. <laughs> Step in, Leroy. Gosh, don't you swell to let me come to the office with you this morning? Well, my secretary is off for the Thanksgiving holidays. Maybe you can help me run the water department. Hey, can I cut off somebody's water? <laughs> no, Leroy. But I see Hazel left some water bills in the desk. You can seal the envelope. Hmm. I like the glue. Hmm. What a boy who likes the glue. <laughs> what are you going to do, Unc? Well, I have to get the water department calendar ready for the printers. Nice picture of Catherine in uniform. Huh, Leroy? Yeah. Gosh, how'd you ever get Miss Milford to be on your calendar? She's so dignified. Yeah, my boy, your old uncle has a way with women. No kidding. How'd you talk her into it, Unc? Let me in on your secret. I ought to know these things. I'm growing up. <laughs> well, Leroy, the first thing a man has to learn is never let a woman wrap you around her finger. Protect yourself at all times. That doesn't sound easy. You, well, it takes an old smoothie. <laughs> you learn by experience. And you've had a lot of experience, huh, Unc? <laughs> well, I... You, Who's that? Hey, it's Miss Chase. Vicky? You don't wonder what she wants. Oh, good morning, Leroy. Hi. Well, Vicky. Oh, Throckmorton, I found you at last. I had the most terrible time locating the water department. Oh? I get lost so easily. <laughs> well, I suppose...
suppose you're wondering why I'm here. Yes, yes, I am. Well, Bronco came over to see his mother last night, and he was telling us about your dilemma. My dilemma? Well, that you're looking for a girl for your calendar. Well, here I am. You? But, Vicky, I've already made a selection. Oh, that's too bad. And I brought all these photographs down to show you. <laughs> Sorry. No use looking at them, I'm afraid. Uh, here's one of me at the beach. Yeah, but there's no use looking at... Yeah. Unc, I thought you said there was no use looking at them. Leroy, go see those envelopes. What a character. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask me to sit down, Trot Morton? Oh, sorry. I guess you're tired carrying so many pictures around. Whose picture is this? The nurse. The nurse? Oh, yeah, I was going to put her on the calendar. Rock Morton, I'm surprised at you. You are? Look at my picture. I've been looking. <laughs> now, which would be better for the water department, a girl in a nurse's uniform or a girl in the water? Well, it's hard to argue about that. Oh, come on. Be nice to Vicky. I've always wanted my picture published, and you aren't giving me a chance. You will. If you use my picture, I'll give you a kiss. Well, I believe in giving everybody a chance. I want to be fair. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you're a darling. What happened? You promised to use my picture. Thank you, Tom Morton. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. No. Wait. Vicky. Oh, she's gone. Now what will I tell Catherine? The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Friends, cheese lovers everywhere are excited about the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices. And no wonder. Here's the best-flavored, most mellow, pasteurized processed cheese you've ever tasted in the most perfect slices you've ever seen. That's right. Kraft processed cheese and slices are really different. You see, they're made differently. Instead of being cut from a loaf like other sliced cheese, Kraft slices are formed by an amazing new craft invention that captures extra cheese flavor, wonderfully mellow flavor in every perfect slice. And right after they're made, these perfect slices of processed cheese are wrapped, ate to a neat package, and sealed by craft. This way, they stay perfect and protected all the way to your kitchen. So you'll never find a sliver, a dried edge, or a broken piece in a package of craft slices. All eight are perfect, and so easy to separate. Why, it's easier to peel them apart than it is to peel a banana. See for yourself. You'll want to get several packages, so you'll always have them on hand for wonderfully quick and easy snacks and sandwiches anytime. Look for this wonderful processed cheese when you shop tomorrow. Convenient, delicious, Kraft Deluxe Slices. back to the great Gildersleeve. He's home now and finding it difficult to answer some of his nephew's questions. I don't get it, Unc. You said a woman couldn't wind you around her finger. Well, Leroy, you're too young to understand these things. I don't get it. How did Miss Chase talk you into using her picture? It doesn't add up. In my boy, it isn't so much a matter of arithmetic as it is chemistry. <laughs> yeah? Well, I got a chemistry set, but I don't get loused up the way you do. Yes, yes. You know, Miss Pierce? Yep. Hello, Bertie. Can I have one of your 1951 calendars for the kitchen? Yeah, of course, Bertie. That's nice. Miss Marjorie tells me you're going to have a picture of your cute little nurse on it. You well. Heck no. He's going to have a picture of Miss Chase on it. Miss Chase? Mr. Kelsey, what made you change your mind? Chemistry. But I don't get it. <laughs> Oh, youth. Miss Kelsey, I've been thinking. If you promise to use Miss Milford's picture, and then you turn around and promise to use Miss Chase's picture, couldn't that put you behind the eight ball? 
<laughs> Miss Gilsey, that does put you behind the eight ball. Yeah, Albert. Yes, sir, you may not know it, but that water department calendar's got you in hot water. Well, could be. Yes, sir, the water commissioner's in hot water. <laughs> you blew hot and cold, so you're in hot water. Yeah, all right. Miss Gilsey, you know where the water commissioner is? Yes, sir. That's buddy. right, he's in hot water. <laughs> I think I'll get on to Peavy's. The hot water commissioner needs a cold Coke. <laughs> Gilder's sleeve the old smoothie. Phooey. I shouldn't have talked Catherine into this. Say, wait a minute. I did talk her into it. She didn't want her picture in the calendar in the first place. So what am I worried about? I'll just call her and tell her I'm using another picture. Of course, I don't have to tell her whose picture I'm using. Gildersleeve, you, you are an old smoothie. Hello, Peavy. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can your friendly neighborhood druggist do for you? you? Give me a Coke and give me a nickel. Give you a Coke and give you a nickel? That's right, Peavy. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, if I give you a Coke, you should give me a nickel. But, Peavy... Why should I give you a nickel? Peavy, here's a dime. But the Coke's only a nickel. Yeah, I know that. I want to make a phone call. I thought you wanted a Coke. Oh, my goodness, Peavy. I want a nickel Coke, and I want a nickel for the phone. No, oh, why didn't you say so? Over. You uh, want me to mix the Coke now, or wait until after the phone call? You mix it now. This telephone call won't take long. See, I promised Catherine I'd put her picture on the water department calendars. <laughs> but I changed my mind. I'm using another girl. Oh, isn't that dangerous? Yeah, don't you worry, Peavy. The old smoothie knows how to handle these things. <laughs> my, my. If you don't believe me, I'll leave the telephone booth door open. <laughs> yeah. Then you can hear me in action. I can hear you with the door closed. <laughs> uh, Katie will be tickled to death to get out of this. I talked her into it, and I'll let her talk me out of it. Hello? Hello, Catherine. This is Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. I'm so glad you called. You're about that picture for my calendar, Catherine. That's what I want to talk to you about. You do? Good. I'm so excited about it. Yeah? All the doctors want calendars for their offices. Yeah, they do. And Mother wants to send them to all our relatives. Yeah, but Catherine... I'm terribly flattered that you picked me, but of course you would. Yeah, I would. You know, I may have a better picture taken. Do you have any new ideas about the calendar? Yeah, well, none I can talk about now. Oh. Well, then I'd better go to the hospital. Yeah, I'll be going to the hospital, too. Bye. You yeah, I. Yeah. Here you are. Here's your coat, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thanks, Pete. And an aspirin. You offer. <laughs> Sounds like the old smoothie hit a few bumps. <laughs> Don't rub it in, Pete. No, sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I guess I shouldn't. But if I were in your shoes, I'd be tempted not to put out a calendar at all. You would? I'd do like the Russians. When you're caught in an embarrassing situation, just walk out. <laughs> Say, I don't have to put out a calendar. I promised Bronco I'd buy them, but I'll just pay him his commission. He'll be happy. Then I don't have to use either girl. Do you want two more nickels to call and tell him that? No, thanks, Petey. I'm paying Bronco the commission. Let him tell him. Good old Bronco. What a salesman. But, Bronco, I don't understand. Well, to make a long story short, Miss Milford... Mr. Gildersleeve has decided not to put out a calendar this year. Oh, well, that's a quick change, even for Throckmorton. Uh, Bronco, just why did he send you over to tell me this? Well... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, that Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> he gets into the worst pickles. Oh, how sour is this one? Well, perhaps I shouldn't, but I guess I can tell you, Miss Milford, you're so understanding. 
Oh, very. Well, after promising to use your picture, you can understand what happened to Mr. Gildersleeve when another girl came along. Uh, Rocco, could this other girl be your Aunt Vicky? Uh, how did you know? Woman's intuition. Uh, Vicky must be quite a person. Well, she's nothing like you, Miss Milford. She's the exotic type. Oh. Well, not that you couldn't be, of course, if you wanted to, but you wouldn't want to. Oh, wouldn't I? Of course not. You're just a good, old-fashioned girl. I am? You're dependable and reliable. You're the wholesome type. Uh, thanks, pal. <laughs> what I mean is, you're not a flirt. You're a dignified, registered nurse. Well, tonight I'm off duty. Ooh. Nice of Bronco to get me out of this, Marjorie. It was worth the commission. Oh, you can depend on Bronco, Anki. He'll fix it for you. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes, Bertie? What's the turkey we have tomorrow? No, thanks, Bertie. I don't trust myself with that turkey. I feel so good I might eat it all tonight. Yes, sir. You lost appetite there for a while, didn't you? Well, I... <laughs> Poor Anki. Women can do that to him. You will never again. No, sir. I am now immune to feminine wiles. Yes, sir. You'll never be lured into another jam by a pretty face. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't. Oh, somebody at the door. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I better run upstairs, Anki. My hair's in curlers. You're all right, my dear. Good evening, Ralph Morton. Well, Catherine, come right in. Catherine? <laughs> Well, 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 what an unexpected pleasure. Thank you. You are right, George. I scarcely recognized you at first. New lipstick? No, just more of it. Oh. Here, let me take your coat. You're so gallant, Throckmorton. You are. <laughs> Say, new hairdo. Up sweet? Mm. Do you like it? Very much. You get it up off your bare shoulders. Nice. I hope you think so. Yeah, I do. Shall we sit together here by the fire? Yeah, I like that idea, too. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> I think the fire gives us enough light without this lamp. Don't you... Well, it's a nice way of cutting down the light bill. <laughs> oh, my hands are so cold. I think I'll hold them near the fire. You might get burned, Catherine. Let me rub them. Stimulate circulation. All right. Rock Morton. Yes, Catherine. You aren't rubbing them. You're just holding them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Mm. Ah, this is living. It isn't bad. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Captain, you're wonderful. Track Martin. Yes? About Bronco, do you think he's working too hard? Bronco? Why do you ask? Well, I saw him for a minute this afternoon, and he was babbling something about you not putting out calendars. Oh, you know, that. Well, you see, Catherine, I decided... Rock, Morton, your coat collar is turned up in the back. You do? <laughs> Let Catherine turn it down. There. My, what nice, broad shoulders. <laughs> Do you mind if I rest my head? Mind? Not at all. Hmm. Now, what were you saying about the calendars? Yeah, I don't know what was I saying. 
that uh, Branco was confused? Well, somebody's confused. You do want calendars with Catherine's picture on them, don't you, little boy? I'll say I do. <laughs> That's fine. Now I have to go home. Home? I think it's wonderful that you're using my picture. Yes, but... Oh, now what do I tell Vicky? He'll just leave you trapped again. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, if the folks at your house just can't agree as to the kind of pasteurized processed cheese they like best, don't worry, because Kraft Deluxe Slices come in five delicious kinds. So everyone can have his favorite, whether it's Kraft American, Kraft American with pimentos added, Kraft Brick with that grand, deep-down rich taste, Nut Sweet, Kraft Swiss, or Sharp Old English brand. No matter what variety you like best, each neat package contains eight perfect slices of delicious processed cheese. You'll want several kinds on hand always for fine-tasting snacks and sandwiches you can fix at a moment's notice. Look for them in your grocer's dairy case, the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Nice to have known you, Unc. <laughs> Hello, Vicky. Hello, Throckmorton. Uh, about the calendar, I hear you're putting one out after all, with the nurse's picture on it. Yeah, well, Vicky, it was just one of those things. There was nothing I could do. Uh-oh. Uh, Throckmorton, why don't you come over to my house this afternoon for Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah, thanks. But I'm having Thanksgiving dinner here with the little family. Yeah, and he's thankful. You thanks, me. <laughs> Good night, folks. Ray Jellisby is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Brenner, Kathy Lewis, Shirley Mitchell, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, be sure to hear The Falcon next Sunday over the station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen to The Falcon solve The Case of the Stooges' Errand. <laughs> Here comes that unconventional gentleman, Groucho Marx, on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The 
Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, are the makers of the wonderful new Kraft pasteurized processed cheese in slices. Those perfect slices of extra mellow-tasting processed cheese that are formed, then wrapped and sealed for you right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case. Eight fine slices in every neat package. And those packages really are neat, and they hold eight delicious slices. Look for them when you shop tomorrow. Those neat square packages marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. Now, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. The day's work is done, and the water commissioner is at the wheel of the family car, heading homeward. He seems to be in fine spirit. Say, Christmas decorations in the windows already. Yeah, I'm glad to see it. Yeah, I love the Christmas spirit. Well, there's old Moneybags Bullard walking home. Look at him, marching along with his nose in the air. I hope he catches in the tree. <laughs> you what a snub that Bullard is. Oh, what the heck. I'll offer him a ride. It's only a couple of blocks. I can stand him that long. Hello, Bullard. Oh, good evening, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'm on my way home. Can I give you a lift? Old neighbor? Old friend? Thank you. I'll ride with you. <laughs> well, good. You, where's your Cadillac, Bullard? Break down, did it? No. No, I'm having a new set of tires put on. New tires? What was wrong with the old ones? One of the valves was leaking. <laughs> oh. This is a nice car you have. Well, thank you. Has a self-starter, has it? <laughs> hey, I've been thinking of trading it in. Naturally. It, it, yeah, how's everything at your house, Mr. Bullard? Everybody fine? Yes, yes. My little niece, Brenda, is quite excited. Tomorrow night, her school is holding its annual junior cotillion. A cotillion? That's a dance. Oh. Brenda's a pupil of Mrs. Murphy's seminary. Uh, seminary, yeah. Private school. Oh. It seems Brenda must invite a boy to be her escort at the cotillion. A boy of good family, of course. Mrs. Murphy's seminary caters only to the best people. Super snob. From what I hear, Brenda is planning to invite your little nephew, Leroy. You well, Leroy, what? My Leroy? She is? Well. <laughs> of course, you know how boys are. Leroy probably won't go. You won't go? Leroy? Oh, yes, he will. He comes from a good family. <laughs> Bullard, have a cigar. Can you imagine little Leroy going to be invited to Mrs. Murphy's cotillion? You're right, George. Old Bullard is true blue. The only the children of the leading families are being invited. And Leroy's in my family. Gildas leave you may not be rolling in dough. But you're getting into the upper crust. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Hello, Anki. Good evening, Marjorie. I was watching through the window and I noticed you drove Mr. Bullard home. Yep, I picked him up down the street. We had a fine talk. I misjudged Bullard all along, Marjorie. Oh? Yeah, absolutely. Took me all this time to find out that he thinks very highly of me. In fact, he considers us to be one of the best families in town. Did he say that? You have not in so many words. But it was the same thing. You, by the way, where's Leroy? Well, he's upstairs. Has little Brenda been over? Not that I know of. What's going on, Unky? You wait. Big surprise. Leroy! Yeah? Put on a clean shirt, wash your face, and comb your hair. What did you say, Unk? Hey, Ilfer. I said get cleaned up. What for? Oh, my goodness. There she is at the door. Unky! What's going on? You'll see, my boy. Oh, Gina, Miss Brenda. Is Leroy here? Yes, and he's right here. Won't you step in? Thank you. 
Well, hello, Brenda. Good evening, Mr. Gilderson and Marjorie. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Leroy, don't you know how to answer a lady when she speaks to you? I said hi. Excuse me, I'm going out and help Bertie. Don't you want to come, Monkey? No, thanks. I'll stay here with the children. Well, nice to see you, Brenda. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's on your mind? Oop. Leroy, you don't ask a lady what's on her mind. Well, I didn't expect an answer. I was just being sociable. <laughs> I came over to ask you something, Leroy. Yeah? What? Leroy, you don't say, yeah, what? Oh, why don't you talk to her? <laughs> I was only reminding you of your manners, my boy. Brenda's a lady, and you're a gentleman. Okay. I was wondering, would you like to take me to the cotillion tomorrow night? For a walk? Yeah, a dance, Leroy. You heard of the cotillion. It's sort of a dance. It's at Mrs. Murphy's seminary. It'll be awfully nice. I'd, I'd like to have you go with me, Leroy. If you're not busy. You'd love to go, Brenda. I would. You what time, Brenda? Be at my house at 7 o'clock. My Uncle Rumson will drive us over. Yeah. Well, that's fine. And thank you very much for asking him, Brenda. Leroy will be there at 7 o'clock. See you tomorrow, then. Good night, Leroy. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, Brenda. Uh, what did you want to get me into that for? Holy cow. Well, Leroy, this is a very important affair. The children of all the best families are going to be there. Now, what am I going for? <laughs> Leroy, we are one of the best friends. This proves it. Mr. Bullard would never have let Brenda invite you if he didn't think we belonged in the blue book. Blue book, small book. <laughs> now, my boy. Besides, you like Brenda. She's a fine little girl. She's okay. But gee, Uncle, I can't dance. You can, too. It'll be a lot of fun. You wait. They'll have fruit punch and cookies. All you can eat. Yeah? You'll enjoy it. You can't dance while you're eating, can you? <laughs> Certainly not. How long will it last? About three hours, from eight until eleven. Why? So I wonder if I can keep eating that long. <laughs> well, don't you worry about it, my boy. It'll be a fine evening. Now, you run upstairs and get cleaned up for dinner. Okay. <laughs> what a boy. He really wants to go. He just had to be prodded a little. What happened, Donkey? Yeah, it sounded like you were having a big discussion in here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, you, know, you home, Bronco? As I came in the driveway, I saw Mr. Bullard's little niece, Brenda, going down the walk. Hi, <laughs> cute youngster. You bet. She and Leroy have a date for tomorrow night. Leroy has a date? Yep. A very nice dancing party at Mrs. Murphy's seminary. Quite fashionable. Children of all the leading families. Well, you never can tell, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy's date with Brenda may be the beginning of something. <laughs> Who was that? Oh, that's how I found Bronco. He took me to a dance, and now he's mine. Oh, Marge. <laughs> but you were both grown up. Leroy's just a boy. Well, you know what they say about childhood sweethearts, Unky? Yes, sir. Great oaks from little acorns grow. Well, my George, Leroy could do a lot worse than little Brenda. I know what you are doing, Unky. You're making a match. He's a regular Cupid, isn't he, Marge? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Cupid and his little dart. <laughs> Excuse me, children. Where are you going, Unky? Before Bertie puts dinner on, this Cupid is going to dart down to the drugstore and get some cigars. <laughs> Give me a couple of El Lobos, Pete. Okay, well. There you are. Yeah, I'd better take a little box of chocolates, too, Pete, for Leroy. He's going to his first dance tomorrow night. Little Leroy? My, my. He is very exclusive. Children of Summerfield's most prominent family. This is the one Leroy is going to? <laughs> you bet. And you'll never guess who it was who invited him. Who? Mr. Bullard's little niece. Brenda. Aren't you surprised, Petey? Yeah, yes. Well, you don't show it. I blinked my eyes. 
Oh, you have another customer, Petey, so I'll be. Well, hello, Bullard. Good evening, Gildersleeve. Hello, Peavy. Good evening, Mr. Boyd. Yeah, I was just telling Peavy. <laughs> Your niece and my nephew are having their first date tomorrow night. Yes, yes, they're going to Mrs. Murphy's cotillion. I thought they were going to a dance. <laughs> Peavy, ordinary people call it dancing. We call it cotillion. <laughs> you don't say. Yes, little Brenda is all a flutter over the occasion. Yes, old little Leroy. He can hardly wait. Now, yeah. uh, by the way... Can you give me a small bottle of perfume, Peavy? Perfume? Mm. Uh, what fragrance would you like, Mr. Bullard? I have Scarlet Midnight, Dizzy Dew. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no, Peavy. This is for Brenda. Your perfume for little Brenda. Sweet. Well, here are some perfumes for children. How about little Bo Peep? <laughs> Brenda's a little beyond the Bo Peep age. Don't you have something halfway between little Bo Peep and Dizzy Dew? <laughs> How about Lily of the Valley? Good. Sure. Leroy will like that. He loves the outdoors. <laughs> well, Judge Hooker. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello, Judge. Good evening, Judge. My, we have quite a gathering here. Are they buying something, Peavy, or did they just come in to smell the licorice? <laughs> <laughs> smell the licorice. You know, this is a real occasion, Judge. Tomorrow night, Mr. Bullard's niece, Brenda, and little Leroy are having their first date. No. Yes, sir. They're going to a cotillion. And that's a dance. Leroy and Brenda. Those two dear children. Life's most cherished moment. It brings tears to my eyes. I can't find my handkerchief. I can tell you one for a dime. <laughs> no, thanks, Peter. I, I found mine. How vividly this recalls fond memories of my childhood. When I first escorted a little flaxen-haired nymph to a taffy pool. A taffy pool? <laughs> I bet you were stuck on her. <laughs> Peter, how fine it is, Rumson, that you and Gilday have at last buried the hatchet. Finally joined hands in friendship. Yes, sir. Bygones are bygones. Eh, Bully? Yes, yes, I suppose they are. Yeah, it's probably a good thing. The way it looks now, you two fellows are liable to be related. Well, it could happen. Tomorrow night might be the beginning of a romance. Leading someday to wedding bell. Oh, now, Judge. <laughs> judge, what an idea. You and know, and Bronco were talking about the same thing at home. Of course, it's silly. Well, childhood sweethearts, you know, sometimes grow up and get married. In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns to a lad. Judge, please. <laughs> Nobody is getting married. Nobody is even thinking about anybody getting married. Yeah, of course not. Brenda has a number of years ahead of her. And so is Leroy. Plenty of time to find a good wife. A girl has to look around. And so does a boy. He can't just marry any old girl that comes along. Well, I wouldn't say that Brenda was any old girl. Oh, no. In fact, she wouldn't marry just any old boy. Well, Leroy isn't just any old boy. You aren't thinking he might marry Brenda. Marry Brenda? Leroy? Certainly not. That's ridiculous. What's ridiculous about it? You will nothing. You know, simply that I'm not trying to make a match, I... I mean, I wouldn't want Leroy... Oh, you wouldn't want Leroy to marry my niece? No. I mean, yes. My family isn't good enough for you. Yeah, I didn't say that. Gentlemen, please. Gildersleeve, I wouldn't let my niece marry into your family if you own the state of Texas. Nope. <laughs> Is that so? Yes. All right. And you can tell Leroy he can just forget about going out with Brenda tomorrow night. Yeah, and you can tell Brenda she can forget about going out with Leroy. What do you think of that? I've said it before and I'll say it again. You'll just leave. You're a nincompoop. <laughs> oh, go to a cotillion. That's a dance. Peavy, this is all your fault. My fault? You started this whole thing. Peavy, you're an old troublemaker. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. 
You're missing something if you haven't discovered Kraft pasteurized processed cheese in slices. Mmm, I should say. You're missing the most delicious, most mellow processed cheese you've ever tasted in the most perfect, even slices you've ever laid eyes on. Kraft Deluxe Slices are wonderfully different because they're made differently. Instead of being cut from a loaf like other sliced cheese, Kraft Slices are formed by an amazing new Kraft invention that captures extra cheese goodness, a through-and-through mellow flavor in every perfect slice. Then, just as soon as these slices of fine processed cheese are made, Kraft wraps and seals them, eight to every neat package, so they'll stay perfect and protected all the way from Kraft to you. That means you won't have to put up with any more slivers or dried edges or broken pieces, because Kraft slices are really perfect, and they're so easy to separate. Just open a package and peel them apart. You'll find it even easier than peeling a banana. Tomorrow when you shop, get several packages of this wonderful processed cheese. So you'll have plenty on hand for those quick snacks and sandwiches you need so often. Once you discover them, you'll never be without convenient, delicious, Kraft Deluxe Slices. back to the Great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner's dream of making Summerfield Social Register went up in smoke last night. Leroy's date with Bullard's little niece Brenda was called off very suddenly by the uncles involved. And this morning, at least one person is quite pleased with the way it came out. Little Leroy. Howling about. I feel good. Now I have to go to that darn old dance tonight. Too bad. What's too bad about it? I think it's keen. Oh, I was thinking a little Brenda. Leroy, you better start being nicer to the women folks. If you don't look out, you ain't gonna go up and get married like Mr. Bronco and Miss Marjorie. Oh, I'm nice to him, but holy cow, they're always hanging around. What a boy. Who's at the back door? Why, that's Miss Brenda. Morning, Miss Brenda. Morning, Bertie. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Could, could I speak to you a minute? Outside? I don't feel like going outside. <laughs> Tell it to me inside. Leroy, you get on out there. Poor little girl. Okay. Go on now. Poor little girl. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Leroy, my uncle says I can't go with you tonight. Yeah. My uncle says I can't go with you either. Leroy, what do we do? Nothing. But but I want to go with you. I'll get somebody else. I don't want to go with somebody else. I want to go with you. Well, Leroy, we, we don't have to go to the cotillion. We could go someplace else. My uncle just said I couldn't go to the cotillion with you. Well, Leroy, don't be mean. I'm not being mean. Oh. Gee, don't cry. <laughs> you want to hold my hand? Okay. Leroy. Yeah? I like you. You like me. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I have to go now. I'll be waiting for you by the tree in front of our house at seven. Well, I don't know if I'll be there. Goodbye. I don't know if I'll be there. Women make life so complicated. <laughs> Oh, Leroy. Oh, what's your problem, little brother-in-law? Is Uncle Horn home yet? Not yet. What's the matter, Leroy? I got worries. What is it, Leroy? Girl? Yeah. Mr. Bullard said Brenda shouldn't go to the cotillion with me. Uncle Moore said that I shouldn't go with Brenda. But Brenda wants me to take her someplace anyway. You think I ought to... Poor Leroy. Uncle and Mr. Bullard ought to be ashamed of themselves. You're right, Marge. Hey, you know what I'd do, Leroy? What? I'd stand up for my rights. Go over there and take Brenda. Go someplace if you want to. Faint heart, ne'er one, fair maiden. I got a one already. What am I going to do with her? <laughs> do you like little Brenda, Leroy? <laughs> yeah. 
I guess so. Then you do just as Bronco said. And if Uncle Mort or Mr. Bullard say anything... We'll take care of it. Leave it to us, Leroy. Thanks. You're keen. Well, if I'm going with a girl, I may as well face it. You face what? I gotta take a bath. <laughs> My, you're home late this evening, Miss Gilsey. Well, I had a lot of water bills to get out. Family had dinner? Yes, sir. They've eaten and gone. Eaten and gone? Leroy, too? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where'd he go? I don't know, but he took a bath and put on clean clothes before he went. He's going someplace, that boy. He is? Yes, sir. He was clean and handsome and bright in the eyes. Two to one, he's headed to Brenda. He was Bertie. He was clean and handsome and bright in the eyes. Two to one, he's headed to Brenda. You're all right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know where two to one Lee Rod was headed? Yes, Bertie. That's right. It's two to one, he's headed for Brenda. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, for heaven's sake. That boy went over to Bullard. Get him, please! Get him, please! Oop. There's Bullard. What's he bellowing about? Get him, please! You're all right. Don't knock the door down. I'm coming. Get him, please! Where's that nephew of yours? Bullard, don't you roar at me. Where's that niece of yours? He's with your nephew. Where's he? He's with your niece. You started this whole thing, Bullard. You and that darn cotillion. Get him, please! I... Here. Here's a note pinned to your front door. That's it? Hmm? Yes, 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 yes. Dear Uncle Mort, Brenda and I have gone to Union Station. Don't be sore, love Leroy. Union Station? Union Station? They're leaving us. Running away together. On the train? Little Leroy. My little Brenda. We drove them away, Gildersleeve. Now, Bullard, it's not all your fault. I'm to blame, too. We're fools, Gildersleeve. Blind fools. You're all right. Well, let's not stand here. You're getting tears all over the run. <laughs> do something. Yes, yes, do something. We've, we've got to do something. Come on, Gildersleeve. In my car. We'll go to the Union Station. Maybe we can head them off before the train leaves. Come on, Gildersleeve. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> into the depot and the freight yard. Not a sign of them. I'm afraid we're too late, Gildersleeve. They must have taken the 7.30 train for Kansas City. My little Brenda, little Leroy. We've turned them against us, Gildersleeve. Just a pair of fools, that's what we are. And now we're paying the price. Stop blubbering, I can't stand it. <laughs> Let's go home to my cold, empty house and call the FBI. FBI? G-Men? Chasing little Leroy? Or oh, they'll just take them off the train. You poor frightened little kids. Driven from their home. No place to go. <laughs> little Brenda. <laughs> Will it stop blubbering? <laughs> Brenda's little window, dark. Leroy's little window, dark. Let's go into my house and phone. It's Bullard. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. There's somebody standing on your porch. It was a lovely evening, Leroy. Excuse me. It's Brenda. Leroy's with her. Good night, Brenda. Good night, Leroy. Brenda! Brenda! Oh, it's Bullard! Oh, Bullard! Oh, Leroy, we're stuck. No, no, you're not. Your uncle and I just came over to surprise you. We're, we're not angry with you. We're happy. Happier than you will ever know. You, know. you have no idea how happy we are. We thought you were gone. Both of us. Oh, Brenda, don't ever do that to your uncle again. So what? Well, it was that note you pinned to our door, Leroy. What about it, huh? Well, you said you were going to Union Station. Yeah, we did. That's the title of the movie we saw. <laughs> The 
It was a wonderful picture. Yeah, I'd like to see it again. You would? What time is it, Willie? Uh, it's at 9 o'clock. Why, right, George, you can see it again. We'll all see it. If we hurry, we can get there in time for the second show. Come on, everybody, let's uh, go. What a character. I like him. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, if pleasing the whole family is your biggest problem when it comes to buying cheese, just listen to this. Those wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices come in five delicious varieties. That's right. Those fine slices of pasteurized processed cheese that Kraft makes and wraps eight to the package come in five different kinds. Mellow Kraft American, Kraft American with pimentos added, Kraft Brick with that deep, rich flavor, Nut Sweet, Kraft Swiss, and Sharp Old English brand. So every member of the family can have his favorite processed cheese for swell-tasting snacks and sandwiches that are really quick, really easy to fix. Tomorrow, look for them in your grocer's dairy case. The five kinds of delicious Kraft processed cheese in slices. <laughs> Found it. Leroy's got the phone. And I wanted to call Catherine. Can I speak to Brenda, please? Hello, Brenda? Hi. I don't know if I can walk to school with you tomorrow. I don't know. Can't you find somebody else? Listen to that boy. The way he treats little Brenda. Yeah, I don't think I can tomorrow. Oh, all right. Sure. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. You're right, George. Maybe the boy had something. Hello, Catherine? I don't know if I can make it to your house for dinner tomorrow night. Can't you find somebody else? You can. Oh, Catherine, wait, please. Leroy. Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Barbara Whiting, Gail Gordon, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement in almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better, particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, hear the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Consult your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves The Case of the Harried Husband. Here comes that unconventional gentleman, Groucho Marx, on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. 
Kraft, a name that for years has meant fine cheese, is the maker of the new Kraft Deluxe Slices of wonderful pasteurized processed cheese. These slices are perfect. No dried edges, no broken pieces, because they are wrapped right in the spick and span Kraft plant. You'll find Kraft is delicious processed cheese in slices in neat half-pound packages in your grocer's dairy case. Eight big slices in every package. Tomorrow, take home some of these convenient packages and get acquainted with Kraft Deluxe Slices, the most delicious processed cheese you've ever tasted. Last night, as the quiet hours rolled by, the great Gildersleeve and his little family slept peacefully in their beds. Well, all except his little nephew, Leroy. He lay wide awake. And the wheels of his mind were turning around and around. In a little while, they began to turn faster. And faster. And then he got an idea. Now it's morning. Bertie, the housekeeper, is in the kitchen cooking breakfast. And here comes Leroy. Hi, Bertie. Good morning. Leroy, you up already? Yep, I was the first down. What happened? Your bed fall down? No, I got a busy day. I'm flying. Well, you better tuck your shirt tail in. You're not only flying, you flapping. Okay. <laughs> what you got there, Leroy? Is that your piggy bank? Yeah, I got a neat idea. I'm going to make a pile of money for Christmas. Don't you go busting open that pig. No, I got a better idea than that. I'm going to sell guesses. Guesses? Sure. You know how stores have people guess how many beans in a jar... Well, I'm going to have them guess how much there is in my piggy bank. Ten cents a guess. Keen, huh? How are you going to do that? Well, simple. Everybody guesses how much is in it. The one that's the closest gets the pig. Oh, for pity's sake. <laughs> I got a hundred guys to guess. Ten cents a guy, that's ten bucks. I got a thousand guys to guess. That's, ooh, that's a hundred bucks. I never heard of a scheme like that. Yeah. And there's only two dollars and thirty cents in the pig. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? Neat? Leroy, you are slicker. That's what you are. You are slicker. Yeah. Leroy, come to breakfast. Okay, I'm coming. Guess what's in the bank for ten cents? What a slicker. Hi, Aunt. Hi, Marge. Good morning, my boy. Good morning, Leroy. Where's Bronco? Yes, where is that husband of yours, Marjorie? He left early. He's working on a big deal. Yeah? So am I. Bronco won't have to work after a while. Neither will you, Aunt. You like this? When Marge's baby gets here, I'll buy all the stuff for it. You will? Sure. I found out how to make money. It's easy. I get guys to guess how much is in my piggy bank. Ten cents a guess. I make a hundred dollars on one pig. And if I had ten pigs, I'd make... Leroy, just a minute. You want to guess? No. <laughs> of all the dizzy ideas. What's dizzy about it? Leroy, you can't do that. It's not legal. It isn't? They put you in jail. They would? Certainly. Poor little Leroy. You thought you had everything figured out, didn't you? Yeah. I was going to get some money for Christmas. Well, there are other ways. Plenty of them. Yeah, I admire your ambition, Leroy. But let's try to think of something a little more practical. You could deliver packages at Mr. Peavy's drugstore. I don't want to run around with aspirin. <laughs> I want to have a business. Yeah, that's the right idea, my boy. Hey, how about a skating rink in the backyard? All I'd have to do is squirt the hose on it and let it freeze. Leroy, nobody wants to go to a skating rink in the winter. All you have to do is go down to the river. Yeah, I didn't think of that. You're smart, Unc. Yeah, well, I've had experience. You get a business where you're selling something people need, like bread and cheese. Cheese? Yeah, something is necessary. Look at me. Yeah, I'm in water. Everybody has to have that. I see what you mean, Unc. You bet. Start a little business and do it all yourself. Get something everybody needs. For instance, right now, I need a haircut. Okay, I'll be a barber. Where's the scissors? <laughs> <laughs> now, just a minute. That takes training. I was only illustrating a point, Leroy. But you've got the right idea. And you keep at it, my boy. You'll think of something. Sure. You're keen, Unc. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you have a wise old head on your shoulders. You should have been a teacher. <laughs> Hello, Floyd. 
How about a quick haircut? Slip right into the chair, Commish. Floydie Munson puts out the quickest haircuts in town. My electric clippers got overdrive. <laughs> ah, boy. Yeah, I intended to come in this morning, Floyd, but I was pretty busy at the office. Had to wait until noon. Pumping a lot of water these days, huh? You bet. You know, uh, little Leroy dropped in to see me this morning. You he did? Yep. What a salesman that kid is. Talked the shirt right off my back. What's this? He's in business, picking up laundry. He is? Sure. Some new outfit in town called the Million Dollar Laundry. I gave him all my shirts. That kid's a go-getter, Commission. Sure. Laundry business is all right. He took my advice. He has something that everybody needs. You get him the job? Certainly not. He got it by himself. Oh. I simply advised him. A million dollar laundry. He sounds like a big concern. Yeah, hey, George Floyd. That shows you what a boy can do when his uncle gets behind him. The way that kid's going, you're going to be way behind him. <laughs> Leroy the laundry king. <laughs> Ah, but you got nothing to worry about, Kamish. When the kid's a big laundry tycoon, he'll buy his water from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right with me, Floyd. After all, I started him out. He's a clever little lad. But it was his old uncle that taught him the principles of business. Yes, sir. How about a shampoo, Kamish? A shampoo? Yeah, why not? If your nephew's going to be the head of a laundry, why not launder the head behind the laundry head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Shoot the works, boy. Okay. Yeah, imagine that. Leroy must have gone right out this morning and landed that job. It shows he has ability. It shows, too, that he has good advice behind it. The boy follows in the footsteps of the man. And I make some pretty good footsteps. I think I'll drop in and tell Peavy about it. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for the water commissioner today? Well, I haven't had lunch yet, Peavy. You are in the sandwiches today. Yes, same old bologna. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I'll take a bologna sandwich. You going to eat it? Certainly, Peavy. Why shouldn't I? Well, no reason, I guess, if you like the stuff. <laughs> I can't figure out why people come in here to eat. This is a drugstore. Well, people get hungry. Well, why don't they go to a restaurant? I don't know why I sell sandwiches. Restaurants don't sell aspirin. You, Pete. There you are, Mr. Gilson. You. Mmm. All right. This is a delicious sandwich. Best I ever tasted. Why do you say all those terrible things about your food? <laughs> Psychology, Mr. Gildersleeve. If I say the food's good, the customer says it's bad. But if I say it's bad, the customer says it's good. <laughs> Tricks of the trade. Uh, PV, you're shrewd. By the way, have you heard about Leroy? Yes, Leroy was in this morning. Said he's in the laundry business. Yep, my idea. You don't say. Sure. The boy wanted to make some money for Christmas, so I coached him how to get started. I'm beginning right now to give the boy the benefit of my experience, Pete. Hmm, I see. Well, I hope the laundry does good work. I sent all my shirts. You did? Yeah. Oh, what a nice thing to do. And you don't have to worry. Leroy's doing just as I told him. Oh, I, George. He's going to be exactly like his uncle. Yes, he's taking after you, all right. You bet. Working with the laundry, he has the water and the same soft soap. <laughs> <laughs> You know I never soft soap anybody. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, that Peavy. You what a kidder. Soft soap. He's a wonderful old fellow. He just says those things because he likes me. Oop, Leroy. Well. Hi, Unc. You're pulling your little wagon and loaded with bundles. Yeah, I did like you told me, Unc. I got a business. I'm in laundry. You so I hear. A million dollar laundry. It's keen, Unc. I got all kinds of customers already. Floyd Munson, Mr. Peavy, Judge Hooker. The judge? Well, good. Yeah, and even Mayor Terwilliger. The mayor? Leroy, you're doing fine. Sure. I'm getting all the important people in town. 
How about you, Uncle? Can I have your laundry business? You certainly can, my boy. After all, we're practically partners. Where's your bundle? You'll find my shirts upstairs in the clothes hamper. Okay. How about the one you got on? <laughs> the one I've got on? You got a spot on that cuff. Well, I'll keep my coat on. I have to go back to the office. Okay, I'll get it tonight. See you later, Uncle. You what a salesman. Floyd was right. You talked the shirt right off your back. <laughs> I'm glad this stays over. He was hot in the office. Keeping my coat on all afternoon to cover that spot on my shirt. I wonder how little Leroy's getting along with his new job. Yeah, how can he miss it? That you, Uncle Morris? Yes, I'm home, Marjorie. Where's Leroy? Oh, he's here. You have good. Have you heard about the laundry? Have I heard? Marjorie, I practically suggested it. Remember this morning when Leroy asked me for advice? You suggested it? You, well, it was the same thing. Leroy's just a boy. He needs an older head to help him along. How's he doing? Ask Bertie. Eh? Just go out in the kitchen and ask Bertie. Yeah, I don't like the sound of this. What's going on around here? Hello, Bertie. Well, you home at last, Mr. Gilsleeve. I'm glad you home. Oh, what's up, Bertie? It ain't what's up, Mr. Gilsleeve. It's what's down in the basement. Well, what's in the basement? Leroy. You know what that boy's doing, Mr. Gilsleeve? Well, yes, Bertie, but... You know what he's doing in that basement, Mr. Gilsleeve? No, Bertie, but... Look at that sign he stuck up on the basement door. Let me see. Million Dollar Laundry, Leroy Forrester, President. Over. That's what he's doing in the basement, in my washing machine. In the washing machine? He's doing washing. He's doing everybody's washing in my washing machine. You will, Bertie. Now, wait. Let's look and see. I ain't looking. I'm just sitting and fuming. I ain't looking. <laughs> Boy, it was only trying... You got the soap down there, and that machine's are going. The suds are going to be coming out the windows, and I'm just sitting and fuming. <laughs> Let's look at this comedy. Leroy's just a boy. You'll have to admit it's a pretty clever idea. The sud's going to be coming out the windows. Now, wait. More than one big business was started just this way. Sit. Maybe he didn't go about it just right. But at least he's trying. Fuming. <laughs> Let's try to be understanding. I understand. He's down there with the soap and the machine going oh, and out there sitting what's there. what's the use? <laughs> I do to see what's going on. I didn't know you were going to do this in the basement. I can't take the washing machine upstairs. Boy, I'm really turning out the stuff. Uh, Aren't you not sore? Me? You certainly not. You, Bertie and Marjorie are a little upset. But they'll be all right. You have the right idea. You took the bull by the horns and started your own business. That's what counts. Of course, you'll have to find some other way to do it. But I'm not angry with you for this. No, sir. Ah, oh, Keenan. I told all the fellows what a smart boy you were. Just like your uncle. And this proves it. Gee, thanks. Look at all the shirts I got. Yours and everybody's. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, Whose shirt is this? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? How are you going to tell who they belong to? Who they belong to? How are you going to get the right shirts back to the right people? Back to the right people? You mean you didn't mark them? Uh-uh. Leroy! The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Friends, when you get Kraft Deluxe Slices, that marvelous pasteurized processed cheese in slices, you're in for many delightful surprises. First of all, when you open up one of these neat packages, you'll be amazed to find eight big slices, each one as large as a slice of bread. And you'll notice, too, that there are no broken pieces or dried-out edges. But now comes the most wonderful surprise of all, your first taste of this fine cheese. Notice that flavor, that wonderful cheese flavor that's so unusually good. And the reason why Kraft Deluxe Slices taste so good and are so perfectly formed is that they're made differently. For instead of being cut from a loaf like other sliced cheese, 
Kraft slices are formed by a new Kraft invention that captures all the fine processed cheese flavor into each perfectly formed slice. Then, wrapped and sealed in a spick and span Kraft plant, protected all the way to you. And, of course, one of the nicest things about this extra good-tasting processed cheese is the convenience of the package. You can easily keep three or four varieties on hand all the time because these packages take up so little room in your refrigerator. So be sure to look for them tomorrow in your grocer's dairy case. Convenient, delicious, Kraft Deluxe Slices. seems Leroy's million-dollar laundry has made a slight mistake. Plenty of shirts came into the laundry, but now there's a little problem of getting them back to the right people. In fact, it isn't a little problem at all. It's a mighty big one. The million-dollar laundry has had the shirts over a week now, and the president is in trouble. Well, I didn't mean to get them mixed up. I know you didn't mean to, but they are. You'll have to figure out some way to sort them out. How can I sort them out? Don't ask me. This is your laundry. It's your idea. But they all look alike. Yeah, I know. The white shirt looks like every other white shirt. And mine are in there, too. You better think of something, Leroy, and you better think fast. Aren't you going to help me, Unc? No, sir. It's your business, Leroy. You got yourself into this mess. Now get yourself out. I'm going for a walk. <laughs> to learn to watch it. It's his own fault, not mine. Gee, what a mess. Poor little kid. He's scared. Well, he deserves to be scared. It'll do him good. Kind of a mean trick, though. Leaving him in trouble like that. Gildersleeve, don't be a heel. No, I'm not being a heel. Yes, you are. Well, maybe I am. Leroy? Yeah? You are now. Don't cry. We'll figure out something. You gonna help me? Sure. That's all part of being a good businessman, my boy. There's no problem that's too big to be solved. And we'll solve this one. Gee, thanks, Unc. You bet. We'll straighten this out in jig time. Tell him, Uncle Mort, it's probably for you. Yeah, I'll take it, Marjorie. Hello. Hello, Gildy. Leroy there. Leroy? <laughs> Certainly, Judge. Leroy, it's for you. Me? Hello? Leroy, this is Judge Hooker. I've been wondering about my shirt. You have? You what did he say? He's wondering about his shirt. Hello? Hello? What did I tell him, Unc? You well, tell him... Leroy, when are you going to get that pile of shirts off the back porch? Oh, brother. Hello? We can't move out there, Unky. Hello? What will I tell him, Unc? How would I ever get back into this? <laughs> Leroy, tell him he can have his shirts this afternoon. Hello, Judge. Yeah? Unc says you can have them this afternoon. What's he doing with them? <laughs> Wait a minute. He wants to know what you're doing with them. Yofer, give me that phone, Leroy. Judge? Yeah, that. Hang up, you old goat. <laughs> what about my shirt? You'll have them this afternoon. You can eat them for dinner. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, what are you going to do, Unky? Unk says he'll get the shirts back this afternoon. He'll get them back, won't you, Unk? You know, I had to tell the judge something. I don't know how we're ever going to sort out those darn shirts. Well, why don't you let the fellas come to the house and pick them out? They'll recognize them. Say, that's not a bad idea. We'll make a little party out of it. Serve punch and cookies? Sure. Every man picks out his own shirts. Right, George, I knew I'd find a way out of this thing. <laughs> hello. Gildersleeve, this is Mayor Terwilliger. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. I bet I know what you're calling about. You do? You lost your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> this is no joking matter, Gildersleeve. I've been wearing the same shirt for three days. You well, so have I. Keep your shirt on. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. What happened to my laundry? Well, a little mix-up, Mr. Mayor. The markings got lost. We're having a little get-together at my house this afternoon with refreshments. Come on over and pick out your shirt. Oh, Gildersleeve, I... It's just one of those things. It can happen in the best of laundries. 
Yeah, I'm taking charge, so don't you worry. Just come over this afternoon about 5 o'clock. All right, Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. How are we doing, Unc? You're right. I told you I'd get this thing straightened out. Gee, you're the smartest uncle in the world. You, well, it's all a matter of using your head, my boy. Yes, sir. Miss Gildersleeve, what about them shirts? You know, it's all settled, Bertie. We'll all pitch in and iron them up neatly. And then the fellows are coming over this afternoon to pick them out. Clever idea, don't you think? You mean they're going to come in and find their own shirt? Sure. Yeah, I'll pick out mine, too. Mine are in there, you know. We'll have a nice little party of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's so funny? This is liable to be some party. You like that? What happens when two men both decide on the same shirt? <laughs> Oh, well, that couldn't happen, Bertie. It could? Mr. Gillsleeve, have you ever been to a bargain sale? Well, it won't be like that, Bert. I can see them men tan into them shirts. Mr. Gillsleeve, you're going to have a hassle. No, Bertie. Yes, sir, I can see them men pulling and yanking. You're going to have a hassle. You're all right, Bert. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know what you're going to have? Yes, Bert. That's right, you're going to have a hassle. <laughs> Unc. You set them on the table there by the punch and quit eating them. I have the last of the shirts, Unky. Good. You spread them out there in the couch, my dear. The others are on the dining room table. Holy cow, I really took in the laundry. Yes, yes you did. Almost five o'clock, Miss Gilsley. Well, I'm all ready, Bertie. What are you doing? I'm taking the breakables out of the living room. If there's going to be a hassle in here, I'm going to save the good stuff. <laughs> Well, here they come, Unky. I'll open the door. I'll go to the door. It's my laundry. Hi, Leroy. Hello, Mr. Munson. Come on in. Good afternoon, Mr. Munson. Hi, Marge. Hi, Commissioner. Well, greetings, Floyd. You're the first one here. Yep, that's me. Come early and stay late. I figured I'd get here a little ahead of time, get the pick of the shirt. <laughs> oh, take it easy, Floyd. Wait till the others get here. Oh, you got the best one spotted already, huh, Commissioner? Good afternoon, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Oh, hello, Mr. Peavy. Leroy. Well, Judge and Peavy, glad to see you. Glad to see you, Gilda. And I'm glad to see my shirt. <laughs> hello, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Peavy. Leroy. Hey, if the Chief was here, we could have a Jolly Boys meeting. Well, I, George, we could at that. Yeah, I'm certainly happy to see you fellas taking this thing in a friendly spirit. <laughs> well, you never can tell, Gilda. I might go out of here with better shirts than I had before. I didn't wear my glasses. <laughs> no, Judge. Hey, we ought to draw straws to see who gets first crack at them. No, indeed. It's every man for himself. You, brother, maybe Bertie was right. Well, that looks like your man. Yeah, I'll let him in. Now I see who gets the best shirt. No. Well, Mr. Mayor, welcome. Thank you, Gildersleeve. Mayor Dewilliger? You know all the fellows. Yes, yes, howdy do, boys. Hi, Mayor. Mayor. Well, here we all are. All shirt owners. <laughs> I'm in the same boat, you know. So, fellas, look them over and find your own. Sure, let's get started, huh? Now, 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 huh? let's not get excited. There's plenty of shirts for everybody. <laughs> I know we all trust each other. Why, of course we do. That looks like mine with a pearl button. Oh, this one's mine. Hey, I found one. Oh, this is like a game. I spy. I found another shirt. No, fellas, don't overdo this. Uh, uh, you got one there with your frayed car? Here's another one. That's two I got. I got three. I found another. Yes, <laughs> Look at them go. This is the best party we ever had. I sure took care of that situation. You sure did, Unc. Yeah, they all got their shirts back, and they had a fine time besides. Yeah, what a nice bunch of fellows. Yeah, king guys. You see, Leroy, there was no squabbling. It all worked perfectly. Not a single shirt left. I noticed that, Unky. Uh, where are your shirts? Oh, they're right over these. Right. <laughs> My shirts. Oh, I forgot all about them. 
They're all gone. Oh, what a sneaky thing to do. Leroy. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now you can please every member of your family with Kraft Deluxe Slices. Because these slices of fine, pasteurized, processed cheese that Kraft wraps eight to the package come in five delicious varieties. There's wonderfully mellow Kraft American. Kraft American with pimentos added. Nut sweet Kraft Swiss. Kraft Brick with that grand, rich taste. And sharp Old English brand. Get several half-pound packages so everyone can enjoy his favorite for quick snacks and sandwiches that are so easy to fix. Tomorrow, look for them in your grocer's dairy case, the five varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices of delicious processed cheese. Something for you, sir? Yes. You can give me four white shirts. They're size 16, 36. There you are. Shall I wrap them? No, I just put them in a bag. Yes, sir. That'll be seven eighty-five with the tax. Hello, Gilder. Well, hello, Judge. You, you, what do you have in the bag? I just came from the bakery. It's full of dry bread for my pigeons. <laughs> I'll set it here on the counter. Nice party yesterday, Gilder. Yeah, nice. Ate all my cookies, drank all my punch. Somebody ran off with all my shirts. Probably you, Judge. Well, I'll take my bag and be on my way. Goodbye. Goodbye. And I'll take my shirts. Shirts. Doof. Judge. Judge, you got the wrong bag. Dry bread. Oh, keep it. Gildersleeve, today you're the pigeon. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Stanley Farrar, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. to taste something good? Well, next time you make a cold meat sandwich, don't forget to add a little Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the raw deal. Here comes that madman, Groucho Marx, on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The 
Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, is the maker of Velveeta, the pasteurized processed cheese food that's so delicious. For Velveeta has a cheddar cheese flavor that's wonderfully rich, yet delightfully mild. And here's one very good reason why you can be sure that Velveeta is the cheese food of top quality. Velveeta is made by Kraft. And for years, the name Kraft has meant the very finest cheese and cheese foods. So try Velveeta soon, won't you? See for yourself how good it is. And remember, only Kraft makes Velveeta. blew into Summerfield last night, and it looks like he's here to stay. Out at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning, our water commissioner is down in the basement, having a little set-to with the furnace. Confounded furnace. No heat coming out, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'm working on it, Bertie. Yeah, Yeah, I'm doing all right, Leroy. It just takes a little time to get the furnace fired up on a cold morning like this. Well, we're having a keen time up in the kitchen. Old Marge and Bronco and me all standing around in front of the stove. I got broiled. No heat coming up yet! It's coming, Bertie. Why don't we get an oil furnace, Unc? All you got to do is turn it on and bang, it goes. Bang. The oil furnaces cost money, my boy. Besides, what would we do with this one? We could use it for a deep freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid an oil furnace is a little beyond our means right now. Well, you could promote one. You know, tell the guy you want to try it out. And then we could try it out for three or four years. Oh, my goodness. That isn't honest, Leroy. He's coming up now, Miss Gilsey. All right, Bertie. What's the honest about it? They give you a free trial. You just don't say how long, Uncle Mort. Leroy, they wouldn't do that. Besides, I wouldn't do such a thing. I'm the water commissioner, a city official. Whatever I do has to be absolutely on the up and up. Yeah, I guess so. That's something for you to remember, too, my boy. Never let yourself get mixed up in anything that isn't open and above board. Honesty is the best policy. Every time. Uncle Mort! Yes, Marjorie? Judge Hooker is here. Be right there. Come on, Leroy. <laughs> Morning, Gilda. Well, hello, Judge. It's such a cold morning, I thought I'd stop by and drive you downtown in my new car. I have a heater. Well, thank you, Horace. Well, good morning, Judge. Morning, Marjorie. Leroy. Hi. Won't you have some breakfast with us? No, thanks, Marjorie. I've had my rye crisp and a beaker of Kalak water. <laughs> oh, brother. Judge, on a day like this, how can you operate on Kalak water? Maybe he mixes it with antifreeze. (laughs) Leroy. Holy kidding. Very amusing, Leroy. But if you don't mind, I won't eat. I'm not hungry. I'm a little worried. You worried, Judge? I suppose you read of the mayor's plans for a shake-up at City Hall? No, I haven't seen the morning paper. Well, the paper doesn't mention names, Gildy, but I happen to know who the mayor intends to let out. Well, it can't be me. No, but I know who it is. Who, Horace? So don't rush me. Let me tell you how I came by the information. Judge, just tell me who it is. I went to a movie last evening with Miss Matterhorn. She's in the Hall of Records, you know. Yes, Judge. On the way home, after we discussed the picture, which, by the way, was excellent, but that's beside the point. Yeah, I'll say it is. Who's being let out? I'm coming to that. Wendy, old goat. It seems that Miss Matterhorn was lunching at the cafeteria with the mayor's secretary. They lunch together on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Judge, who's getting the axe? Well, to make a long story short, Chief of Police Gates. The chief? Not Chief Gates. Gosh, good old Chief Gates. You can see why I'm worried, Gildy. Our old friend and fellow Jolly Boy is facing a catastrophe. This is terrible. He's such a gentle, kind man. That seems to be the trouble, my dear. He hasn't made a major arrest all year. He returns a lot of lost dogs. 
Um, can't you do something about it? Well, I'm sure if anybody can do something about it, I can. Yeah, I'm saying solid with the mayor. You bet. If I may say so, Gildy, I don't think the chief's future should be entrusted to you alone. Oh? Why not? I propose we form a committee of influential citizens with me at the head. Yeah, I knew it. Publicity hound. <laughs> what? Judge, we don't need a committee. We don't need a head. I'll handle it. Good for you, Unky. Oh, yeah. boy, Unky. Yeah, I'll talk to the mayor first thing this morning. Well, if you think you can do it, Gildy. Sure. Good. Then at the Jolly Boys meeting this evening, we can tell Chief Gates the glad tidings. A good idea, Judge. My, it'll be like an early Christmas present to our old and dear friend. Well, don't worry about a thing. I won't, Gildy. My, I'm so relieved I could just burst out into song. Tarara boom dee, tarara boom dee. You singing old goat. <laughs> Judge is a well-meaning old fellow. There's no use organizing a committee to do what one good man can do. If the mayor gives me any trouble, I'll just diplomatically remind him that I got him re-elected. Yeah, give this lead your smooth. Mr. Mayor? Yes, who is it? It's I, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, come in, Gildersleeve. Thank you. Well, what's on the water commissioner's mind? Well, the water commissioner would like to put on a little pressure. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, we uh, we could have used some pressure this morning, Gildersleeve. All I got out of my faucet was a drip. I thought about you. Oh? <laughs> I wonder what he meant by that. Well, Gildersleeve, what's on your mind? I'm uh, busy reading about myself in the paper. Oh, yes. That's what I want to talk to you about, Mr. Mayor. The grapevine tells me you're going to dismiss Police Chief Gates. You heard correctly. No, Mr. Mayor. If I were you, I'd go easy on this shake-up business. Gildersleeve, you're not me. Are you presuming to tell me how to run my office? You no. Know, certainly not, Mr. Mayor. But why pick on the chief? Gildersleeve, I can see you're not aware of the trend. The trend? Since elections, they're talking shake-up throughout the country. It's an extremely popular movement. And my administration isn't going to be behind the times. Yeah, but getting rid of the chief might not be popular in Summerfield. Well, why not? He never arrests anybody. That's the chief reason he isn't going to be chief any longer. <laughs> but, Mr. Mayor, you wouldn't do that to a friend of mine. Oh, wouldn't I? Don't forget, I can retire him just as easily as I can fire you. Oof! <laughs> you can't fire me. You don't have a reason. Well, I can find a reason. Oh, yeah, don't forget, old man, that it was I who got you re-elected. Gildersleeve, that's an insult. Get out of my office. Gladly. You didn't elect me. You just planned on my bandwagon. That was no bandwagon. That was a dump truck. <laughs> Doesn't pay to be diplomatic with the mayor. Now what will I tell the jolly boys tonight? <laughs> didn't come to the meeting tonight. I hate to face the chief. Oh, why did I have to shoot off my big mouth? Hi, Commissioner, old pal. Hello, Floyd. We've been waiting for you, Gildy. Have you, Judge? Hello, PV. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildy, please. <laughs> Gildy, the chief was so downcast, I had to tell him what you're doing for him. Oh, sure. Hello, oh, well, Mr. Gildersleeve. I knew everything was going to be all right when they told me you were interceding with the mayor. Well, the committee's geez. a great guy, any he, P.V.? Well, yeah. <laughs> we're all proud of you, Gildy. And grateful. Well, fellows, I have a little statement to make. Now, Commissioner, why don't we just sing a song and let it go at that? But... <laughs> no, 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 P.V. How about when good fellows get together? That's the idea. Something with sediment. No, wait a minute, Floyd. Good fellows. I'd like to sing that. Okay, here we go. For it's always farewell when good fellows get together with a hand. We need 
meet you. But you're well. What the heck? <laughs> and it's back of the river when good fellows get together with a sign on the table and a good song ringing clear. Oh, ringing Quite a finish, Chief. Yes, it established the new law. <laughs> well, I was singing that from the heart and looking right at the water commissioner. You well, as I started to say, when you fellows insisted on singing. Yeah, yeah, the commissioner had a speech to make. Uh, before you make your speech, Commissioner, I want you to know I phoned my mother in Salinas. You did? She wants to bake you a cake, Commissioner. <laughs> Bless her heart. Bless you, too, Gilda. Oh, my goodness. Look, fellas, I didn't save the chief. You didn't? That's what I've been trying to tell you. What happened, Gilda? Well, I went to bat for the chief, but the mayor wouldn't hear of it. He even threatened to fire me. Sorry, chief. That's all right, Commissioner. I know you did your best. I think I'll go home. I'll drive you home, Chief. I should get home early anyway. Mrs. Peavy has the sniffles. <laughs> Good night, fellas. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Poor guy. Fellas, I couldn't help it. You know I'd do anything for the Chief. Anything. And I tried. What did the mayor say? Well, he says the Chief never does anything. He never arrests anybody. True. He happens to be a compassionate man. Yeah, he's a good guy. He is true blue. But the mayor wants some action. Too bad there ain't somebody the chief can arrest. This town can't even support a good burglar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nothing's happened here since Roly Jones broke into the jail. Oh, Roly is very fond of the chief and the jail. Hey, I got a flash, fellas. If the mayor wants action, why don't we get Roly Jones to pull a job and let the chief arrest him? No, just a minute, boy. That isn't honest. I heartily disapprove, Floyd, and I'm sure the chief would, too. Ah, the chief won't know nothing about it. We'd only do it to save his job. Well, you can count me out. You said you'd do anything to help the chief. Well... What about poor Roly Joe? He'll love it. Winter in the nice, warm jail, playing <laughs> pinochle with the chief. <laughs> well, I don't like it. But I guess I'm stuck. He don't have to steal anything. Just get caught breaking in someplace. <laughs> What would he break into? The water department? <laughs> Nothing to it. What about your law office, Judge? No, no, indeed. Don't count me a part of this. Lloyd, what about your barber shop? Uh-uh. Let's pick on somebody who ain't here. <laughs> well, Peavy isn't here. No, he isn't, is he? <laughs> His drugstore is just the spot. You bet. <laughs> What a sneaky way to save the chief's job. Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. If you mothers have a hard time getting your family to eat their vegetables, let Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food, help solve that problem. How? Huh? By melting it for the smoothest golden cheese sauce you ever enjoyed. Then, pour it over those important vegetables. Velveeta sauce is so easy to make. Just melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Notice how smooth it melts. Then, add a quarter of a cup of milk, stirring it in a little at a time, and season to taste. That's all there is to it for a delicious cheese sauce that'll give spinach or cauliflower flour or whatever vegetable you choose a grand cheddar flavor. A flavor that's rich, yet delightfully mild. It's good, and this fine-tasting Velveeta sauce makes those vegetables extra good for the folks, too. From the youngsters to grandma, because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk that everybody needs. And it's as digestible as milk itself. So make Velveeta your handy helper. Melt it for fine hot dishes and slice it or spread it for those wholesome, good-eating snacks and sandwiches you need so often. 
Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta when you buy. Remember, there's only one Velveeta, and it's made only by Kraft. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Last night at the Jolly Boys meeting, the great man promised to do anything to help Chief Gates keep his job. And Floyd Munson is holding him to his word. Right now, the water commissioner is on his way to the drugstore with a little surprise for Mr. Peavy. Yeah, I wonder if this isn't going a little too far. Well, if the chief doesn't make an arrest soon, the mayor will fire him. Right, George, you can't blame a guy for going to bat for a friend. And Peavy will be glad to help. All he has to do is let Roly Jones break into his store. Hello, Peavy. Uh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? Peavy, I've got news for you. You going to say it? Yep. Last night after you left, Floyd thought of a surefire plan to save the chief's job. Thank you. Know? Well, it's very confidential, Peavy. But I think you should be in on it. Very well. Now, it stands to reason the mayor won't fire Chief Gates if he makes a spectacular arrest, doesn't it? Well, yes. The chief doesn't know it yet, but he's going to catch old Roly Jones breaking into a store. This is Floyd's idea, you say? Yep. I didn't think it was Roly. Oh, you'll be tickled to death. He'll have a warm place to sleep this winter, and the chief can keep his job. Shrewd plan, eh, Peavy? Yes, very amusing. (laughs) Whose store are they breaking into? Yours. <laughs> now, Peavy, all you have to do is leave your alley window unlocked. We'll take care of everything else. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We agree that something has to be done for the chief, don't we? Yes, but can't we do it someplace else? Peavy, Roly won't steal anything. You know that with Floyd and me there, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, these overshoes will come in handy on a night like this. If I can just get them on. Yeah, where's my stocking cap? Well, Floyd's right on time. Hi, Commissioner. Come in out of the cold pot. Mm. Did you fix things up at the peeve? Yeah, he's leaving the window open. What about Roly? He's delighted. We're picking him up at the pool hall. Great. I had a little trouble getting out tonight, Commissioner. Oh? Yeah, my wife wanted to know what I was up to. <laughs> That's where I've got it on you married men, Floyd. I come and go as I please. There's nobody to ask a lot of embarrassing questions. Yeah? Did I hear the doorbell, Auntie? Yes, my dear. Oh, hello, Mr. Munson. Hi, Marge. Auntie, are you going out on a night like this? You will, Marjorie. Hey, what's going on? Now, Leroy. Hi, Mr. Munson. Hi, kid. Where are you going, Unc? Leroy, this doesn't concern you. Who does it concern? Leroy, this isn't your business. Whose business is it? Your friend. No question, Pat Commission. <laughs> You're all right, Floyd. It's awfully cold out, Unky. Do you have to go? Now, look, Marjorie, I appreciate your interest. And yours, too, Leroy. Oh, that's all right, but where are you going? Now, see here. Mr. Munson and I have an appointment downtown. It's a purely personal affair. Is that understood, Leroy? Sure. Marjorie? Of course, Uncle. Good. And there'll be no more questions about it. Mr. Gilfrey, where are you going? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Make a break for the car, Floyd. <laughs> Where you going, Floyd? Relax, Commish. I'm following that truck. Those guys are careful drivers. Yeah, yes, they are. Not crowding you, are we, Roly? Three of us in the front seat? No, very comfortable, thank you. You hope we're not putting you out tonight? No, you might say you're putting me in. <laughs> <laughs> very good, Roly, very good. Yeah, it won't be long until you'll be in that nice, warm jail playing pinochle with the chief. I'm looking forward to it. I always like to be in jail by Christmas. 
<laughs> you do? Chief always serves stuffed goose and Idaho potatoes and plum pudding. Very kind man, the chief. You know, that's the way we feel about it. You said it. I tried to get in for Thanksgiving turkey, but he wouldn't arrest me. Ah, that's the chief. Well, I guess I better park the car in the alley. Yes, Floyd. Hide it between the buildings. Shh, Floyd. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 I hope this snowstorm doesn't last too long. I feel kind of sorry for you gents on the outside. <laughs> yep. Snow's deep, all right. Dark, too. Now, how do we handle this? Come here. Yes, Floyd? Why don't you boost Roly in the window while I go phone the chief that somebody's breaking in? Yeah, all right. Wait a minute. Why don't you boost Roly in and I'll do the phone? You're taller than I am. Besides, I already got my nickel out. You're, you're all right. You come out, Roly. The window's around this corner. You better stay in the shadows, Commissioner. We don't want anybody to see us too soon. Yeah, good idea. Stay close behind me. I'm practically in your hip pocket. Watch it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. But I'm a little nervous. If the mayor ever caught me doing a thing like this, he really would fire me. Well, come on, come on. Let's break in, Commissioner. It's getting cold out here. Yeah, well, I'll try the window. You? You unlocked. Here, here's my foot. Give me a boost, You all right? Uh, Yumpsy. Uh, Easy. Uh, yeah. You all right, Roby? Well, fine. Hey, the coffee pot's still hot. Can I hand you a cup? <laughs> no, thanks, Roby. Mm. Dark. Can't see a thing. Yeah, I'll sneak back to the Hi, guy. Commissioner. Yes, right! <laughs> Don't do that. Did you get him in all right? Yes, yeah, we're all set. Good. The chief's on his way down. Yeah, well, that must be his car now. Oh, no, he couldn't make it this fast. Well, then who is it? Uh-oh, I'm getting out of here. You're flying! Wait! Oops. He's shining a spotlight on me. Who's there? Uh-oh, it's the mayor. Is that you, Gildersleeve? Hello, Mr. Mayor. I was out checking up. I thought I saw somebody sneak into this alley. Yeah, well, I was just taking a little walk. <laughs> uh, taking a walk? Who opened this window? Gildersleeve, you were breaking into Peavy's store. No, Mr. Mayor, it isn't me. Somebody else broke in. Oh, and you're the lookout. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, I... Well... I'm a witness. There's a man in there. I pushed him. I mean, I saw him go in. Killed a sleeve? No, Mr. Mayor, you know I'm not a prowler. Yes, but it would look awfully good in tomorrow's paper. Oh, brother. Well, I'll prove there's somebody in there. By George, I'll go in and get him. All right, go ahead, Gildersleeve. Go and get him. I dare you. All right, I will. I will. I'll stay right here. Oh, oh. Here. Lloyd would run away, that coward. I wish I'd run, too. Well, Gildersleeve, where's your parlor? Yeah, I'm looking for it. He was getting a cup of coffee a moment ago. What's that, Gildersleeve? <laughs> Never mind. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> no, no. Darn Coke cases. Prowler. Yeah, I mean, Rolly. Rolly. Why doesn't he answer? Who? Say the front door is closed. No. No, it's open there. There, and he's gone. My goodness, he's gone. Oh, my goose is cooked. Well, I may go out, as well go out Phoebe's front door and go around to the alley. Oh, how will I ever explain this to the man? Where did that darn roly go to? Without a witness, I'm a dead pitch. The man knows I'm honest, but he'll ruin me for this. Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Chief! Gildersleeve, explain this to Chief Gates. Commissioner, I got an anonymous phone call that somebody was breaking into the drugstore. You, you did? And who do I find climbing in an open window but his honor, the mayor? <laughs> Gildersleeve, explain to this cowderhead. I was coming in after you. Tell him. Uh, me? Kill the slaves! This will look pretty good in the papers tomorrow. Imagine. Our mayor. A Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh! Of course, you couldn't be that. When this is over, you won't have any Hyde. <laughs> now, 
Commissioner, I think you're being a little too hard on the mayor. What, uh, what did you say, Chief? I can't believe you'd do anything dishonest. Why, of course not. I'm sure you had a good reason for climbing in that window. You're an honorable man. Well, maybe you're right, Chief. Isn't he a fine fellow, Mr. Mayor? Gates, you're a prince, the salt of the earth. As long as I'm mayor of Summerfield, you'll be the chief of police. Isn't that nice? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You'll always be my friend. And you, too. Fellas, cut it out. I'm getting an icicle on my nose. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you shop for food for your family, I know you want to be sure you're getting the best. That's why when it comes to a cheese food, always be sure to get Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food. For you can depend on Velveeta not only to taste good, but to be really good for your family, too. That's because it's so rich in important food values from milk. And Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself. So you can depend on it for wholesome, delicious snacks and sandwiches anytime. No wonder more Velveeta is sold than all other brands of cheese food combined. Make it your handy helper, Mother. Velveeta, the quality cheese food that's made only by Kraft. Nice of you to come down to the jail with me, Commissioner. Well, it's a comfortable little spot, Chief. Gets rather lonely down here, though, just me and all the empty cells. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I wonder what happened to Roly. What happened to who? (laughs) Nothing, Chief. I just said I wondered what happened to... Who's knocking on the jail door? Yes? What do you need, Chief Gates? Well, Roly, what are you doing out on a night like this? Try my best to get in. Arrest me, Chief. <laughs> Roly, I've explained I can't do it. I broke into Pee Wee's drugstore. Oh, then it was you. Sure. The car stopped in front and it wasn't yours, so I ran. But I was in there. Are you sure? I promise. Wasn't I, Commissioner? Well, now you mention it. I recognize him, Chief. Come on in, Rolly. Oh, thanks, Chief. Put the coffee pot on. You know where it is. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, isn't that nice? The Chief won't be lonely anymore. Good night, folks. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Ambrose. Included from the cast are Walter Ketley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Ken Christie, Stanley Farrar, Porter Hall, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a secret for making dull meals interesting. Add Kraft prepared mustard to any meat dish, hot or cold, and see the difference. Hidden flavors pop right out, because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember, with any meat dish, When you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, hear the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast, and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves The Case of the Baby Brother. That unconventional gentleman, Groucho Marx, stars next on NBC. Portions of the following program are transcribed. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The 
Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, has been famous for years for bringing you the very finest foods, quality foods, the world's favorite varieties of cheese, America's choice in salad dressings, and many other wonderful things to eat. When you shop, look for the name Kraft. Remember, the name Kraft on any food is your guarantee of quality. Well, it's a crisp, cold night in Summerfield... Here and there, a lighted Christmas tree glows warmly in the window. Holly wreaths have begun to appear. The ground is white with new snow, and it's still falling. Big, fat flakes that cling to the porches and to the trees, and to the brim of the great Gildersleeve's hat as he hurries down his front steps. Makes a cautious turn as he reaches the sidewalk. And then strides gaily up the street toward Catherine Milford's house. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Here's the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. What? Wait for me. Where you going, Unc? Well, I'm dropping in at Miss Milford's for a while this evening. Can I walk with you? I'm going to Piggy's house. They're putting up their tree tonight. We're going to decorate it. Well, good. Don't stand on the furniture. You going to help Nurse Milford decorate her tree? Well, you can't tell. We may string a few cranberries. Drape the icicles around? What if Dr. Olson is there? Leroy, don't worry about Dr. Olson. Oh, I'm not. But you said he was a pain in the neck. You said he was always hanging around her house when you wanted to be there. Yeah. Well, you weren't supposed to have heard that. <laughs> but that used to be that way. How is it now? Yeah. Leroy, the nurse has decided she doesn't need a doctor as much as she needs a water commissioner. <laughs> the fact is, I haven't seen Dr. Clarence Olson in weeks. Gee, then you're winning, aren't you? You bet I'm winning. Golly, you got to be smart to be the doctor, too. You said it. Gee, and you're my uncle. Yeah. Well, here's Piggy's house. See you later, Uncle. You'll see you later, Leroy. Yes, sir, there's a mighty fine boy. Well, Strathmorton. Hello, Catherine. Come on in. My, it's snowing out, isn't it? Yeah, just a little. Look at you. You have a big snowflake right on the end of your nose. Yeah, I do? Well, cold nose, warm heart. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take your coat. Yeah, thank you. Well, beautiful tree, Kathy. And Christmas presents. Are all those for me? No, but you can help me finish wrapping them. If I. Lots of presents. Well, Mother and I have lots of relatives. Yeah, oh, sure. Then I couldn't forget those darling children down at the hospital. You? There are five of them that Santa Claus may not remember. Well, good for you, Captain. Be a shame if any little kitties were forgotten on Christmas. Mm. Here, put your finger on this ribbon while I tie the knot, huh? Yeah, yeah, all right. Interesting paper you're using, Captain. Mistletoe design. <laughs> Just put the package over there. No, I think I'll balance it right on top of your head. Ah, Morton. You know what that means? Mistletoe. Oh, <laughs> Aren't you rushing the season a little? You only three more shopping days. You better put the package down there by the tree. Uh, shucks. Say, here's a fancy looking package. Oh, I think that's the one Mother's giving me. Oh, you know, your mother couldn't wait. Huh? Mm. You let me shake this. Oh, but I can guess what's in it. Now, Trot Morton. You? Car fell off. Oh, dear. Well, isn't that just like your mother? To the dearest girl in the world, Clarence. Clarence! Trot Morton, give me the package. That one isn't for Mother. No, I guess not. <laughs> Dr. Clarence Olson, the intern, huh? I thought he'd given up. Clarence has been on night duty at the hospital. Well, just so he hasn't been on night duty with my nurse. <laughs> well, he hasn't forgotten me. I can hardly wait to open his present. He always thinks of the most original thing. Well, I haven't brought you my present yet. I might be to think of something pretty original, too. Really? Give me a hint. A hint? Well... At the hospital, Clarence keeps teasing me about what's in this package. 
Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. All he'll tell me is that it starts with a K for Catherine. Isn't that clever? Well, I guess there's a fine line between being clever and being corny. <laughs> Trot Morton, he's very ingenious. In fact, the mistletoe paper was his idea. You was? Mm-hmm. Well, it may have been his idea. But I was the first one who thought of holding it over your head. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Good morning, children. You know, Archie, what Christmas present can you think of that start with the letter K? K? Well, who's the present for, Uncle? A little kid we know spelled K-I-D? Hardly, Leroy. I was thinking about something for a young lady. Oh, you mean me. <laughs> you will get around to you children later. You know, there's a present under Miss Milford's tree. It starts with a K. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Uh-huh. Leroy, what do you mean, uh-huh? It's Miss Milford's present from Dr. Olson, isn't it? You well, yes. Well, if it's from Dr. Olson, why do you want to know what it is, Unky? Well, I don't want to give her the same present, my church. Yeah, I'd like to give her something a little better. Well, if it starts with a K, maybe it's a... a Kodak. No, no, it's a pretty big package. Canary? <laughs> I don't think it's anything alive, Leroy. And as I recall, Canary doesn't start with a K. Like some hot coffee, Mr. Gill, please? Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Bertie, we're trying to think of some gift a woman would like starting with a K. Any ideas, Bertie? Well, if it's for a woman, maybe it's something for the kitchen. Yeah, I can't think of anything but the kitchen that starts with a K. Except Kraft cheese. <laughs> I can't think of anything. Maybe it's kisses, Mr. Gill, please. Kisses? The candy type, you know... Candy kisses after paper. <laughs> My goodness. Dr. Olson, I wish I'd have thought of giving her something starting with a K for Catherine. Let's see. K. K. Carrot? You could be giving her a diamond. You wouldn't dare. Kettle drums? Kilts? Yeah, you wouldn't give her those. She'd look cute in them, though. Well, good morning, Gilda. Well, the Honorable Judge Hooker. Good morning, Horace. You were walking along with a faraway look in your eye, dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> hey, old goat. Yeah, I'm trying to get an idea about a Christmas present for Miss Milford, Horace. Oh? Well, I came down to hear the Craft Choral Club. They're going to sing around the community Christmas tree here in the square. Oh, yes. Well, let's get a little closer. You know, I've been so worried about Catherine's Christmas present, I almost forgot they were in town. They came all the way from Chicago, Gilday. Eh? Yeah, I know, Judge. Say, there are a lot of them. You wonder who makes the cheese while they're on tour. Shh. I'm about to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, at this Christmas season, it is our pleasure to present the Kraft Choral Club under the direction of Gerhard Schroeder. <laughs> Thank you. 
I think I'll try finding something for Catherine in a hurry and come back. I'll wait here, Gildy. In fact, I may go up and sing with them. You please, not that judge. They didn't come all the way from Chicago to find the lost discord. Now, Gildy. Wait a minute. They're going to sing again. <laughs> Nothing like the carols of this time of year. They warm the cockles of my heart and send the yuletide spirit coursing through my veins. Gildersleeve continues his search for a Christmas present in just a moment. Again, this year, as the holiday season approaches, the makers of Kraft Quality Foods wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year. During the year now drawing to a close, we have appreciated the confidence you have shown through your purchases in all the fine food products which your grocer has brought to you from Kraft. You may be sure that Kraft products will continue to merit your confidence in the future as they have in the past. And that the name Kraft on any label will continue to be your guide to the very finest in foods. Again we say, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to each one of you from all the men and women of Kraft. Now, back to the Great Gildersleeve. a fancy Christmas package under the tree at Catherine Milford's house from Gildersleeve's rival, Dr. Olson. What's in it? That's what the water commissioner would like to know. You, whatever it is, I'll get her something better. He may have the edge on me at the hospital, but by George, I'll beat him under the Christmas tree. He'll go all out. Hello, TV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Yeah, I'm looking for a Christmas present, Peavy. For a lady. Something extra special. A uh, gift for Miss Milford, is it? You bet. That sneaky Dr. Olson bought her something that looks pretty nice. But I'm going to go in one better. I'm going to get her something so beautiful and so clever, it'll make him look silly. My, my. Any suggestions, Peavy? Well, what does she like? Has she dropped any hints? Not lately. All she talks about is those little kids she takes care of at the hospital. There must be something clever and original I could get for her, Peavy. Now, how about a subscription to Look Magazine? <laughs> well... Or how about a nice set of scales? Women like to weigh themselves, you know. And she can weigh herself at the hospital, Peavy. Does she like sweetmeats? Sweetmeats? We have some very attractive boxes of candied prunes. 
quite healthful, too. <laughs> no, Pete. Well, how about some nice musical bath salts? <laughs> no. And a ballpoint pen? No. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're rather hard to please. Phoebe. <laughs> Yo, first. Phoebe, I've got to get something different. Something original. Now, you've had plenty of experience at this Christmas thing. Mm, that's true. You've been buying Christmas presents for Mrs. Peavy for 20 years. Yes, I have. Well, certainly after all that time, a man should know what it takes to please a woman. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can see you're going to be no help at all, Peavy. I'm going over to Hogan Brothers. Yeah, that's a good idea. Happy shopping, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, happy shopping. Mob in these stores. Why does everybody wait till the last minute to buy presents? Oop! You watch that umbrella, lady. Second floor. Photographs, radios, toys. Here, out on two, please. Here. You might get her a radio. No, everybody has a radio. I have to be more original than that if I'm going to beat that slick intern. Christmas won't mean a thing to me unless I outdo it. Well, cute toys up here. Is that you, Miss Gilsleeve? Well, hello, Bertie. What are you doing up here in the toys? Oh, I got a lot of little nieces and nephews I have to buy for. Oh, yeah. They don't have much, so when I show up every Christmas with my arms full of toys, they think I'm some pumpkin. Yeah, but they do, Bertie. Say, what if I showed up with an arm full of toys for those kiddies at the hospital? The ones Miss Milford is so fond of. Them children would think you're some punkins, too, Miss Gildersleeve. Well, I guess they would. What's more, I'd be some punkins with Miss Milford, too. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you bet. Nothing I could do that would impress her more. Right, George, this is a great idea we had, Bertie. Twick! Twick, I want to buy some toys. <laughs> Dr. Olson can never top this. I'll walk in on Catherine, pass out these toys to her little kitties, and tell her this is my Christmas present to her. Ew, what can she say? Except that I'm the greatest guy in the world. And the kids will get a kick out of it, too. <laughs> in turn, turn in your suit, you're through. <laughs> yeah, this must be the ward. I see some children. Well, hello, little children. Hello. Hello. Uh, where's Miss Milford? She'll be back. She wants to get our orange juice. You will. I'll just put these packages down and wait. Are you Santa Claus? Uh, me? No, he's not Santa Claus. He hasn't got a white beard. But he's nice and fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus never comes around here. You now, wait a minute, John fellow. You know, I'm sort of a Santa Claus. I brought all these presents to you children. For us? Honest and truly? Oh, boy! You see, Stuffy, he is Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, boy, I gotta come over and see him. Stuffy's lucky. He's in a wheelchair. Oh. Well, I'll bring the presents around to your little beds when Nurse Milford comes. I want to open mine. No, no, wait a minute, Stuffy. You shouldn't open presents until Christmas. I don't want to open mine until Christmas. I just want to dream about what's in them. Yeah, that's the idea, little girl. While we're waiting for Nurse Milford, will you read us a Christmas story? The Christmas story? That's what she was doing. Yeah, they're in that book. Well, I like stories. I used to read them to my niece and nephew. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. Oh. Why the Chimes Rang by Raymond MacDonald Alvin. I like that one. I don't know it. Well, I've been in the hospital longer than you have. <laughs> well, let's read it. We don't have much time. Once upon a time, in a faraway country, there was a wonderful church. It stood on a high hill in the midst of a great city. And every Sunday, as well as on sacred days like Christmas, 
Thousands of people climbed the hill to its great archways, looking like lines of ants, all moving in the same direction. They don't allow ants in the hospital. Stop interrupting, Stuffy. Yes, you must listen, Stuffy. Now, all the people knew that at the top of the tower was a chime of Christmas bells. They'd hung there ever since the church had been built and were the most beautiful bells in the world. Some described them as sounding like angels far up in the sky. Others as sounding like strange winds singing through the trees. But for many years, they had never been heard. Why didn't the bells ring? Well, we're coming to that. It was said that people had been growing less careful of their gifts for the Christ child, and that no offering was brought which was fine enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Every Christmas Eve, people still crowded to the altar, each one trying to bring some gift better than any other. Why'd you do that? Well, for personal reasons, I guess. They were trying to make a big impression. Oh. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Now, a number of miles from the city, in a little country village, lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother. They'd heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve and planned to go see the beautiful celebration. Nobody can guess, little brother, Pedro would say, all the fine things there are to see and hear. And I have even heard it said that the Christ child sometimes come down to bless the service. What if we could see him? The day before Christmas, Pedro and little brother were able to slip quietly away And although the walking was hard in the frosty air, before nightfall, they had trudged so far, hand in hand, that they saw the lights of the big city just ahead of them. They were about to enter one of the great gates in the wall that surrounded it, when they saw something dark on the snow near their path, and stepped aside to look at it. What was it? Well, let's see. There, by the path, was a poor woman who had fallen in the snow, too sick and tired to get in where she might have found shelter. And Pedro knelt down beside her. You will have to go on alone, little brother, he said. Alone? cried little brother. But you will not see the Christmas festival. No, said Pedro. And he could not keep back a bit of a choking sound in his throat. See this poor woman. Her face looks like the Madonna in the chapel window. And she will freeze to death if nobody cares for her. But I cannot bear to leave you and go on alone, said little brother. Both of us need not miss the service, said Pedro. And it'd better be I than you. You can easily find your way to the church. And you must see and hear everything twice, little brother. Once for you and once for me. And oh, if you get a chance, little brother, to slip up to the altar without getting in anyone's way, take this little silver piece of mine and lay it down for my offering when no one is looking. In this way, he hurried little brother off to the city and winked hard to keep back the tears as he heard the crunching footsteps sounding farther and farther away in the twilight. The great church was wonderful that night. When the organ played and the thousands of people sang, the walls shook with the sound. And little Pedro, way outside the city wall, felt the earth tremble around him. At the close of the service came the procession with the offerings to be laid on the altar. Rich men and great men marched proudly up to lay down their gifts to the Christ child. Some brought wonderful jewels, Some brought baskets of gold, but the chimes did not ring. The last of all came the king of the country, hoping with all the rest to win for himself the chime of the Christmas bells. There went a great murmur through the church. The people saw the king take from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones, and lay it gleaming on the altar as his offering to the holy child. Surely, everyone said, surely we shall hear the bells now, for nothing like this has ever happened before. But still, only the cold old wind was heard in the tower, and the people shook their heads 
And some of them said, as they had said before, that they never really believed the story of the chimes and doubted if they ever rang at all. Suddenly, everyone looked at the old minister, who was standing by the altar, holding up his hand for silence. Not a sound could be heard from anyone in the church. But as all the people strained their ears to listen, there came softly, but distinctly, swinging through the air, the sound of the chimes in the tower. So far away, and yet so clear the music seemed. So much sweeter were the notes than anything that had been heard before, rising and falling away up there in the sky, that the people in the church sat for a moment, as still as though something held each of them by the shoulders. Then they all stood up together and stared straight at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long, silent bells. But all that the nearest of them saw was the childish figure of little brother who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and had laid Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. That was a wonderful story. Why did the bells ring when little brother laid the piece of silver on the altar? Well... Why didn't they ring when the great men brought jewels and things? Well, like the book said, each one was trying to bring some gift better than any other. Those men were trying to outdo each other. What little Pedro gave out of the goodness of his heart. He didn't have any ulterior motive. What's an ulterior motive? Well... I guess that's what I had when I came here. That's Miss Milford coming. It is? Yeah. Well, I, I guess I'll be going. Aren't you going to wait and see our nurse? Where are you going, mister? Well, I, I think I'll sneak out this side door. But, but how does she know who brought the present? Well, that's not important anymore. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'll tiptoe down the back steps. Well, five o'clock. I didn't know the hospital had chimes. of the preceding program were transcribed. It's Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, brings you the famous cheese food, Velveeta, the delicious pasteurized processed cheese food with a fine cheddar flavor that's wonderfully rich, yet delightfully mild. 
You can be sure it tastes wonderful because Velveeta is made by Kraft. And for years, the name Kraft has meant the very finest in cheese and cheese foods. So next time you're shopping, be sure to get Velveeta. See for yourself how unusually delicious it is. And remember, only Kraft makes Velveeta. Gildersleeve, his family and friends hope all of you had a Merry Christmas. Everybody at his house did. The tree was never so gaily decorated, and St. Nicholas never more generous. Oh, boy, a hockey stick. And shoe skates. Thanks, Unc. You don't thank me, Leroy. Thanks, Santa Claus. I sure thank you for all my loot. <laughs> well, you deserve it, Bertie. You've been a good little girl all year. Yes, sir. Unky, look what Bronco gave me. Yeah, look, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, a quilted rope, his thoughtful husband. And slippers to match. Blue satin. Ain't that pretty? Well, the baby's coming soon, and we want the little fellow to be proud of his mother. <laughs> yeah, that's right, my boy. Oh, Bronco, you're the sweetest husband in the world. Oh, Marge. <laughs> yeah, you are sweet. Hey, sweetie, what did you give me? No, Leroy. <laughs> it's in that long package, Leroy. Oh, yeah, the archery set. How'd you know? You haven't opened it. I opened it last week. <laughs> <laughs> you would have, boy. Uh, Mr. Gill, please. Yes, Bertie? Here's another big package for you that came yesterday. You? Who brought it? Santa Claus. <laughs> you mean Santa Claus came twice? Yes, sir. This time in high heels. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. We were told to hide it from you, Unky. Mm, I got my gift from Catherine. Who sent it? One of your secret admirers, Unky. Huh? Yofer. Yeah, I don't have any secret admirers. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> Open it, Unky. Well, I guess I'd better. It sure is not a fancy. Hey, it's an alligator. It is not, Leroy. It's an alligator suitcase. Say... This is a pretty expensive present. Silver fittings inside. Oh, it's lovely, Yankee. Uh, here's the card. To Throckmorton with love, Vicky. Vicky! That's love, all right. Alligators don't come cheap. <laughs> You're all right, Vicky. Bronco, you ran Victoria shouldn't have done this. It's very embarrassing. Well, didn't you send her something, Unky? Well, yes. A Christmas card. <laughs> and she said you love in an alligator bag. <laughs> Bertie, this isn't funny. In fact, it's getting serious. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bronco? Marge and I are driving over to my folks' house. I'm not too anxious to bump into your Aunt Vicky until I figure out what to do about that gift. Oh, forget it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Aunt Vicky just likes to be nice to her boyfriends. Well, I've only been out with her a few times. I'm not her boyfriend. Mr. Gildersleeve, when Aunt Vicky decides you're her boyfriend, there isn't much you can do about it. But... She likes you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I like her, too. But I've been going with Catherine for quite a while. And I won't let anything come between us. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I mean it. Archie! I'll get him right here! What a noisy family. Hello? Yeah. Archie, it's for you. Yeah, thank you, my boy. Bronco's Aunt Vicky. It is? How are you going to handle it, Uncle? Tell her you're going steady? Be quiet, Leroy. The receiver's off the hook. I know. I want to see how you get off the hook. <laughs> Leroy, if it wasn't Christmas, I... Hello, Vicky. Hello, Throckmorton. You Merry Christmas. And I want to thank you for the alligator suitcase. And I want to thank you for the Christmas card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't sent out all my presents this year. Yeah, I often do it that way. <laughs> send out a card, then surprise them later with a present. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, why don't you go skating? Okay. What an operator. <laughs> now then, Vicky, as I was saying about sending you a present. Why, Trot Morton, you don't have to send me anything. When 
I like somebody and give them something, I don't expect anything in return. Now, Vicky, you'll have a New Year's surprise. I will? What's it going to be? Oh, tell little Vicky. <laughs> well, I can't tell you. I don't know myself. <laughs> Vicky. The one thing I've got to do, let's get her a New Year's present. Well, good old Peavy will help me out. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Well, I have a, a gift to buy, Peavy. A gift, you say? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, Christmas was last Monday. Yeah, I know, Peavy. I still have to buy a gift. Forget somebody? Well, it isn't the case of my forgetting in case of somebody else remembering. How's that? You know, I got an alligator suitcase from a secret admirer. My, my. It is very embarrassing, Peavy. Now I have to buy her something. Oh, very well. She's Miss Vicky Chase, his Bronco's aunt. Oh, yes, an attractive woman. Well, yes. But she doesn't understand that I'm interested in Catherine Milford. If she gave you an alligator bag, I'd say she understands pretty well. <laughs> well... She's getting to be quite a problem, Pete. <laughs> she calls me at home. She calls me at the water department. She calls me at... Excuse me, Mr. Gilbert, please. The telephone. You can go right ahead, Pete. Phoebe's pharmacy. Yes. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Mr. Gilbert, please. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Hello. John Martin, this is Vicky. Oop. Phoebe, why didn't you tell me who it was? You didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask you. Hello, Vicky. I thought I'd find you if I kept calling around town. Well, you found me. <laughs> I'll bet you're still looking for a gift for little Vicky, you naughty boy, you. You well. Really, Throckmorton, I don't want you to buy me a thing. But if you insist on spending money on me, why don't you spend it on both of us? Who's that? Well, I see there's a big New Year's Eve dance at the Palm Room. You will. If my little gift of a genuine alligator bag with sterling silver fittings makes you feel obligated, why don't you just take me to the dance? But... I wouldn't dream of suggesting it, but I'm only trying to help you get this off your mind. Oh, yes. Well, Vicky, I may have to work at the water department. Oh, what could you be doing at the water department on New Year's Eve? Well, with all those parties going on, they use a lot of water. Yeah, I'll be in touch with you. I'll be as close as your telephone. Yeah. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Trot Martin. Oh, Peavy, I don't know why that woman keeps after me. Neither do I. I guess it's just because there aren't many eligible men around. That could explain it. Well, I have to get her off my neck somehow. I have a date with Catherine New Year's Eve. Who is that? Looks like your neighbor, Mr. Bullard, parking his Cadillac out front. <laughs> Look at that stuffed shirt. Bumping those other cars around to make room for his. Yeah, he made it. it. I think he's coming in here, Petey. Good. Mr. Bullard's a big spender. Good morning, Petey. Well, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hello, Mr. Bullard. You were a little rough on that car out there, weren't you? Was I? It's none of my business. True. <laughs> <laughs> you know what if you dented his fender? I'd buy him a new car. You. I wish he'd dent my fender. <laughs> uh, give me a box of Coronas, Phoebe. Very well. Uh, you care for a box, Mr. Gildersleeve? You no, know, thanks, Pete. I'll give him a cigar. It's Christmas. Hey, I'll take two. New Year's is coming up. <laughs> Have a nice Christmas, did you, Mr. Bullard? On the contrary. With Marshall at Harvard and little Craig away at school, I was very lonely. It is too bad. I looked at myself in the mirror while shaving, said Merry Christmas, and that's all there was to it. Well, at least I had Mrs. Peavy to look at. You're a very lucky man, Peavy. Well, now, I... maybe I am. <laughs> For me, I suppose New Year's Eve will be just as uneventful. New Year's Eve? Mm -hmm. Say, there's no reason for a wealthy widower like you to be lonely on New Year's Eve. 
What's this, Gildersleeve? Why don't we ring out the old year together, Bullock? We'll get a table at the palm room. Just you and me? <laughs> no. We'll get dates. Dates, Gildersleeve? Ladies. But I haven't given a thought to anything but stocks and bonds for the past seven years. I don't have a lady to escort. Well, I have too many. Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, I'd be glad to introduce you to one of the attractive girls I know. The alligator woman? <laughs> Well, what do you say, Mr. Billy? Well, it's an idea, Gildersleeve. You bet. New Year's Eve, charming company, balloons, beautiful music. Yes, yes. Perhaps I should start 1951 by breaking out of my cocoon and living a little. Good. Now you just leave everything to me. Thank you, Gildersleeve. It's very nice of you to share your friends with a lonely man. Very unselfish of him, isn't it, Peavy? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Peavy! <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. These hurried days when you're busy with holiday plans, you probably have need of a lunch or supper main dish you can fix as quickly and easily as possible. So let Velveeta be your handy helper. Kraft's pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta, can help you many wonderful ways. You can slice it thick for hot sandwiches with a delicious cheese flavor, Toasted till Velveeta is melted to a bubbling gold, then topped off with slices of broiled tomatoes and strips of crisp bacon. Mmm. Now, that's an easy dish that's tempting and really good. For Velveeta has a grand cheddar cheese flavor, one that's rich and yet delightfully mild. And sandwiches you make with Velveeta are good for the folks, too. Good for all of them, from the preschoolers all the way up to Grandma. Because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk that everybody needs. And it's digestible, just as digestible as milk itself. Put Velveeta on your shopping list tonight and make Velveeta your handy helper all through these busy days to slice thick for hearty hot or cold sandwiches, to spread for snacks, and to melt for a smooth as velvet cheese sauce. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. Remember, there's only one Velveeta, and it's made only by Kraft. Great Gildersleeve has many things to be thankful for, not the least of which is getting his neighbor, Mr. Fuller, to take Vicky Chase off his hands New Year's Eve. Now he's bragging about his clever maneuvering as he drives Judge Hooker home. Uh, pretty shrewd of me, eh, Judge? Well, it's nice of you to share your lady friends, Gildy. Yeah, of course, they'd both rather be with me. <laughs> you would I'll pair off with Catherine and let Vicky have book. What do you think of that? I think Vicky's getting the best of the deal. <laughs> sure, sure. You can't rip me, horse. This whole thing has worked out wonderfully. And I'm the one who worked it out. I hope so, Gildy. But Rumson Bullard is a handsome man with wealth and position. What if he decides he likes your little nurse better than he likes Miss Chase? Right, George. If he does, he'll need a nurse. Well, Rumson is competitive by nature. He takes what he wants, and he usually wants what the other man has. He wouldn't dare. Gildy, why are you turning around? Yeah, I'm going by Catherine's house. I'm going to make it clear she's going with me. Judge, you wait here. No, I'll go in with you. But I'll only be a minute. It'll take longer than that. I see she has mistletoe over the door. <laughs> Me over. Hello there. Hello, Catherine. Good afternoon, Miss Belford. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Judge. I thought I'd better come out and see why you two didn't come in. Well, I just stopped by to make it clear about tonight. Make what clear? He wants to tell you that he'll be your beau. And that his other girlfriend can have Mr. Bullock. Judge. Oh, Throckmorton, you're so amusing. Isn't it? <laughs> you will, Catherine. I just wanted to make it clear that you'll be with me. Of course, Throckmorton. I naturally assumed that. You're eight. Five. Everything's rosy. Well, here's Mr. Bullard. Bullard? Why is he stopping? Hello, Gildersleeve. Judge. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Good afternoon. I'm glad I saw you, Gildersleeve. 
I bought a new car just for this evening. <laughs> well, fine. Isn't it beautiful? Gildy, aren't you going to introduce Miss Milford? Yeah, I guess I'd better. Uh, Miss Milford, you remember Mr. Bullard? Yes, how do you do? How do you do, Miss Milford? He'll be at our table this evening with his date. Oh, I, are you going to be with us, Miss Milford? With me. <laughs> well, well, this looks like a jolly party Gildersleeve has arranged. Doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it, Gildy? <laughs> All right, Judge. Well, goodbye, Bullard. See you tonight. Oh, yes, indeed. And I'm looking forward to seeing Miss Milford. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Milford. Goodbye. Bye, Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Milford. You said goodbye. <laughs> Please. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Now you're all set for the night. Yeah, I guess so. Mr. Gillsleeve, you don't sound very happy for New Year's Eve. Well, I... Hmm. My vest's getting a little frayed around the watch pocket. Yes, sir. I stitched it as best I could. Yeah, I suppose that bullet will be wearing a new tuxedo to go with his new car. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, I believe that man's got you worried. Bertie, I'm not worried. No, sir. Actually, I very cleverly arranged it so that he's helping me out. Yes, sir. He's taking Miss Chase off my hands so I can be with Miss Milford. Yes, sir. The fact that he was attracted to Miss Milford doesn't mean that she likes him. No, sir. What if she does? That doesn't worry me. No, sir. Competition's good for a man. Yeah, that's right, Rick. And you got it. <laughs> <laughs> No, Bertie. Yes, sir, you've got new competition. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Tonight you're going to ring out the old year by bringing in new competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, tonight you're going to ring out the old year by bringing in new competition. Bertie, please. Mr. Gilson, you know what you're going to do tonight? Yes, Bertie. That's right, you're going to ring out the old year by bringing in new competition. <laughs> 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 Well, what's going on, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, Auntie. What was Bertie laughing at? Me? In my competition? Oh, poor Auntie. I wouldn't worry about Mr. Bullard liking Catherine. Yeah, I'm not, Marjorie. But I'll worry if Catherine likes him. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Robert? <laughs> you have no problem, Mr. Gildersleeve. You haven't I? When I was courting Marge, I was faced with a very similar situation. You? A fellow named Wally Hoff thought he sort of liked Marge. Oh, Bronco. Until I pretended I liked his girl. Then Wally sprang back to her like a rubber band. <laughs> so that's what you were up to. Well, it worked, didn't it, Marge, honey? Any regrets? Oh, of course not, darling. <laughs> you may have something there, Bronco. Yes, sir. The way I see it, Mr. Gildersleeve, Mr. Bullard's interested in Miss Milford because you are. You grabby neighbor. Now, if you pretend you're interested in Aunt Vicky, he'll try to beat you out there. He might? That's his Achilles heel. He's a heel, all right. <laughs> if I play up to his date, no, I wouldn't stoop to that. You wouldn't I? <laughs> Come on, Catherine. We'll lead the way. You follow us, Bullard, Vicky. All right. Very well. Yeah, our table's in that dark corner. Isn't the palm room lovely tonight? Yeah. You're lovely too, Catherine. You don't mind if I'm not too attentive tonight. I'm using psychology. Psychology? Yeah, I'm setting a bear trap with a blonde. Watch this, Gildersleeve. Yeah, we, uh... Yeah, I was just wondering if the bear backs will be tickled by the palm. <laughs> Oh, you would think of that, Throckmorton. Oh, isn't he a lot of fun at a party, Mr. Bullard? That remains to be seen. <laughs> you sit here, Captain. Thank you. Bullard, hmm? you over there, under the coconuts. 
<laughs> Thank you, Gildersleeve. And you here, Vicky? Why, you're beautiful this evening. Oh, Throckmorton, you're a flatterer. You? No, I'm not. You're lovely. Take the word of the water commissioner. Drain pipe Casanova. <laughs> uh, Miss Milford? Yes? You're even more captivating tonight than you were this afternoon. Oh, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> well, uh, Vicky is more captivating tonight than she's ever been. Oh, uh, Miss Milford, do your duties as a nurse allow you much time for recreation? Well, I'm afraid I spend most of my time at the hospital. Uh-huh. Uh, how does a man in perfect health get admitted to your hospital? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, I'd better get busy here. Vicky, <laughs> hey, hmm? you would the charming Miss Chase care to dance? Why, well, I'd love to. It's a grand evening, Gildersleeve. I've never enjoyed myself so much. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> uh, Vicky, I don't want to take you away from Mr. Bullard, but you're such a good dancer. Well, he doesn't seem to mind. No, he doesn't. He spent all evening mumbling sweet nothings to cats. Oh, Miss oh, 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 huh? Mr. Bullard. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> you Ronco psychology had better start working. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no. Mr. Bullard? <laughs> what? I say, Vicky and I are going to dance again. Unless you'd like to dance with her. She took from Arthur Murray. Oh, go right ahead, Gildersleeve. Uh, we'll sit this one out. Uh, well, shall we sit with them, Vicky? Well, perhaps we should, Throckmorton. We haven't been too sociable except with each other. Well, they haven't been very sociable either. You know, for a man to be lonely. I know. Oh, he certainly is an attractive man. I enjoyed the one time he danced with me. You're fine. I wonder what they're talking about. Oh. Catherine, I want you to know this. Oh, well, you... Ooh, I've got to get him interested in Vicky. Maybe he can take notice if I started mumbling to her. Vicky? I do believe the Rockmorton, what are you? About. I don't know, but it isn't working. <laughs> what isn't working? Shh, I'm trying to hear something. Oh, Rumson, you're just saying no. that. Oh, no, it's Rumson. <laughs> I wish a coconut had fallen on his head. <laughs> I promise that I can see you very soon, Catherine. Yeah. Yeah, George has gone far enough. Bullard! What now, Gildersleeve? Yeah, I'd like to have a word with you in private. Gildersleeve, if it's about the check, stop worrying. I'll pay it. <laughs> it isn't about the check. Please step behind the palms. Very well. Um, excuse me, Catherine. Miss Chase. Oh, of course. Is anything wrong, Rockmore? Nothing I can't handle. Come on, Bullard. Gildersleeve, let go of my lapel. Bullard, prepare to defend yourself. <laughs> From what? <laughs> From me. You're trying your best to steal Catherine. I'm stealing Catherine? Ha! I was to have escorted Vicky to this party. And what have you been doing? You've monopolized her the entire evening. You're all right. Did you expect me to talk to the palm trees? <laughs> no, just a minute, Bullard. You were just talking to Catherine. You were flirting. You were being pretty cute with Vicky, too. Well, I had a reason. So did I. You, you did? Oh, if you're so stupid that I have to explain it to you, Gildersleeve, I've been trying to make you jealous. You, 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 me? Jealous enough so you take an interest in your own date. Wait a minute. That's what I've been trying to get you to do. Then you've been waiting to dance with Catherine? And you've been waiting to dance with Vicky? I thought you didn't care for her. Perish the thought, Gildersleeve. Vicky and I have a great deal in common. We both like money. <laughs> Uh oh. 12 o'clock, Gildersleeve. I'll see you later. Oh, Miss Chase. Vicky. Here comes Robson. You bet. And here comes Gildersleeve. Catherine. Yes, Ross Martin. Happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year, Catherine. Kiss. Close your eyes. Mm. Oh, 
boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Gildersleeve will be right back. Where your family's nourishment is concerned, you don't want to guess. You want to be sure. That's why when it comes to buying cheese food, careful shoppers insist on Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food, because Velveeta is not only good to eat, it's good for your family, too. Rich in important food values from milk that growing children and adults need. A nourishing Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself, and it's perfect for wholesome, good-eating snacks and sandwiches any time at all. No wonder Velveeta outsells all other brands of cheese food combined. Make it your handy helper, Mother. Velveeta, the quality cheese food that's made only by Kraft. Waterman steps out of his role as the great Gildersleeve to wish you all a happy and prosperous New Year. We're glad that we have this opportunity to come into your homes and wish you all the joys and blessings of the holiday season. So, it's a happy New Year to all of you from the members of our cast. Kathy Lewis. Katie Milford. Shirley Mitchell. Vicki Chase. Gail Gordon. Rumson Bullard. Dick Crenna. Bronco. Earl Ross. Judge Hooker. Richard Legrand. Mr. Peavy. <laughs> and now, on behalf of the National Safety Council, here's a special message from our little family. Merrily Rob, our Marjorie. Let's all remember that traffic fatalities rise sharply this time of year. So keep your wits and windshields clear. Yeah, that's right. And here's Lillian Randolph. Bertie just wants to say don't speed. Drive slow in sleet and snow. You'll get there. <laughs> Good idea. And here's Walter Tetley, my nephew, Leroy. Ease up and I'll freeze up. Don't skid yourself. (laughs) Very good, Leroy. So watch it, folks. We want you to be listening next year. Happy New Year, too, from all the people behind the scenes. From Robert Armbruster and the orchestra, our fine writers, Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White. From Ray Ferguson, our engineer, Monty Frazier, handling sound effects. From our producer-director, Frank Pittman and Virgil Reimer for NBC. And, of course, these holiday greetings come to you, too, from our sponsors, the Kraft Foods Company. Their representative on this program, John Heaston, and the entire family of Kraft employees. Happy New Year, everyone. Good night. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the Rolling Stones. Listen for Groucho Marx next on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week at this time by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices. 
Now you can enjoy the most delicious pasteurized processed cheese you ever tasted. And you can enjoy it in perfect slices. That's right. Every neat half-pound package of Kraft Deluxe Slices holds eight sandwich-sized slices of this delicious processed cheese. Slices you can depend on to be in perfect condition. None with dried edges or broken pieces, but really perfect slices because they're wrapped right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant, protected all the way to your kitchen. Tomorrow, look in your grocer's dairy case for those neat packages of extra delicious processed cheese, Kraft Deluxe Slices. Now let's see what's doing in Summerfield. The Great Gildersleeve worked later than usual at the water department today, and it's well into the winter evening as he turns the corner heading for home. Window lights glisten on the new snow, and our water commissioner's heart is warm with thoughts of home and fireside. Yes, sir. This will be a fine night to gather the little family around the fireplace and pop some corn. Make up a batch of molasses candy. Hey, well, Leroy. Sled, will you? Yeah, all right. Climb on. Yeah, I guess I can be a horse for half a block. Okay, I'm on. Giddy up. Here we go. Huh, that's not like a horse. Huh? Put the rope in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, my boy, let's just go along this way. Okay, I'll... Leroy, it's pretty late for you to be out playing. How does it happen you're not in the house? Oh, old Marge is on the war path. What a sister. You, what's this about your sister? I can't figure her out. Holy cow, if you look crosswise, she hollers at you picking on her. You, my goodness. I went outside. Let Bronco put up with her. Poor guy, he's married to her. (laughs) Well, we have to be especially considerate of Marjorie right now, Leroy. You know, the baby will be along very soon. Makes a big difference. She's easily upset. You're telling me. There's no living with her. (laughs) I can see I should have come home earlier. This family falls to pieces when I'm not around. I'm not falling to pieces. I got out. <laughs> Your trouble, Leroy, is you butt into other people's affairs. Marjorie and Bronco will get along fine if you just leave them alone. All I said... You shouldn't have said anything. Marjorie's very touchy right now. We simply have to go about the house quietly and happily, saying nothing. Is that what you're going to do when you get home? Absolutely. This I got to see. Get it out. Hello, everybody. Marjorie, Bronco, Bertie, I'm home. You see, you said something already. Now you run along to bed, Leroy. Uh, can I stay up and watch? There's not going to be anything to watch. I'm home now. Everything's going to be fine. Can I leave my door open? Leroy. Okay. Hello, Auntie. Good evening, Marjorie. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, the young father's soon to be. Yeah. Oh, we're so happy, Yankee. It just seems too wonderful to be true. Isn't that sweet? Oh, where's my hat, Marge? I'll go down to the drugstore and get that hand lotion you wanted. Oh, your hat's on the table, darling. And will you get me a jar of face cream? Oh, sure, honey. You real lovebirds and that Leroy. Goodbye, darling. Bronco! What is it, honey? Well, you didn't even kiss me goodbye. But I'm only going to the drugstore. Well, what's your hurry? No, just a minute. But, darling... Is the drugstore more important than your own wife? No, but the hand cream... Why are you so anxious to get me hand cream? I didn't say I was. Aren't my hands attractive anymore? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yo, brother. Marge, honey, but you asked me to go. You need the face cream. Oh, now you're telling me I have wrinkles. I didn't say that. I'm just an old married woman with rough hands and an ugly face. I don't blame you for running off to the drugstore. You want to get away from me. But, Marge... Oh, my goodness. You see what I mean, Unc? You see? Leroy, you go to bed. (laughs) You don't love me anymore, Uncle Moore. I do, Marge, I do. But you told me to go to the drugstore. Didn't she, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, wait. Leave me out of this. I'm a neutral party. He can't wait. 
wait to get out of the house. You can see that, can't you, Uncle Mort? Yes. Yeah, I mean, no. I didn't see anything. Alfoya! Go to bed! <laughs> oh, Marge. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Bronco loves his little darling. Are you sure? Cross my heart. Be good to me, Bronco. It's all over. They're in love again. Gildersleeve, you're clever. Bertie, you in the kitchen? I'm here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good. I wondered where you were. I'm in the kitchen, and that's where I'm staying, in the kitchen. Well, everything's all right now, Bertie. I'm home. Only place to be around here is in the kitchen. Yeah, I know what you mean, Bertie. But it's all straightened out now. Been pretty lively around here today. So I hear, Bertie. But I'm home now. Yes, sir. The way Miss Marjorie's acting, that stork is warming up for the takeoff. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just do as I do, Bertie. Don't interfere. Just be neutral. Yes, sir. It's been stormy weather today with Miss Marjorie. I'd no sooner get upstairs to dust the bedroom than bang, come the lightning, and I'd run to the kitchen. Yeah, I know, Bertie. And into the living room to dust the piano, bang, come the lightning, and I'd run to the kitchen. Yeah, I understand, Bertie. All I've been doing all day is dusting and running. (laughs) Well, Marjorie and Bronco have patched up all their little differences. The storms are over. And simply because I refuse to take sides, Bertie, that solved the whole thing. You sure? Positively. They're in the living room right now, billing and cooing. Yeah, George, it just proves that when young couples have difficulties at a time like this, it's because some older person interferes, tries to give advice. Yes. I know my hair looks dreadful. You don't have to tell me. I didn't say that. Bang, run for the kitchen. Bertie. I forgot we had the kitchen. I'm going upstairs right now. No, what happened? She went upstairs. Poor Marjorie. She's just not herself. Excuse me, Mr. Gilsey. I'll go and see if I can help. You, what a family. Everything was so peaceful. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come on in the kitchen, Bronco. It's the only safe place in the house. <laughs> I can't figure it out. What do I say? How do I say it so that she can make it come out something else? <laughs> well, as I said before, Bronco, yeah, I'm not taking sides. Or giving any advice. If I only knew what to do. If it keeps on like this, I don't know if I'll live till the baby gets here. Poor kid. What would you do if you were in my shoes, Mr. Gildersleeve? You have. You've lived longer than I have, and you always seem to know a lot about women. Well, I do. (laughs) You went in doubt, Bronco. Always let a woman have her way. Simply say yes to everything. Everything? Yes, indeed. Give Marjorie anything she wants. Promise her anything. Anything that'll make her happy. Do you think that's safe? Certainly. The situation won't last long. In another month or six weeks, the baby will be here. And it'll all be forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You bet. Mr. Killersleeve, I should have talked to you long ago. Well, you've been pretty busy. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. There's a smart boy. (laughs) Bread's going to feel good tonight. Hmm. Midnight. What the heck? Is an evening well spent? Getting Bronco straightened out. After all, why shouldn't I give him advice? Nothing wrong with telling a fellow to give a woman her own way. She'll get it eventually anyway. <laughs> Bronco won't have any more problems. Neither will I. Oh, bad. Pretty neat the way I put Bronco in the right trick. Just a matter of understanding people. Human nature. Maybe I ought to be a psychiatrist. Who's that? Who's in the hall? It's I, Mr. Gildersleeve. Who? What are you doing prowling around the dark, Bronco? 
Marge wants me to get her purse. She left it in the car. Can't you get it in the morning? It's perfectly safe. The garage is locked. Marge wants me to get it now. You know what you told me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sorry I woke you up. Yeah, that's all right. I wonder if I can get back to sleep. Sure. Bronco get Marjorie's purse, and then she'll be happy. And after all, that's the important thing. Gildersleeve, you have an instinctive sense of how to handle women. Bronco's just young and inexperienced. And that's all. Who's there? It's I, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's the matter now? Going downstairs. Marge is in the sewing room reading. She wants me to get last Sunday's paper. You're over. Last Sunday's paper. Why doesn't she go to sleep? She doesn't want to go to sleep. She wants last Sunday's paper. <laughs> you know what you said, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, look in the back porch. Okay. Last Sunday's paper. Do all the silly ideas in the middle of the night. Still, anything to keep her happy. She'll, she'll read a while and drop off to sleep. Everybody will be happy. Of course, it's pretty tough on Bronco. But it's the only way. And she'll love him for it. That's the main thing. <laughs> Psychiatrist, you'd better get some shut eye. Bronco, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Now what's the matter? Marge is hungry. We'll get her a sandwich. She doesn't want a sandwich. What does she want? Sauerkraut. <laughs> no. no, for heaven's sake. Ask Bertie if we have it. I did. We haven't. Well, tell Marjorie to go to sleep. This is ridiculous. Mr. Gildersleeve, I did just as you told me. When she said, Bronco, I'm hungry for sauerkraut, I said, Darling, I'll get you sauerkraut. But, Bronco, where are you going to find it at this time of night? I don't know, but I have to find it someplace. I did like you said. I promised. You, brother, in the middle of the night hunting for sauerkraut. What are we going to do, Mr. Gildersleeve? There's only one thing to do. Psychiatrist, get off your couch. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Have you seen those neat, square packages marked Kraft Deluxe Slices in your grocer's dairy case? In every one of those neat packages, there are eight perfect slices of the most delicious pasteurized processed cheese you've ever eaten. They're the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices, and they're different from any sliced cheese you've ever had before. That's right, because instead of being cut from a loaf, these slices of extra good-tasting processed cheese are formed by an exclusive new Kraft invention. And this invention actually captures all the fine processed cheese flavor, more delicious flavor, in every slice. Then, so these slices will be sure to reach you in perfect condition with no broken pieces or dried edges. They're wrapped right in the spick and span craft plant. Eight slices to a half pound package. And every one of these slices is large enough to cover a slice of bread. So imagine how handy craft deluxe slices are for those quick cheese sandwiches and snacks you need so often. For a variety of cheese treats, you'll want to keep several kinds on hand. Those neat packages of Kraft Deluxe Slices take up so little room in your refrigerator, you can keep several kinds on hand always. So tomorrow, be sure to look in your grocer's dairy case for those handy slices of extra delicious processed cheese. Kraft Deluxe Slices. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. With Marjorie and Bronco anticipating a visit from the stork, our water commissioner is finding life a little complicated. For example, it's after midnight, and Bronco has awakened the great man to inform him that Marjorie is hungry. Does she want a sandwich? No. Glass of milk? No. 
he wants sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. In the middle of the night. Bronco, she must be dreaming. No, she's not, Mr. Gildersleeve. She's sitting up reading a newspaper. That's where she got the idea. You what idea? In the paper, there's a picture of a man pitching hay. She said it made her hungry for sauerkraut. You, brother. You told me to give her anything she wanted. But this is impossible. There are no stores open. There's no place to get sauerkraut at this time of night. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, you said that Your I... uncle, the trouble with you is you don't know when to be firm with Marjorie. Where to draw the line? You can't give in to every little whim. She won't respect you. Well, I want to do everything I can. You certainly, my boy. But you have to learn how to say no. She'll run you ragged. Who's running ragged? Hey, Leroy, get back in bed. Who's running ragged? Nobody. What are you talking about? Nothing. In the middle of the night? Leroy. Okay, I'm going. What a family. <laughs> What'll I do, Mr. Gildersleeve? I told Marge I'd get her some sauerkraut. I can't go back on my word. You're a good boy, Bronco. You run back to bed. Yeah, I'll explain to Marge. Well... Don't you worry about it. I understand women a little better than you do. Just leave it to me. All right. Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sure. Yeah, I'll simply go and tell Marjorie if she's hungry, she can eat what we have in the house. That Bronco. The way he lets Marjorie wrap him around her finger. Marjorie. Marjorie. I'm in here in the sewing room, Auntie. Well, you're reading pretty late, aren't you, my dear? Well, I couldn't sleep. And you know, Unky, all of a sudden I have a terrific craving for sauerkraut. Well... And Bronco is so sweet. He insisted he's going to get some for me. Now, Marjorie, Bronco's tired. In fact, I just told him to go back to bed. Oh, you're a darling, Unky, but do you think you can find sauerkraut this late at night? You like... Who? Me? <laughs> never been so hungry for anything before in my life. All I can think of is a big plate of sauerkraut. But, Marjorie... Oh, you're such a dear, Unky. Getting out of bed to do this just for me. I don't want much, really. Just a little bit of sauerkraut. But you just said... Oh, I'm a terrible nuisance, aren't I? No, certainly not. Making you get up at this time of night to wait on me. Well, I don't mind that. It's just that... Oh, you're so good to me, Uncle Moore. No, no, it's all right. But I don't deserve it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You deserve the best of everything. But it's so late, Uncle. Where are you going to find sauerkraut? I don't know. But I'll find it if I have to crawl on my hands and knees to Milwaukee. <laughs> I should have worn an overcoat over my overcoat. What a night to be out hunting for sauerkraut. Still, anything for little Marjorie. By George, she'll never forget that her old uncle got up in the middle of the night to get her sauerkraut. Yeah, here's Peavy's house. He's an old friend. Maybe he'll have some. Yeah, I wonder how I can arouse Peavy without waking up Mrs. Peavy. Peavy. Yo, Peavy. Peavy. Oop, somebody turned on a light. Yeah, he's coming. Hello, Peavy. Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? It's yours, me. You open the door and let me in. It's freezing out here. My gracious. Phew. Yeah, sorry to wake up in the middle of the night, Peavy. But this is urgent. Well, what happened? Did the dam go out? <laughs> no, nothing like that. Peavy, I've got to have some sauerkraut. Okay. <laughs> it's for Marjorie. You know how it is, Peavy. The baby will be along soon. Well, don't you think it ought to have milk? Yo. <laughs> this is not for the baby. The sauerkraut's for Marjorie. Oh, uh, is the baby going to be born tonight? No, Peavy. For goodness sake. Haven't you heard of prospective mothers having cravings for strange food? Mm, well, yeah. yeah. All right. There's only one thing in the world that Marjorie wants, and that's some sauerkraut. Yeah, I promised I'd get it for her, Peavy. How about it? Do you have any? No. But how about some cheesecake? 
That's what Mrs. Peavy's sister ate when she was expecting. No, thanks. Well, if she wants something sour, I could let you have some of Mrs. Peavy's lemon fritters. <laughs> you know, that's very kind of you, Peavy. But Marjorie has her heart set on sauerkraut. Nothing else will do. Well, if you could wait till tomorrow... Yeah, I can't wait until tomorrow. You don't understand how the mind of a prospective mother works. You know, I do. What was that? That was Mrs. Peavy tapping on the floor with her mentholatum jar. That, that means come upstairs. Oh, for goodness sake. Peavy, you let women lead you around by the nose. Mm-hmm. I'm not walking around in the snow looking for sauerkraut. Oh! <laughs> chance. Judge Hooker. You wonder if the old goat eats sauerkraut. You know, if he does, he probably cooks it in k water. Well, he might have it. It's worth trying. You old brother. What a night. Judge! You judge! Who is down there? <laughs> it's me. Who's down there? Yofer, Judge, stop bleeding. You'll wake up the whole neighborhood. Come down and open the door. That you, Gildy? Yes, Judge. What's the matter? I want to talk to you. It's very important. And hurry up. I'm freezing. All right. Being cross-examined on the front porch at three below zero. Where is cold? Why doesn't that old goat hurry up? He takes his time at a time like this. That's all. Ooh, it's cold. Gildy, what are you doing out at this hour of the night? Yeah, I'm gathering icicles. Let me in, Judge. Well, what happened? Nothing happened. We have an emergency in our house. It's the baby. The baby's here. No, wait. No, not yet. This is for Marjorie. I've got to find her some sauerkraut. Sauerkraut? You understand these things, Judge. It's the only thing she wants. And I promised I'd get it for her. Oh, I understand. Bless her heart. And bless you, too, Gildy, for being so thoughtful. Yeah, thank you, Judge. Launching forth into the bitter night in search of a tidbit to please the little mother-to-be. You all right, Judge? Do you have any sauerkraut? No, I haven't, Gildy. <laughs> but I think I know where we can find some. Yeah, bless you, Judge. Where is it? Well, my friend Miss Matterhorn puts up sauerkraut. Miss Matterhorn? She lives over on the corner of Spruce and Crocker Streets. A lovely girl. You can walk in any time and she'll welcome you with a cozy of tea and a tray of the most delicious macaroons. Yeah, I know, but just... And sugar donuts that she bakes herself. Come to think of it, Gilder, I'll put on my overshoes and go with you. Three o'clock in the morning. Goodbye, George. I got the sauerkraut. Gildersleeve, when you decide to do something, you do it. Yeah, I can't wait to see the expression on Marjorie's face. She never thought I'd do it. Here, here's my key. Darn slippery plate. Sauerkraut running down my sleeve. You must have left the key in my other pants. Confound it. Bertie! Bertie! Bertie, hurry up. That you, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, it's me. Let me in, quick. Land alive, where you been? Well, I've been out getting something for Marjorie, Bertie. Where is she? She's in your study. What you got in that plate, Mr. Gillsleeve? Sauerkraut. For Marjorie. I promised her I'd get it. And I did. It's a good thing somebody in this house understands the girl. Yes, sir. Bring some forks and things, Bertie. I'm going in and present the big surprise. Yes, sir. Marjorie, here comes your uncle. You will guess what? Marjorie. Marjorie? Hmm. She's asleep in the chair. Probably dreaming of a big plate of sauerkraut. Yeah, hold it under her nose. Watch her wake up, smiling. Hmm? Uh, uh, what's the matter? It's me, Marjorie. Unky, look what I brought you. What is it? Just what you wanted, my dear. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut? 
Kraut. Yes, just what you wanted. Oh, Anki, it doesn't look nearly as good as I thought it would. Marjorie. You know what I'd really like, Anki? You're right. Watermelon. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You go to bed. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. To please all the folks at your house, there are five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices, so everyone can enjoy these perfect slices of extra good-eating pasteurized processed cheese, whether it's wonderfully mellow Kraft American, Kraft American with scarlet pimentos added, delightful nut-sweet Kraft Swiss, Kraft Brick with that deep-down rich taste, or sharp Old English brand. You'll want to have several kinds on hand always because these perfect slices are so handy for cheese snacks and sandwiches you can fix easily and quick as a wink. Tomorrow, look in your grocer's dairy case for the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. Bertie, is that you? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Gilsey? You, what are you doing up? I'm just looking around, checking up on all these dear hearts and gentle people. Well, you'd better get some sleep, Bertie. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on the little family. Yes, sir. It's been a long night. It sure has, Bertie. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gilsey. There's a good woman. Uh, let's see. Here? Yeah? Leroy's asleep. At last. Marge is asleep on the couch in my study. I wonder how Bronco's doing. Yeah, there he is. He's sleeping, too. Yeah, sleep well, Bronco. You'll be a father soon. And a good father, too. It isn't easy right now. But you're kind and good. And you and Marge will be happy. Good night, young man. You've had a busy day. Good night, folks. The Great Gilda's Lead is played by Willie Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. There's magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement in almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better, particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Don't miss The Falcon each Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. And listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves The Case of the Invisible Thug. Listen for Groucho Marx next on NBC. Transcribed. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week at this time by the Kraft Foods Company. 
Kraft, a name that for years has meant fine cheese, is the maker of the new Kraft Deluxe Slices of wonderful pasteurized processed cheese. These slices are perfect. No dried edges, no broken pieces, because they're wrapped right in the spick and span Kraft plant. You'll find Kraft is delicious processed cheese in slices, in neat half-pound packages in your grocer's dairy case, eight big slices in every package. Tomorrow, take home some of these convenient packages and get acquainted with Kraft Deluxe Slices, the most delicious processed cheese you've ever tasted. On New Year's Eve, the great Gildersleeve persuaded Rumson Bullard, his wealthy neighbor, to take a date off his hands. They've been on the go ever since, and Bullard is really living. But we don't know how long Gildersleeve can last. Good night, Miss Milford. Good night, Rumson. Both you boys didn't have to see me to the door. Well, I like to be around pretty girls as long as possible. Oh. <laughs> Isn't he gallant, Strockmorton? He sure, sure. <laughs> Just think, tonight I've had the privilege of seeing two beautiful ladies to their doors. My date, Miss Chase, and now you. How lucky can a man be? Oh, no. <laughs> you corny character you used the same line last night. It's been a wonderful evening. Good night, Rockmorton. Good night. Oh. This is one time I'm even glad to say good night to Catherine. Wait a minute. Let's not say good night yet. Let's all go to Joe's Beanery for chili and beans. Oh, my goodness. Good bullet. It's after midnight. Well, just the shank of the evening. What do you say, Catherine? Oh, I couldn't possibly. I need my beauty sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Well, if sleep is the source of beauty, Catherine, you obviously sleep more than most women. Oh, Mr. Bowler. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> well, Gildersleeve, why don't you and I swing by on the way home? Now, Bullard, let's not overdo this. But the beanery is very lively this time of night. It caters to playboys and truck drivers. You, well, this playboy is going to truck on home. Gildersleeve ain't down yet, Miss Marjorie? No, Bertie. He was out late last night. Again? That man. <laughs> when I came down, he was taking a cold shower trying to wake up. Poor Unky. Mr. Bullard's leading him a merry chase. Yeah, Unk must be bushed. When he turned the shower on cold, he didn't even yell. <laughs> I hear him stumbling down the stairs now. I'll go start his bacon and eggs. I think I'll put my last prune in his dish. He needs the energy. Good morning, Anki. Good morning, Marjorie. Hi, Anki. Good morning, Leroy. Good morning, Bronco. Open your eyes, Unc. Bronco isn't here. Who? Oh? Where is he? He went to work half an hour ago. Yeah, you're late. Yeah, I know, Leroy. Bronco was so cute this morning, Anki. He said he wanted to get as much work done as possible before our baby comes next month. Who? Oh? And he says he'll get up and give the baby his two o'clock formula while I sleep. Well, why not let us feed the baby at two o'clock? Hey, what's this, Leroy? You'll be just coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, let me pour your coffee, Anki. Yeah, thank you, my dear. Ooh, quite a glare on the coffee this morning. You can't keep up with Mr. Bullard, Uncle Moore. You know? Well, you have to get up and go to the water department while he can sleep till noon. Yeah, he's retired and you're just tired. <laughs> now, children, I can stay on my feet as long as Bullard can. Uncle doesn't want Miss Milford to know he's slowing up. Leroy, I'm not slowing up. But every morning you come down half asleep. Yeah, I'm not half asleep. I'm wide awake. Yeah? And why are you putting jelly on your napkin? <laughs> Yo. Well, it was on my plate where my toast usually is. Jelly on his napkin. <laughs> Leroy, don't laugh at Uncle Moore. 
Sure, sure. Hi, Miss Gilsey. Here's your breakfast. Yeah, thank you very much. What's everybody laughing at? Unch Punchy. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey sure started something when he got Mr. Bullard to going out. You know, Bertie. Yes, yeah, sir. That man's got you burned the candle at both ends. It isn't that bad, Bertie. You better slow down, Mr. Gilsey. We don't want the water commissioner to be put out of commission because he's burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Yes, sir. If you keep burning the candle at both ends, the water commissioner's going to be put out of commission. Yeah, Bertie, please. Mr. Gilsey, you know what happened if you keep burning the candle at both ends? Yes, Bertie. That's right. The water commissioner be put out of commission. <laughs> Bertie sure hates to give up an idea. <laughs> yeah, pass the napkin. Yeah, I mean the toast. <laughs> Good morning, Petey. Well, hello, Mr. Gellersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Yeah, give me a cup of coffee, Petey. I didn't get to finish mine at home. Yeah, so? Yeah, there was a lot of noise around the house this morning. <laughs> Your Christmas bills arrived? It wasn't that big. No. Uh, is the new baby here? No. Marjorie isn't expecting the baby until February. Well, February is a good month. We had Washington and Lincoln in February. Yeah. How about the coffee, Pete? It's coming up. I was a July baby myself. Pretty hot months to get a start in. <laughs> I had prickly heat, so they tell me. Peavy, you're still holding my coffee. <laughs> well, here you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can't seem to wake up this morning. I take it you've been going out quite a little lately, Mr. Gildersleeve. Your gents cologne bill is running higher this month. <laughs> well, since I persuaded Bullard to go out with me New Year's Eve, we've been pretty busy. How's your lady friend, Miss Milford, standing the late hours? You know, you know girls, Peavy. They like to go. Yeah, that's the way it was when I was courting Mrs. Peavy. She liked to go. Sometimes I think I should have let her. <laughs> you know what that, uh, go out more often, I mean. But uh, we didn't have much money for gadding. You know, I think you did the right thing, Peavy. If you'd taken her a lot of places, you might have met some rich fellow like Bullard and married him. Then you'd have been sorry. No, I... I guess I would. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Peavy. <laughs> you look at my desk. You, let's face it, Water Commissioner, you're neglecting your work. The papers are piled so high there's no place to lay my head. Yeah, I have to catch a few winks. Yeah, I might open the top drawer and lay my head in it. Nobody can see me behind this stack of papers. Yeah, oh, sure. This is more like it. You hope Mr. Williger doesn't pop in today. Yeah, well, I'll live dangerously. Yes, I'll live dangerously. Yes. Gildersleeve. You heard me, you this man. I didn't hear you come in. I was just... Gildersleeve. 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 What are you babbling about? Yo, it's you, Bullard. Have you been sleeping? Me? No. Your eyes are red. You Well, yeah, eye strain, I guess. I was looking for a bottle of ink in this dark drawer. <laughs> Uh, I didn't expect to see you until tonight, Bullard. I come with a tale of rotten luck, Gildersleeve. You? We can't go out tonight. We can't? My date has pulled up lame. You are that? Vicky has a blister on her heel from dancing too much last night. Well, that's too bad. I know you're disappointed, Gildersleeve. I hate to let you down, but we'd better call off our double date. Yeah, I think nothing of it, Bullard. Everybody can't stand the gaff the way we can. I'll phone Catherine and cancel everything. Yes, I guess it's the only thing to do. You wouldn't want me to share your date. 
<laughs> well, they do say three is a crown. Catherine must be asleep. And this is her day off. Really? Then it's too bad she can't be entertained this evening. Yeah, frankly, Bullard, I'm just as glad we're staying home. I'm not too keen about going out again tonight myself. Oh? Hello? Hello, Catherine. And this is Rock Morton. Well, good morning, Rock Morton. I heard the phone, but I was shampooing my hair. You nice. I want to be beautiful for you tonight. Yeah, well, about tonight, Catherine. If Mr. Bullard is here and tells me Vicky can't go out. So why don't we just call the whole thing off? Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, Catherine, don't be disappointed. We'll all get a good night's rest and go out again. Soon. Uh, wait a minute. Gildersy, give me that phone. Yeah? I... Uh, there's no use disappointing, Catherine. Willard, what are you up to? Uh, hello, Catherine. This is Rumson. Oh, hello, Rumson. Catherine, I have a corking good idea. Vicky can't go out this evening, and Gildersleeve wants a good night's rest. Yofer. Bullard! So why don't you and I carry on for the gang? He'd carry on, all right. Now, see here, Bullard, I'm going to... Give me that phone. But, Gildersleeve, remember what you said. Three is a crowd. That's why I'm going. If you're with Catherine, I want to be in the crowd. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Here they are for all you folks who've longed for really perfect slices of delicious pasteurized processed cheese. Here are Kraft Deluxe Slices, eight perfect slices of extra delicious processed cheese in a neat half-pound package. Kraft Deluxe Slices are different from any sliced cheese you've ever had before because Kraft Slices are made a completely new way. Instead of being cut from a loaf, Kraft Deluxe Slices are actually formed by an exclusive new Kraft invention. And this invention captures every single bit of fine processed cheese flavor. More flavor than you've ever enjoyed before in every perfect slice. Then, so these slices of delicious processed cheese reach you in perfect condition with no dried edges or broken pieces, they're wrapped right in the spick and span Kraft plant. Kept clean and sanitary and perfect all the way to your kitchen. And when you unwrap that neat package, you'll find eight generous slices, each one large enough to cover a slice of bread, so handy for quick, easy cheese sandwiches and snacks. You can keep several kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices in your refrigerator because those neat packages take up so little room. Tomorrow, look for them in your grocer's dairy case, those perfect slices of extra good processed cheese, Kraft Deluxe Slices. Get back to the great Gildersleeve. It has been said that early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our water commissioner hasn't been getting to bed early, so he doesn't feel healthy. He isn't exactly wealthy, and he's going out again tonight, so you'd hardly call him wise. You darn that bullard. Well, by George, nobody's going to catch this water commissioner asleep on the job. I'm going to sleep at home. You home, Miss Gilsley? Yes, Bertie. I'm glad of it. Yes, sir. From the way you look this morning, I thought you'd be home early. <laughs> well, I have an engagement this evening, Bertie. So I'm going in the den and catch a little shut-eye. Yes, sir. You and Mr. Bullard taking the girls out again tonight? Well, Miss Chase isn't going. That's a smart woman. Well, I wasn't interested in going out either. But Mr. Bullard wants to go. Yes, sir. And Catherine has the day off. She wants to go out tonight. Yes, sir. Naturally, I don't want them to spend a dull evening together. So I'm going along. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, there's another smart woman. You ready? I'm closing the den door. I don't want to be disturbed. No. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be able to answer the bell tonight if I get some sleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice couch. You better loosen my tie. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. It's just what I've needed all day. Peace and quiet. Help! Oops, Leroy. Just a hope and 
school. So I hear. Bertie told me you weren't to be disturbed. Yeah, that's right, Leroy. So I come in to tell you I won't disturb you. <laughs> Very considerate. Unless you'd like to come outside and pass the football. No, Leroy. Okay. Care to pass it inside? Leroy, please. Let me sleep. Okay. Well, I won't disturb you. Yeah, fine. I won't disturb you if I kick the ball outside. Leroy, just leave me alone. Sure, that's the idea. Do gangbusters. Yeah, well, he's an active youth. Wish I had some of his energy. Well, I'll store up a little right now. Uh, 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 what's that? Okay. Yes, Marjorie? May I come in? Yo, for it. Come in, my dear. Bertie told me how tired you were, and I thought you'd like some warm milk. you like some warm milk. Just put it there on the bookshelf, my dear. Well, Uncle, you'll get cold. Drink it. Oh, yes. Drink it. I... Uh, uh, <laughs> he's very soothing. Here, here's the glass. Sleep tight, Uncle. We'll call you for dinner. Thank you, Marjorie. Yeah. You were a thoughtful girl. Just what I needed. Warm milk and a good bed. Yeah, I'll sleep like a baby. You know, I don't. I'll never make it through the night. Hey. <laughs> you over. Yeah, Judge Hooker, what's he doing here? I have your income tax forms, Gildy. Thought I'd stop by and drop them off. <laughs> Thank you and goodbye, Judge. Bertie told me that you weren't to be disturbed, but... Gildy, you look droopy. I don't think you're feeling well. Yeah, I'm all right. Let me feel your forehead. Judge, please. You need another blanket over you. Judge, I just want to be left alone. I am not going to leave you like this, old friend. You're sick. You're a judge. It always helps to have someone in the room. I'll just sit here by your bed. Yeah, all right, if you insist. But sit quietly. Yeah, I'll read this book. If you have any trouble going to sleep, Gildy, you might try counting sheep. Yeah, how can I count sheep when all I see is an old goat? (laughs) Yeah, I'll just ignore him. I can't chase him out. Well, here's an amusing passage. <laughs> Judge, you said you'd be quiet. I was quiet. You laughed. Yes. Yeah. Difference. Yeah, why didn't I sleep at the office? I'll never be able to keep up with Bullard tonight. <laughs> Thanks for helping me dress, Leroy. Yeah, I never would have made it without you. That's okay. Good luck tonight, Unc. Thanks. You'll need it. Yeah, I sure will. How are you going to see over those bags under your eyes? <laughs> yeah, all right, Leroy. Don't kick me when I'm down. <laughs> are you ready to go, Unky? Yeah. That cold shower must have done you good. You look... You look horrible. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll sit in the dark as much as possible tonight. Well, here, let me help you on with your coat. Thanks. Now, let me put your hat on your head. Thanks. And I'll open the door for you. Thanks. Good night, Unky. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, good night. Nice of the little family to rally around me at a time like this. Muller's house is dark. And we're taking his car. Say, wouldn't it be wonderful if he took a nap and didn't wake up in time for tonight? Let's go, Elsie! <laughs> no, he's awake. Morton and Robson. Hey, hello, Catherine. Good evening, Catherine. 
Come on in, both of you. Now get your coat, Catherine. We must be on our way. We're going to paint the town tonight a different color. Ha, ha, ha! The only color I can see is green. Just put your coat down there. Uh, we have to wait until Mother comes back from the drugstore. Somebody has to be here to answer the phone. You're all good. Everybody sit down. Say, I have a suggestion. Let's all go square dancing at the Red Bar. Square dancing? It's vigorous exercise, and they have a new orchestra. Oh! Oh, that sounds like fun. Oh, it is. It is. Give me your hand. I'll show you. Oh, Ron. Right. Alamine, left oh, with your no. left hand, right to your partner now, right and left, Brad. Oh. Swing her high and swing her sweet. Oh. Swing that gal with the great big feet. Oh. oh nothing personal, Catherine. Oh. <laughs> Country club hillbilly. Oh. That is wonderful. Come on, come on. Let's go, Dan. Buller, don't be pushy. We have to wait for Catherine's mother. Oh, oh, yeah. So sit down. Gildersleeve, I think you're tired. No, no, I'm not. Well, what do we do while we're waiting? Why don't we listen to some music? Oh, let's do something we can participate in. Oh, Robson, your vigor amazes me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Say, uh, I, I learned a new charade today. Watch me and tell me what I am. Hmm? Oh. He's an idiot. <laughs> I could never guess. Oh, of course you can. Here, I'll give you another clue. All right. <laughs> you know, I've got to do something well, to keep awake. Oh, Maybe if I sang a good loud song, it'd clear can't, the cobwebs. Can't think. You'd take the play away from Bullard, too. I, I give up, Rumson. I'm afraid I'm not thinking too fast tonight. Say, yeah, I have an idea. Oh, uh, Catherine, you mentioned music. Why don't you play the piano? Oh, yes, that's a capital idea. And I'll sing. Oh, no. <laughs> Rockmorton has a beautiful voice, Rumson. What do you want to sing, Rockmorton? Well, something loud. How about a sleep in the deep? Not bad. You hope I can get through it. Uh, just one chorus, please, Gildersleeve. Then we can get back to the charade. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Loudly the bell in the old tower rings. Be us list to the warning it brings. Sailor, take care. Sailor, take care. Danger is near. Be beware. Beware. Yeah, I think it's helping me. <laughs> Many brave hearts are asleep. In the deep, so beware, Rockmorton. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think staying up late has deepened my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you like it, Rumson? <laughs> Rockmorton, he fell asleep. He did? Well. <laughs> and in the middle of your song, I hope you're not offended. Me? No. <laughs> Just goes to show Bullard can't take it the way I can. <laughs> Where's my chair? <laughs> I suppose Rumson didn't want to admit he was tired. Well, he might fall asleep. You're not me. You're in my constitution. I can go on. You know, I'm... Yeah, I can go on. Frost <laughs> <laughs> <Brock> Morton. <laughs> Rumson? <laughs> now they're both asleep. Aren't they cute? Still <laughs> so 
trying to outdo each other. I think I like Throckmorton Snore better. Gildersleeve will be right back. How about it? Like to treat your folks to their favorite kinds of pasteurized processed cheese in slices so they can make delicious cheese snacks and sandwiches quickly and easily? Of course you do. So keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. There's Kraft American that's so mellow good. Kraft American with scarlet pimentos added. Nut sweet Kraft Swiss. Kraft Brick with deep, rich flavor and sharp old English brand. Try them all. For quick, easy-to-make cheese snacks and sandwiches, there's nothing like these perfect slices of extra-delicious processed cheese. Kraft Deluxe Slices. Thank you, Doctor, for a lovely evening. Good night. Throckmorton. Throckmorton. You, Catherine, I must have dropped off for a second. Yes, you did. <laughs> Look at Bullard. Sound asleep. He just can't take it. Come on, Catherine. Let's sneak out. We'll go to the dance without it. Throckmorton, I've already been to the dance. Yes, I said we'll go to the... What's that? <laughs> Dr. Olson stopped by and he took me. I just got home. It's a quarter after twelve. Quarter after twelve? Oh, my goodness. How's <laughs> Joe's leave? <laughs> Bullard's waking up. Ah, there, I must have closed my eyes for a second. Ah, well, I feel better. Come on, Captain, let's go square dancing. Bullard, you've been asleep all evening. It's after twelve. Oh, no, no. Catherine... How, how could I have done such a thing? Shame on you, Bullard. Here's your hat. Come on home, old man. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Catherine. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Mandy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Ketley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Kathy Lewis, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Want to taste something good? Well, next time you make a cold meat sandwich, don't forget to add a little Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor. And Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Be sure to hear the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the happy hoodlum. The preceding was transcribed. Listen next for Groucho Marx and you bet your life on NBC.